last night Now you're lying in my bed Must have been a dream last night But I can hear what you're saying You were shot to death last night Where's my cup of coffee? I was dreaming something bad last night Can't you hear what I'm saying? One gunshot And I forgot
Masters 3 from home was actually really hard. Uh, everyone wants to play online and feed the game. At the same time, it motivated me and our team really hard to prove that we deserve to be there. Uh, our goal for stage 3 is to just qualify for the land. Qualifying, winning and, and creating history together. Yeah, I think we've done a lot of work and uh, we look really good. Oh, no! Oh, no! VCT Challengers main event. This week, eight teams in Europe will be battling it out for those last two spots at the EMEA playoffs as we edge closer and closer to Berlin Masters. I'm your host, Ying Su, and joining me for the first uh, best of three today is a new analyst on the desk. Great to finally have you here with us, Twiggy. Thanks very much. I, I, you know, I might just be a play-by-play, but uh, sometimes I can be smart. I hope to show that off today. 
Sometimes it's enough for us here. That, that, that's more than enough. Uh, well, Twiggy and I, we need some fabulousness to spice things up here on the desk today. So who better than the one and only Geo? I'll take the compliment, Yinsu, and I really appreciate it. But I, I don't know if I have the peak fabulousness on this <laughs> Oh, no, I think you have all of the fabulousness on this desk. Uh, now, the qualifiers have been pretty intense. We saw some crazy competition, upsets, surprises here and there. Now, Twiggy, which teams surprised you the most? Um, you know, I don't think there were any teams that really surprised me coming into this one. I think there were a lot of potential victors for the qualifiers, and we all knew these teams that made it through had it in them. Uh, but, you know, it's more the teams that were knocked out by these four that were bigger surprise. You know, Team Vitality knocking out Team Heretics and Ninjas in Pajamas, and then Big knocking out team finest and get, like, getting eliminated by alliance that's you know not particularly upsets but really unexpected outcomes well looking at this list we have here these eight teams geo which ones impressed you the most you know, there's a couple of teams that I could pick out here, but if I'm totally honest, I'm going to have to go with Giants. They had this phenomenal upper bracket run. They didn't even drop a single map going through it. So to have made it here off the back of that kind of a performance, that, that's pretty impressive to me. Yeah, the momentum is definitely with this team right now. Of course, the biggest prize at the main event will be those two qualification spots for the EMEA playoffs. And here is a quick format explainer to get you guys at home all caught up. It's time to kick off the third stage in style. Every top team from Europe will be going for the trophy at Masters 3 in Berlin in order to crown themselves as the number one in the world. But the road to win a ticket is long and bumpy. So how do you get a slot? Like in the first two stages, we'll start with the Challengers main events in week one and week two. Sounds the same as before? Wrong. More teams will make it through and we'll see a double elimination bracket for the first time in EU. The top four from week one as well as the best duo from week two will immediately book their ticket for the EMEA Challengers playoffs. There, they'll face the top three teams from both Turkey and CIS. These 12 squads will again be fighting in a double elimination bracket in the playoffs. But this time, not only the two grand finalists will make it through. The top four EMEA teams will compete in the next stage, VCT Masters 3 in Berlin. Our four contenders will fight against the other 12 teams from NA, Korea, Brazil, LATAM, Japan and Southeast Asia for the glory and the title of the second cross-regional VCT competition. This is your time to shine. Are you ready to enter the next stage? And who will be our world champions? As you guys saw in that video, of course, the EMEA playoffs will include teams from Turkey and CIS as well. And Geo, their qualifiers have also been insanely competitive. Yeah, you know, talking about the, the teams who will be included from Turkey, BBL is not going to be one of them. And this is, the, this is a really huge deal. This is one of the most popular teams that we have here in EMEA. And yet they got knocked out in the lower bracket round number one. Against uh, Fire Plus Esports, they lost 2-0 to them. Uh, they had a really hard time against um, Basictus as well. This is very reminiscent of what we saw on week one as well in Challengers 1 because it was a repeat pretty much exactly of what happened then. And this was one of those teams that people were really looking to to say they are quite likely from all of the Turkish teams to make it to the EMEA playoffs. And now we know that's just not going to be a possibility. Yeah, it's going to be really, really weird not to have BBL there. Of course, they were there for the last EMEA playoffs. Uh, crazy things are happening in Turkey indeed. But over here in Europe, we have a huge day today because we're bringing you guys the three best of threes, starting with Team Liquid versus Team Vitality, followed by Fnatic versus Alliance, and then that game from the lower bracket as well. Of course, the lower bracket also means, Twiggy, that someone's Berlin dream is going to be coming to an end today which is kind of brutal for day one yeah you know in the case of team liquid and fanatics games it's really a chance for the teams who did so well to get to international computation at Reykjavik to redeem themselves redeem themselves for their performance in week one uh, but you know having that barrier going that, that you might get knocked out in day one that's that's a difficult hurdle to get around yeah, that will be. Uh, like I said, someone has to go home today, which is uh, super, super sad. But Gio, which matchup are you most looking forward to? 
It's so hard to pick out of all the ones that we have today. But honestly, when I think about it, it's probably got to be Rixi G versus Giants, which is actually going to be over on our second stream today. I feel like Rixi G fought really hard to make it into Challenges 1 and get all the way to the main event. And they were a bit of an underdog coming in and they kind of got thrashed by Ascendant G2, which I, I don't really blame them. But given the run that Giants have had through the close qualifiers here for uh, Challenges 2, seeing those two go up against each other is going to be a really, really exciting way to kick off the main event. Oh yeah, and shout out to our secondary stream, of course. Uh, one team will also be going home over there as well at the end of today. And speaking of those exciting matchups, some of our analysts and casters made their own predictions as to how they think this week is going to turn out. I'm going to come completely out of left field here and say 10 star on my pick, and not just because they're 80% British. They've shown this incredible capability to learn and fundamentally understand how their opposition plays and formulate precise counter strategies to shut them down. Now, look at the close qualifiers. Against Team Heretics on Team Heretics map pick, Breeze, a map which historically 10 star they've lost on, they came out of nowhere to win 13 3 and showed both amazing gunplay and superb decision making all throughout. 10 star. I'd like to see Fnatic. I think a lot of people would. They want to see both at EMA and maybe even at Berlin if Fnatic can do it. So I think they're still in a shoe in for that. I, I do think that Dark Horse though is Giants Gaming. They look really good coming into this event. It's some recent roster changes bringing in David P and Ambi. Uh, David P from G2 and XL and Ambi who's a nice jet player, a jet hopper and a silver when he needs to be. It's just a team that has decent protocols. We watched him a lot with the open qualifiers and this team is coming in with some real nice momentum so. In my eyes, I genuinely believe that we have two clear favorites for Challengers 2. And to be honest, there might be some good upset potential. There might be some good progress with teams like Alliance or Ten Store or Vitality. At the same time, the kind of strength that both Fnatic and Liquid usually deliver, the bastion of calm they are within the European Valorant scene, I just don't see universe where they don't qualify. I just don't see universe where we don't see them for the EMEA Challenger playoffs. My name is Thomas Tombiz Bismeyer, and I think Fnatic are the clear favorites to get uh, through Challengers 2. Not only have they done this before in Stage 2 and made the Masters final, but they wear the freshest clothes, eat at the chillest restaurants, and hang out with the hottest girls, especially Boaster. Say this and you won't get her from Yinsu. Or I wasn't supposed to read the... Go, go Fnatic! Oh, thanks for that, Tom. I'll still find a way to hurt you. Don't worry. Uh, and uh, I just want to point out there, uh, Twiggy, you were in that video and you said you had a left field pick. So talk me through why you chose Tenstar. Okay, yeah. So I saw something during Tenstar vs Heretics last week that really made me look into the gameplay a little deeper. And it was around on Icebox where they generally put in a practice like a flanking strategy through kitchen that won them the round purely off of a beautiful like positional play it was the first time i'd seen a positional strategy that i i genuinely thought wow, that was amazing so i'm really interested to see how far a team can go like really based off of strategy I also love like the choices we have now in terms of UK representation. We went from like having one or two teams here and there to just like pick yeah. your, just take your pick. Like if you if you fancy one of the UK teams, you know, go for it. Uh, but of course, a lot of people they said Fnatic, and we've seen it on social media as well. A lot of people are backing uh, Fnatic. They're going to be in action a little bit later. But Geo, do you think they can fulfill those expectations? Because back at main event one, they definitely didn't. It's a really big question. I don't think anyone one expected them to even be in main event two because we all thought that they were probably going to win main event one, right? Um, I mean, it's obvious over recent times that Fnatic have been trying new things. They've been bringing some new compositions in, which you, you lost your mind over on social media. You, see, you got very excited. Um, and 
I mean, ostensibly, we have less difficult competition on paper in main event two, just because all of the heavy hitters that we saw in main event one have already qualified through for the playoffs, so they don't need to be here. So in theory, yeah, Fnatic could actually have an easier time here. It's just a question of how well have they utilized the last couple of weeks where they haven't been playing? Are they going to be less warmed up than their competition? And even though they tried new things, are those new things going to be good enough now, more so than they were? were a couple of weeks ago. I would say there's a lot of pressure on this team right now and whether or not they show it, it's definitely going to be there. Oh, definitely. And I think we want to see them try new things that work, right? Like you said, uh, not, it's a good idea. not all of that worked uh, the last time they tried to pull out a few new compositions, but they will be playing Alliance today. And this is what Alliance's Lucker had to say about their matchup. Joined by Lucker from Alliance. Hello, Lucker. Welcome back to the show. Hello. Uh, it's great to have you here. And uh, now you guys have two very strong duelist players on your team, Kada and uh, Jusu as well, which is a newer addition. Besides the maps that you guys do run the double duelist comps, how do you guys go about sort of delegating which player gets to get that duelist role? Uh, that's actually an interesting question because we have a lot of problems with that because um, obviously we don't have a full support player. So when we run only two, uh, one duelist instead of two, then you know, then there needs to be that decision. Okay, who's gonna be duelist and who's not gonna be duelist? And it's actually it's um, very dependent. You know, if it's a, kind of a sage role, so kind of a secondary duelist, then we give it to Yusu. And uh, if it's like a more supportive role, then we would give it to Kata. Nice. Oh, it's great to hear some insight from you there. And now we haven't seen you guys play Haven or Split in this event yet, uh, kind of at the later stage of the tournament. Are you still running the Astra? Because I know you, you've been playing a lot of the Astra. And if so, why? Because it feels like this agent has fallen out of the meta. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Astra used to be really, really good, like very overpowered. And then we tried to abuse it a bit. Now we are like kind of like I've, I still feel like it's a really good agent. But now with the cooldown of the black hole, it's uh, you can easily outplay it a bit. So now, if you consider Astra, you might want to con like have another controller as well. I feel like, and uh, we cannot really find like get into these roles right now with our compositions. And, uh, you know, speaking of some of the things you guys have been working on, I know in the beginning of your team, you didn't really have like an official coach signed with you guys, but you had Neeks now for uh, a month or so. What's he been bringing to the team and what's it like now to work with him? Well, it's, it's always better to have someone watching over you. You have, um, you know, someone to look that everyone comes in time. Everyone is following the structure. So it's, um, it's always very, very helpful. And uh, lastly, the last time you faced Fnatic, uh, you guys beat them uh, quite convincingly too. So what do you think you need to do today to replicate that result? I feel like in this game, you know, like definitely in Euro Europe, there's a lot of upsets, right? And we go in the underdogs. I think that's an important factor for us. So we literally, we show only confidence. We run in and uh, do our stuff, do our game. And um, yeah, overrun them. Uh, thank you very much for your time, Laka. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys play later. All right, thank you. Daylight, there seems to be. Well, it's always great to hear some inside uh, from the players themselves. And Laka, you know, revealed to us the two, two duelists on their team, Twiggy. They don't always get their comfort pick. You know, one of them is going to have to play something they don't want to. Yeah, having a duelist play uh, another role, it can definitely lead to complications, especially when you're fighting for that role, you know. And in that situation, it's it, it, it can be reassuring knowing that your other teammates can step up to the plate when it's needed. And, you know, every player can kind of play that fragging out role variably from game to game. But... Uh, you know, the other side of that coin is maybe you don't have as many support players, which is which is the big part of a lot of these uh, top teams. So that's a definite, you know, two two edged sword there. Yeah, I mean, looking at some of the other teams and the way they've been able to flex their duelists at this point, uh, it's definitely something that we got to keep a closer eye on with Alliance. They will, of course, be trying to make their mark against Fnatic a little bit later. But first, 
Team Liquid, they will be taking on Team Vitality. We haven't seen Liquid play, uh, you know, at all since Challengers 1. That's about 20 days ago. So Twiggy, give me a refresher on how this team ended up uh, being in this in this main event. Yeah, Team Liquid, uh, they had a tough time last main event, getting a difficult first seed, playing against Fnatic in round one, where they got knocked down to the lower bracket. Now, after beating BDS to send them out the tournament, they were knocked out themselves in lower round two in a surprising 2-0 blowout against Funpass Phoenix. Now, I think the big uh, storyline here is that Scream has really changed entry roles to that Jet player, and uh, they're playing a much more explosive composition. They're definitely having teething issues, but did they get it out of the way in the earlier stages of the tournament, or will it continue to plague them in week two? That's a big question. Qualify, qualifica sorry, qualification losses are much more hard-hitting mentally, so it's a, a lot tougher to deal with that blow, knowing that you haven't even started dealing with the upper echelons of the scene. Yeah, well, actually, Gio said earlier, you know, a lot of the big hitters, they're not going to be in this uh, main event again. So do you feel like Liquid, they can relax a little bit more here? Uh, yeah, possibly. It's definitely, you know, it, it, it's, it's a hard hit getting out of that first qualifications. It's definitely uh, arguably harder getting out of qualifications than it is, you know, the finals of an event or something like that. Uh, so, yeah, it could be. It's definitely easier on them, but it's still there's that tinge in the mind that you did get knocked out in the first qualifiers. And only two spots this time around, of yeah. course, which is definitely going to be a little bit harder. Liquid, they are also known for some of their experiments they've been doing in-game after Iceland as well. And this is what their coach, Sliggy, had to say about their latest changes. I'm now joined by Team Liquid's Sliggy. Hi, Sliggy. Welcome back to the show. Uh, now, first up, I just wanted to ask a little bit about Soulcast. How's he been doing? Do you have an update on his wrist injury? Hey, thanks for having me. First of all, um, I'm doing good. Yeah, so with Solkas, um, we pretty much as soon as he mentioned that um, something was feeling a bit off, um, we basically just gave him like three days off. I stood him for practice um, and then he just rested um, just like full three days of doing nothing. Uh, we tried him practice the last two days um, and he's saying that everything's feeling a lot better now. So uh, yeah, he should be he should be absolutely fine for today. Oh, that's great to hear. Uh, thank you for that. Now, you guys have made some changes since Iceland, I say, uh, most notably moving Scream back to that Jet role. Would you say that Jet is still a priority pick for him going into this tournament? Um, we've changed a few things up. So, so we wanted to change some stuff up from Iceland just because there was too much demo footage of us. Um, so then, yeah, we changed that up. Um, we were hoping that it would be enough to qualify, um, but it, it wasn't. So, um, yeah, maybe you'll see some more changes here as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> I always love it when you guys uh, experiment. You guys have never faced Team Vitality before. Um, and I know that when we interviewed them after they won, they were pretty keen to be able to face you guys. What, what have you made of them, their new changes as well? Yeah, they look really good. Um, they look really good. I've been watching a lot of their demos. They seem to uh, have a good game plan going in. They seem to change up their stuff quite a lot. Um, definitely, I watched them like I watched them like a like a month a month and a bit ago. I think they've made like really good improvements since then. So uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be a really close game. Uh, what are you guys looking out for today? What do you think uh, are some of the areas you can exploit against this team? Um, I know. They're pretty good at making space, um, for sure. So, so hopefully we're going to try and just make sure they can't get as much space as what they used to. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna hopefully be quite aggressive and not give them too much space. Is is basically what I can say. Uh, well, you guys, you know, a lot of people expected you to qualify throughout main event one, but you didn't manage to do that. So, how much pressure are you feeling for this one? Uh, and are you concerned at all? Um, I was slightly concerned with our performance um, in the first qualifier, um, but I also kind of expect us to be not at our peak in terms of just out of Iceland um, and having to change everything up in such a short amount of time. Um, but it, it's just the same amount of pressures we had last time, right? Two places to qualify. So um, we did it before, so I'm, I'm super confident that we can do it again. And lastly, we haven't seen you guys play for a while. And I know you said you guys are looking to change a few more things up. Uh, but KO, you know, we've seen some teams really kind of open their arms up to this agent. We see some teams that just completely ignore it. What do you think of KO right now? Um, yeah, dude, I think, I think it's really good. I think it's really strong. Um, so, yeah, potentially you'll, you'll see it today from us. Um, yeah, I think just the kid's crazy strong. It's, it's a weird one because I've seen loads of people like tweeting out and maybe... Not everyone's on the same page of it, but at least in, in our camp, we think it's really strong. So yeah, you'll be seeing it. 
Oh, I'm very, very excited. I thank you so much for your time, Sliggy, and best of luck with your game today. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Sounds like they were in a very similar boat, you know, to Fnatic, where they said we have to change things up because our enemies just have too much data on us here. But of course, Scream moving back onto that jet. Twiggy, do you feel like that was the right decision for them? Uh, look, he seemed pretty intent on stepping away from that Phoenix and Sage era of his gameplay after stage two. And we've seen quite a difference in his performance stats wise since he's made that switch from Phoenix to jet. Now, I'm not saying he's been performing dreadfully on jet, but he quantitatively has less of an impact round to round than in stage two but where else does he have left to turn liquid made a statement with that composition switch and going back on that now would be like saying oh no it didn't work i'm i'm sorry let's go back like some kind of last resort break glass in case of emergency thing and unfortunately the comp they ran in Reykjavik probably can't bail them out at this point the meta's moved so far since then he's definitely getting there and he undeniably has the foundations to be an amazing jet player you can see that from his stats we just didn't see quite enough of it in week one well, uh, Scream and his teammates will be taking on Team Vitality today. And Geo, they're a team that, ha that have made a couple of their own changes too. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the big one, of course, being a, a slight roster change where Jesmond has now been moved to being inactive and um, it's Shallaby who's come in to take his place, which uh, many people I'm sure they'll be familiar of if they watch the Campus Clutch. He was part of the winning team. Um, and I mean, it's it's definitely had an impact on them because they've actually made it here. Vitality have been fighting to make it into the main event for quite some time. Uh, back in stage two, they got knocked out by FPX. In challenges one of stage three, they got knocked out by FPX. FPX. So the fact that FPX aren't actually in Challengers 2 probably helps them, uh, I would imagine, a little bit. Um, but regardless, the changes that they have made have certainly helped elevate them to where they are right now. Well, are you a fan of this role changes as well? Because uh, as you mentioned, Shalabi coming in, uh, that stirred things up a little bit. Yeah, so the thing with Jesmond when he was on the team, he had this very definitive role, always the killjoy, always the cypher, he was always intel gathering, always on a flank watch, and that's something that Shallowy just isn't really built for. He can be quite flexible, but he's certainly more of a duelist, and so uh, Vitality have actually been changing a lot of their compositions to not necessarily include those kinds of sentinel agents, and at the beginning of the closed qualifiers, especially their game against Wild, it was quite clear where that was hurting them a little bit uh, just because they were getting caught out on flanks for example but over the course of the close qualifiers they've certainly improved in that matter they've changed some of their compositions throughout the closed quals um, for example they've been picking Jet over Sage on Split they've been picking Rainer over uh, Killjoy on Icebox to really lean into a more aggressive kind of playstyle. and I think over the course of the few games that they've had this past week it, you've seen improvement in that yeah, of course, you know, Loki being the one on the jet uh, this time around. We've seen a few different players on this team uh, try out the jet here and there. Uh, and if he's going to be playing that agent today and if Scream is going to stay on the jet, although, you know, from what Sliggy was saying, maybe there will be uh, some differences. Uh, Twiggy, these two players will be really having a bit of a head to head. Yeah, I mean, Scream and Loki, they don't really have exactly the same styles of playing jet in the end. It's just that the style really seems to suit Vitality's more measured and strategic approach for Loki uh, and Scream he seems to kind of, well, I mean, Team Liquid just screams to me, pardon the pun, if nobody's left alive on the enemy team, we win the game a lot of the time. So he kind of works with that. But in the end, that can also be a crux. You know, you're requiring a jet in that 99th percentile of pro play mechanics wise, and it can kind of give the, uh, the opposition one of 10 of ways to play around it, which is where they've come up against a lot of their resistance in recent games. I mean, not many players are going to look good next to Scream, you know, especially stats wise uh, here. But Gio, what do you make of this matchup? I mean, it's very clear that Team Liquid, I think, have the advantage there. The only statistic that is at all really comparable between the two is that headshot percentage. Uh, you know, the thing with Loki is he certainly has some moments where he really pops off. And we saw that in the game that Vitality played against Wild. But I think Vitality can be a bit risky to facilitate his playing on, on Jet as well, too. Especially, you know, in the series we saw them play against Ninjas in Pajamas. You'd find these rounds where they would invest in an operator, everybody else on sheriffs so that they could afford it. And then Loki would go down quite quickly and suddenly all that money is down the drain and there's nothing you can do about it. So it's the consistency for me, I think, that needs to, to be upped because against a team like Team Liquid, you'll really be punished for your inconsistencies. 
Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the operator because that's another thing that we don't really see Scream doing. Uh, not when you have Yamping on your team. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's no, no point uh, for Scream to pick up that uh, weapon. But of course, on the operator, on the side of Vitality as well, it feels like it's map dependent. Uh, and this is where I kind of want to touch on some of the vetoes here uh, because both teams, they've had a bit of a perma ban. And Twiggy, it doesn't feel like Liquid, like Icebox very much right now. Yeah, we saw this again last last time as well. They, they banned Icebox pretty much every time they had the ban first. Uh, they tried to pick Breeze first. This time they haven't seemed to do that. I think they went for it second here, but uh, they did play split and bind once each and won both games. So, uh, you know, I think that's, that's, that's why we're seeing a lot of the uh, picks that we're going to see uh, from them. Yeah, and what about on the side of a Vitality, uh, Geo? They, uh, th this could do, this could turn out quite well for them if they're able to kind of take a Liquid's best, best map off of them. Yeah, I mean, the thing with Vitality is they also have a permaban, which is Haven. I, I haven't seen Vitality in recent times not get rid of Haven straight away. And the thing is, if if Liquid do get rid of Icebox, that is a map that Vitality actually quite like. But I, I can definitely see these two teams prioritizing removing their own permaban uh, rather than necessarily trying to get in the heads of the other one by removing their best map specifically. Um, that should, though, leave some maps that they do both teams really enjoy play, playing on. So um, I don't see it going particularly different from that. Well, with that in mind, uh, ladies and gents, let's have a look at the map vetoes. And now the picks and bands are in. Uh, as we already uh, guessed that Icebox and Haven were not expecting to see them today and we're not going to see them today. Instead, we are going to see a bind first, followed by split and then a breeze as a decider. Uh, of course, bind uh, chosen by the side of Team Liquid, I believe, which is pretty interesting here, Twiggy, because we haven't seen them play for a while, but we haven't seen them play all that much bind either. Yeah, in week one, they only played bind once. They won that game, so they do have a 100% win rate in the last in the last month or so. But, you know, that <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's, it's an interesting pick, especially because they were picking Breeze every time they had first pick during that stage. Yeah, and they beat uh, Fnatic as well the last time we saw them on Bind. Of course, the context being the Fnatic, they were trying out something a little bit funky. But Geo Vitality, this isn't something that they play really in the history of this roster. No, Bind is not one of their, their favorite maps in the world. In fact, throughout the, the course of the closed qualifiers, uh, they played it against Wild and they, they actually lost that map still. It was a 7-13. And other than that, they've really avoided it. It hasn't come up at all. Um, so this is definitely a map that's going to likely fall more into Team Liquid's hands. But it's when we start to look at Split and Breeze that Vitality will probably feel a lot more comfortable. Well, let's talk about a uh, split and breeze as well really quickly, because like I said, the vetoes bind a split followed by a breeze. Do you feel like, um, Twiggy, that this favours either of the teams at all? I mean, to be fair, these are all three maps that Team Liquid, they have a positive win rate on in the last, in the last, well, in, in the, since, since, uh, since week one, right? Breeze, I think they have a 66% win rate on. They played it three times. They won twice. Bind and Split, they both won both of their games on those. So, I mean, this isn't unfavorable for Team Liquid. They're probably pretty happy about this. And Gio, you already mentioned that Split and Breeze tend to be a little bit more favorable towards a Vitality. So do you think we're going to see all three maps today? Um, I would like to believe that yes, I think that Bind is way more likely to go to Liquid. I think that Vitality really enjoy playing on Split. Um, the question there is going to be about how well Team Liquid can adapt and, and learn from the way that Vitality has been playing on it. Because uh, I still, even though Team Liquid didn't necessarily look their strongest back in week one, uh, I still believe that when you consider the coaching staff behind this team and whatever, they will have some real world-class preparation. And even though Vitality really like that, map they're, they're going to be feeling hot breath down their necks also don't forget of course that i mentioned that vitality have slightly changed their composition uh, on split so instead of bringing a sage um, which was something that i praised them for when they played against wild about the amount of control they could have uh, they're leaning into something more aggressive which brings out something new well, the Asian compositions on Bind, I think, is going to be a little bit wild uh, because if we look at both of these teams, um, and we're actually going to go to Asian Select now before uh, I carry on guessing where they're going to pick because it, it does feel like they've both played a bunch of compositions and they've been trying out a lot of things uh, on the side of Vitality. Of course, they've, uh, I think, I believe they've had like five different compositions in the 10 games they've had. 
Uh, but so far here, I think the main thing we need to point out is that Shalabi is going to be given that duel list. Uh, and in some of the games in the past, Geo, they've kind of taken him off the duel list a little bit. But here, they're trusting him with it. Yeah, I mean, if I remember correctly, they put Shalabi on uh, on raise for bind when they played it against uh, Wild as well. I mean, it makes sense. You're going to need a, a raise pretty much anyway. A lot of teams really like to play a raise on this map. Um, and it's one of those um, agents that he really enjoys playing. So uh, I don't see it as a huge problem. It seemed to be pretty successful for them before. Um, although, you know, as far as things go for a map that you lost, but <laughs> you get the idea. Oh, honestly, I hate teams that hover like this. They're teasing <laughs> us, but yeah. maybe they have like a unison lock-in. They're all going to lock in at the same time. But if they lock in everything now, we have a, a big, big, big talking point. I'm winding the clock down so we can kind of wait and see what they do before I ask you about the obvious. Oh, Okay, they've God. done it. Twiggy. Scream, not on the jet, not on the Phoenix, not even on the Sage, but on the KO. Um, okay, I wasn't prepared for that. I can't lie. I, I don't <laughs> have any notes prepared for that one. Uh, so we're seeing, well, two initiators there. Back to the Brimstone. That's something they played back in stage two. This could actually favor them. I guess it is a map that would kind of favor this composition. No duelist at all is, is a bold move from Team Liquid. Uh, I mean, they, they like that, don't they? They did that on Haven as well, uh, back when they decided to uh, move Yampi off of his jet. Uh, but Geo, it, we went from not really knowing where jet was going to be to absolutely zero jet. And uh, Keo instead, what do you make of this? Yeah, I mean, wasn't it? They, they said that they really were seeing a lot of value in the KO. So it doesn't surprise me horrendously uh, that we're actually getting that be brought out from Team Liquid. And you know what? I'm excited about it. After the performance that they had um, in Challengers 1, I want to see them bringing something new. I want to see them trying new ideas because we've seen what this team can offer in the past. And I don't think we got the peak of that in Challengers 1 this stage. And uh, on Bind as well, of all places, you you got to love it when they are pushing the boat out and they're willing uh, to try something new. I think this is the Team Liquid we kind of expected, but definitely not Scream on KO. Uh, but I'm going to stop talking now because I'm getting very, very excited. It's time to head into map one. And I'm also very excited to introduce to you guys uh, to your casters for today, Mitchman and Tombiz. Thank you very much, Sue. You know what, Tom? I'm very excited for this one. We are about to bounce into Team Liquid playing with the KO. Now, if there's anyone that can solve the problems that we've seen from KO throughout the open qualifiers throughout NA, I mean, no surprise there. We're going to see Sluggy and How's the Bacon, the big brains, combining that with all these players on the roster of Liquid, showing us the maximum potential of KO. At least that's what I hope to see. Yeah, no, this is probably one of, if not the team, I'd be most excited to see play this agent. And also, I think that the fact that Scream's now picking it up, it almost makes me like have the flashbacks to the CS days and just being like, oh, Scream's going to be pop flashing. Scream's going to be hitting headshots. Scream's going to have an... Oh, yeah. Scream is going to have an ultimate that can deny anyone else from using abilities. That just means that Scream's going to win the round because no one else can actually do anything against him. This is going to be beautiful. Got Brams right outside waiting for the push that was being attempted by Team Liquid. The pistol round already sees Vitality getting a plant down as they just rush in through bat, wall it off, and now pull back for the post plants. Team Liquid gonna need to do a lot to battle against this, having already used up that knife. Post plant utility is gonna be online to work with Tom, and well, this is gonna buy them a lot of time on the Vitality side. This is already becoming a little bit awkward, but actually the snake bite coming through from Cryptics will at least be able to... What is that, Crosshair? Get that out of my face, Link. <laughs> Get rid of that. Now, I saw like tweets going around about Crosshairs and like things he would be using. That is one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen in my life. And you know what? He got killed for it. So I'm almost glad with that one. Soulcast, Yumpy, they're doing the damage Ooh. though, but the time has been ticking for an awful long time. And Sender and Shalabi have gone through. There is nothing that can be done by Yumpy and it will be the first round for Vitality. Now, that is one of those strats, Mitch, which I'll be honest, I've seen quite a lot in my matchmaking game. So I don't know how many times that will realistically work.
Yeah, for a pistol round, it's really, really strong, though, because that wall, it takes so much utility to break that. If you have a raise, you can blast pack it if she's close by. Otherwise, you're shooting, you're knifing. That gives them plenty of time to get that plant down. And you saw Vitality take advantage of that faster strategy, use the post plant and the pistol because they'd invested into the utility, and they got the reward for it here. Liquid, maybe if they had have had some success on that push down through A mid, they would have been able to actually get themselves a counter to that play by seizing the control behind but instead well they ended up like sitting ducks on the site waiting for the push to come through now it looks like we have a little bit of a technical timeout hello right off the bat my hairless hombre so we're gonna have to have a little bit of a little bit of a chit chat but that's fine because honestly we got plenty to say on this and the first thing tom i'm gonna throw your way is sort of the pacing of, of using a KO. Now, the, the interesting thing, and we had this conversation, I was talking with Dream, uh, C9 White's coach on Valorancing last night, and he brought up a lot of great points about how KO is being basically misused by the majority of teams right now. And as time goes on, I expect that to be fixed. But for now, he's kind of slot in. He's playing kind of an off-brand duelist with the pop flashes. His knife is kind of used on tempo with the rest of the utility. But the point that Dream brought up, which I really, really enjoyed hearing, was that for the most part, the way around works with refreshable utility like Sova's Recon Dart, like now smokes in some instances, like flashes from Sky. You'll use them and you'll wait for them to regenerate. So the first just pulse, insta. <laughs> exactly, right? You pop them out, you get a little bit of map control, and then you hold off a bit. So that's kind of phase one of the round. Phase two is sort of either claiming more map control, faking, yeah. or pushing a site. And that's where you have the utility refreshed up. You pop your recons, your flashes, and you go up for more combat. Now, during those parts of the game, it's actually not really where you want to see KO being played because, for example, when you're pushing a site, you use that knife in, they've probably already counter utility, or depending on who you're playing up against, you're not going to be seeing that utility being used. Instead, they'll be pinking you. Maybe you stop a flash at most. But in using it off-brand and in stopping them from finding information, stopping them from retaking map control over on the defensive side, that's where you can find a bunch of value from off-tempo KO play. And so far, I don't think I've seen any team do that. Yeah, that's fair. I, I think, again, it has been similarly to what you sort of mentioned. It's like, I'll throw it at the beginning of the round. And then I'll wait. And the other thing as well, I've seen lots of coaches, players in general talk about this is like teams can then just work the timing out. Like re realistically, yep, yep. you can just go, okay, well, he's used this. I've got X amount of seconds before he's going to have it again. So we can kind of just chill and hold on to our utility mm -hmm. until then. That's why you see a lot of teams having really late round utility. So we're going to be getting back into things. Enough of our little chit chat about, well, Mitch thinking that everyone's using KO wrong. Tell that to Scream to his face, Mitch. And uh, well, we'll, we'll see if you survive. Well, we haven't seen Scream playing just yet. This is the first time. That's why I'm saying I'm hoping there's going to be some big changes in what we see from ko but for now it's very we a very weak buy from team liquid they lost the pistol they come into this one with some scraps they've managed to put together and for the most part we expect them to get rolled over the objective for them is to find kind of two or three kills and they've already got one on the board with sender dropped but shellacby's quick to take down link oh scream so beautiful two little one taps in there and already this is a decent round for team liquid and they'll even see if they can find some more on the exits yeah, he's got his knife back available. Could at least give him a little bit of extra information, especially with the rotation coming through from Soulcast. But he's not going to get anything. And well, for now, it seems like Scream's just looking to play the exits. Also, dying to the spike here. It might seem a little bit silly when watching it on your screen at home, like, hehe, kek, Scream, noob, died to spike. But he doesn't, he doesn't want to give them any extra ultimate orbs or even the finances they grasp off it. So... Being that low, chances are you're not going to do any extra damage unless they put into his crosshair. So it's actually the smart move to make. So we are going to see 2-0 to zero for Vitality. They are also one of those teams at the moment, Mitch, where I feel like they're most scary the second that momentum gets rolling. Like We, we saw it versus Heretics, where it, it just looked like every single player was popping off. Brams was having a ridiculous performance. And I mean, it just got to the point where they were just steamrolling heretics in the latter stages of the day. So Liquid are going to want to break back pretty quickly. And they are going to have an investment here. I'm still looking at that judge, though, in the early rounds and just thinking, well, where's, where's that going to be played? So I want to keep an eye on the judge. That was interesting. On the start of the round, you have Viper throwing the poison cloud through the teleporter, opening up the doors, a recon, 
which ensures nobody pushes into those doors and also clears out middle. With that, Team Liquid have quite a bit of information and they're using the wall instead of the typical kind of walling off B for the retake or through the TP. They're using this to actually cover the bathroom walkout as well as middle control. That's really smart and a great change to their Viper setup. As well, Screen playing the KO. One quick point I want to mention is this guy's typically been the entry. And for me, at least, KO isn't really the agent you want to be entering, especially when he's got his ultimate online. He can be pop flashing. He can be suppressing people. I don't really want to see him on that front line with ulti pop. So I'm curious to see how things go. And they've actually got a bunch of info from the knife he just threw out, suppressing some players and allowing again. the rotates to come in. But oh my god the plant gets completely destroyed we said uh, when you've got pistols you can't really break the walls but it's very different when you've got three rifles ready to spray away and they are just dominating vitality as they attempt to make it out of this choke point with the spike down in the open round's pretty much done Ooh. yeah bram's trying to get across just to make sure he at least has a rifle in this fight and if anything, it might just be worth saving into the next round. For Tender, he, he's going to want to die. Like, th there's not really left. anything worth saving here. He'll have enough money to buy into the next round anyway. So, for Brams, as said, holding onto the rifle would be great. Making things a little bit more costly because this is currently a flawless round. But th this, is, this is sort of what I said. Like, that's one of those plays that you see it in your matchmaking games. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to put out some utility. Like, maybe there's a few extra pieces here and there. Don't get me wrong. But... There's a reason it doesn't work that well in competitive play. Team play, that, that's the mm -hmm. main reason it doesn't work. Just everybody spamming through the wall, no defense to actually hold on. And also the problem, especially when coming from bathrooms, you can't really cover your teammates because it's a very narrow choke point. So yeah. they made that one a little bit tough for themselves. I think it makes sense in the round that it was to try and roll that gamble. If they get the spike down, then their weaker weapons, their specters, their ghosts become much more valuable in the face of these vandals, not having to take range duels in taking the map control as well. I, it's a good strategy, but I think that's probably the last time we see it used. My MP. Good spot. He's going to win the opening duel. The question is, is there a fallback from here? In fact, doesn't even feel the need to. He's going to use his owl drone to try and find out a little bit more. Someone who's definitely been well, advancing his agent pool, it seems, since Masters. Like we, we saw him on the Killjoy, at least. And before that, obviously, the jet main. But it seems like he's definitely started to put that extra time into Valorant. We know that he's sticking around at this stage. Link seems to be... Almost on that judge only, but then again, I, I think it was him and Vanity at Masters where I, I almost became physically ill with how many kills they were able to get with this gun. Well, Tom, I have to say, you know, with the judge in hand on defensive side, hookah holds are, are nigh impossible to get through. Solk is showing off! But not getting anything, I was gonna say, you know, this is the sky that we've been ranting and raving about. But he is shut down. And this is a plan for Vitality in a 4v2 that looks pretty much unlosable. It really is a disgusting crosshair. I think, you know, <laughs> Zelda, if you want to just not show anything from Link's you know, perspective, you know you I'm like, okay with that. You know when you were a kid and you would, like, fold fold the player, uh, fold the paper, and then you would, like, cut it, and it would come out like a snowflake? I feel like he somehow managed to do that with his crosshair. Like, it, it's one of the weirdest looking things I've ever seen. Yeah, I do not enjoy looking at it. <laughs> I don't know how to use a judge with that. It's like pinpoint precision. <laughs> but look, at two to one, Vitality pick up another round, push themselves onto three, little bit of a hiccup when it came to the bonus round, but they have battled back beautifully. And you also have to take into consideration, Link is, by the looks of it, not... Oh, he actually does just about manage to grab the rifle at the last second. So they managed to get out with Got two you. phantoms. But that doesn't put Team Liquid in a good position at all, Tom. When a team bounces back like that and, and shuts you down, it's going to put your economy on its last legs. And I think they're very lucky that they got away with so many players alive in the previous round because they should be able to buy up here. But this is going to be, you know, credits going all the way down. Uh, this is where crunch time comes in. And, and more interestingly as well is you kind of look at the ultimates uh, across the board and sure, there's a few being built up along the way for Liquid. Like you're not that far away from a Viper's Pit, which especially on Bind, we know can basically just lock off one portion of the map, especially going into mid or the showers as well. We see a lot of teams just basically look to hold that down completely. 
And then also on the other side, you could say the same. I, I think the res as well coming up for Loki, like we know how much that that can change around, especially if he can start to pop off. Because it, it's been a bit of a weird one with Vitality. Just in general, when you look back through the history of this team, like you can go all the way back to teams like Noel Penke, where I remember Vac being like this star jet, really aggressive operator player, like doing ridiculous amount of damage. And now we've seen interviews with him saying like, I don't care about being a duelist. I don't, I don't care about that. I don't care about using the operator. He just wants to win. And we've now seen nearly every single member of this team play a duelist at some point. So they've definitely been testing the waters. This definitely seems to be the best form I've seen Vitality in. If they beat Liquid though, Mitch, I think that's the statement that starts dragging me towards, okay, this team can actually qualify. It's a funny thing when you see somebody who's playing a duelist uh, swap onto another role, saying that they might not know how to play that is... Uh, or like out of their comfort zone for the most part. It's almost disrespectful to the player, you know? These guys have got a lot of depth to them. I don't think there's any top tier professional player in the top 10 of EU that, that sits back and goes, I play Jet, I play Prim, mm. I cannot play anything else. I know these guys I know how to play absolutely everything. I will say, I feel like Vac does it better than most. That That's Ooh. the credit I will give him. Like, I don't think I've ever watched Vac play an agent and gone, eh, maybe that's not the one. Yeah. I, every single time I'm like, Oh, he's sick at that one. But he can also play Sova. Oh, but he's also pretty good at Jet. But he's also, and I'm just sat there like, like okay, man, like, can you can you stop flexing on us, please? Yeah. Can you pick one and like, <laughs> can you make my job a bit easier? I'm gonna have to list every agent as one that you could potentially play. For someone like Vac, though, that's been a necessity in this game because he's been tossed around between so many different left. rosters and mixes that you you better be able to play whatever. Sure. Sure. You don't know what your teammates are gonna be picking up this time next month or who your teammates are gonna be, but hopefully find a good home here in Vitality. Speaking of Vitality, they're getting the plant down on the A side. Some early skirmish towards Bathroom that didn't quite go Team Liquid's way in the same on long that we saw on Cam. But it's Vitality in a pretty strong position and with Team Liquid's economy as scrappy as it is, two players having no cash to buy up. In fact, I think it's Yampi and Sulkus that have no cash to buy up for the next round. It makes sense that these guys are going to look to save these weapons and drop over their teammates coming into the next round, especially if Link is going to be keeping that judge. But this is where you need to now become much more reflective. We've seen a very different Viper setup come through on the A site. We've seen the judge hold on Hookah. Poison we have off. seen the KO playing inside of Lamps and popping that knife out on contact. And so far, Tom, with the exception of the bonus round, there has been very little to say about this default setup from Team Liquid. It has not been successful in Vitality. I wouldn't even say that they're like countering it. They're just beating it. Like just they're being patient in a lot. Like th this yep. round was just them holding a default. Like I'm, I'm yep. <laughs> and they were just waiting for people to aggress. And one of the things I, I wanted to bring up was when it came to the defensive sides in Challengers One, I would I would say in a lot of cases they were actually pretty decent from Liquid, but I wouldn't really call them a defense. Like we saw Screen basically use that jet as a very aggressive by agent just playing and then dashing out of positions and finding them right. so many openers that a lot of the time teams couldn't recover. So that's not an option anymore. They, they can't do that anymore because there's no quick escape. There's no agent that can just get them out. It has to be based on team play. And that was actually some of the things that I think Liquid were a little bit more lackluster in on some of their attack sides. You have Scream dashing, get an opener. He dies, no trade. And that was always the thing I was kind of looking at. Like, this doesn't seem like Team Liquid. This doesn't seem like the team that was challenging at Masters and finished in that top four spot. So I know Sliggy's been on them for sure. But again, these aggressive plays... They're not working. These are just easy openers for Vitality. And in most cases, it's not even a trade. Yeah, interestingly, in a, an attempt to take more aggressive bathroom control, but obviously they have that wall there to play for the fallback. They've switched it up in the Viper setup on the A site so that now the plan is usually that that player in bath takes the fight, hides in the corner afterwards if they get a kill or just manage to get out of there alive. The wall goes up and they fall back. Alternatively, you can get the orb control if you don't spot anybody there. But that early map control that they're poking for ends up with Yampi dead. And now Vitality are capable of pushing into this B site. They have got three coming up on four players and they're exclusively pushing through long here, Tom. They're avoiding that judge completely from Link until the very late round when we're gonna see Sender lurk through here. Solkus opens this one up but leaves Scream in a position. Scream's looking good these oh, days. Jeez. So good. And he's gonna be taken down right away and now the site is theirs. This is a disaster for Team Liquid and a very polished attack from Vitality. Yeah, they're, they're looking really good. Trading on point. 
entries working out as well and even using a little bait <laughs> res and, and they're gonna get killed with a blast pack that's not something you're gonna see every day didn't even activate the, liquid are, are just getting owned like the, the, these are the sort of like miniature plays as well from vitality like the fact that as said using the res to just bait the fire one of the final players into peak they had the spams coming through the back of the wall just to isolate some of the jewels and on the entry it, it almost just looked a little bit too easy vac coming in with three kills and yeah, I, I don't think they've really broken a sweat so far. No. Like, th this is a match where we were expecting Vitality to be pushed to the limits. As I said, like, I, I've seen a, a fair few of their games. I think they've looked good. But I was waiting for them to face off against the top opposition to see if they were going to be able to match up. Thus far, oh, they're looking like they're doing nice. even better versus the top team. There's the knife to complete. Completely counter the ultimate, it means he has to pop it super early. Camp last pack to sight. Can't afford to even aim, really. As soon as you hear that knife activate, you have to fire that showstopper or it is going to be cancelled out completely. Now, with that counter underway, Vitality lose a lot of the push that they wanted, but they've seized hook control for what feels like the first time, and I think Link is going to be upset that he didn't have that judge in there that he has in every other round. The push through the smoke, not quite going according to plan. Scream is waiting and taking them down. Vitality have only Sender, the previous lurk and slow player for the post plans, now in a 1v4, a huge Huge clutch needed to pull this one off, or Liquid will be seeing two on the board. And you can see these players grouped up inside of Hookah. They've got the spike on the floor. They know Sender is on his way, and Scream oh, is primed and ready to pop that 4K. Five to two, we go. Team Liquid finally, in a way, having an answer. I will say they won the round, but I don't know that they figured out Vitality's default play. That is, coming into this round, where I will be worrying for them. Yeah, they beat the four players trying to jump through a smoke strat. Which, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I, like, I, I don't want to harp on Vitality, but was that ever going to work? Well, in they fact, needed I that think... pop flash to be one of the best things I've ever seen. True. <laughs> if Scream had not have went into the corner, if he had have stayed holding that smoke for his teammate, he would have been blinded up. Shalakbi probably True. would have taken both of them down, and then the side is theirs. In fact, I think Vitality would have won that round if Scream was three centimeters to the right of where he was. But the positioning was perfect, and if you give Scream a micro opportunity like that, he will capitalize on it every single time. Yeah, three, three centimeters can be a lot. It's just depending on how it's used. <laughs> Motion of the ocean, baby. That's what it's all about. Vitality, <laughs> they're starting to move into a much slower play than what we saw in the previous round. No longer directed towards a straight push through Hookah. They're not going to die on that sword this time. Instead, mm. they're lurking towards like the A side. side. They're waiting for that Team Liquid aggression that so far has been the downfall. But Tom, Liquid don't feel the need to aggress. They're playing much more passive now. And well, I guess it's a success because 50 seconds in, they still have all their players alive. Yeah, I think the thing as well is this Viper's Pit is a direct counter to what we've seen so far. Like, the B long control has been something that Vitality have been fighting for in the majority of this map. So to just lock it off completely, not allow them any space, it's a good call. However, Vitality, they're just going to try and go in the other direction. I don't really blame them. And then the thing is, a lot of teams now have started to almost counter that counter of the Viper's Pit by pushing through it. So Liquid can't actually dedicate other players over. And it's going to be on to Soulcast here, who's playing a pretty audacious angle. He's going to try and break the wall. They're doing this strat again, Mitch. And now they have their own Viper's Pit to cover it off. This could be a little bit dangerous, man. I mean, when you're running into those Viper's Pits... <laughs> You're losing all your HP right away, and no amount of suppression can really make up for it. Vitality have got the edge. A flash through the smoke is good for someone holding close. Ooh. Did he just get wall banged? Yes, he did. Oh my, and the ultimate's now oh, gone down. This is so Hard ratty. post plant commitment. <laughs> this is disgusting to play against. Solkus, though, catches Sender off. The time isn't too far gone just yet. If they can actually manage to lock them out, they've got it, but there's the orbital strike just in time. That might just have saved the round with Shalafi, the last player alive. He's holding off inside a bat. The blast back doesn't oh, work, but he can't get there in time. A wallbang headshot delivered, but it's not enough. Team Liquid walk away with three. I think if he lands on that blast pack properly, he wins the round. Yep. Like, it's, yep. it's so brutal. <laughs> just You see him just bounce up into the air so slightly, and it's like, <laughs> oh dear, this has gone wrong. I, I, I do have to give credit where credit is due. Liquid played How this in work? the only way that they could. Like the, the fact that they managed to get so aggressive in behind 
if there's another snake bite falling onto that, that round is over. So, love, yeah, sure, I, it ends in comedic fashion, but I love they, the they, giant they, they played picture. that well. Absolutely giant picture of Shalefi just staring at us saw the replays <laughs> happening. Looking straight in the capital. <laughs> Don't look oh, at this. Link finally has the opportunity to use this judge. They've spotted it and they are out of there real quick. You see that immediate reaction, eh? Shalefi's going to be happy that his blast pack worked that time. Link actually avoids any damage from all of this utility that's flying his way. And Yampi picks up another opening. This is Liquid looking a lot better in the early rounds, even finding some upgrades on weapons. Vitality need an answer now. Yeah, this was a round where financially they, they had to take a risk. They had to play more aggressively. I have to say I'm really loving the poison cloud through the TP because it, right. it yep. not only it weakens the players as they push into the judge. So if there was any chance of survival, they're now even more screwed than they already <laughs> were. And it seems like getting the openers well, now they're just picking them apart. A much more passive gameplay after winning those duels. Shalabi, though, just... I, I don't know. I, I get those feelings that at any moment he could just explode onto the server. And after the last round, who knows? This time, not to be. Oh, that's so unlucky. I did enjoy you saying a much more passive play. And I think the second that you finish that part of the sentence... Sulkus ran at them and died. But no, yeah, in general, very true. And Sulkus 9 to 6 right now. He really is one of the best guys in the world right now. I, If not the, like, this guy, his He's turnaround playing with an injured December. hand as well. True, actually. Yeah, I forgot about that. As, he, as he, he almost wasn't going to play. those hawks around corners <laughs> when it went <laughs> I saw that, yeah, yesterday was, I think, the first day that he was recovered. And I don't even know that the recovery was full. So the fact that Sulkus is here playing with an injured wrist, Tom, that's a very good catch. That I, I don't know how he's still so damn good with uh, with that weighing in on him. Another I think he's got mm -hmm. the worst agent as well for having an injured wrist. Like, because you oh. literally have to, like, <laughs> flick going after the, like, there. around the corners. <laughs> so, like, it's, like, le left and then right. And it's just, like, that that's literally the worst agent you could play if your wrist is injured. I can't think of anything even close to as bad. So, may maybe if he just is Scream because of the, the flick headshots he seems to get. But I, I don't think that's really an option when it comes to agent selection. Mm -hmm. I would like to be Scream, please. I, I'd pick that every every week, to be honest. Yeah. I, that, that would be my go-to choice. Pick that in all then my maybe, matchmakings. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'd hit a few headshots here and there. <laughs> <laughs> well, five to four, Tom. A tactical timeout for Vitality has just come to an end. And I'm curious to see what their adaptation is going to be. This wall is a big fake wall from the attacking side of Vitality. You put this down because it means that the guys inside of Lamps probably aren't going to face without help from their teammates. When you have a Sky, though, on the other side, it's quite likely they pop that flash down mid and seize the control. But in fact, Liquid skip a so step and they just rotate over towards the B site right away. They don't believe yeah. there's anybody floating outside of that A site. And so they're going to have a three-man stack that Vitality are still looking to push into. Yeah, they, they pinged so many players. Like, they've got so much information ability now with the combination of Sova, Sky, and, of course, KO that they pinged two players outside of the site straight away. And realistically, you have an idea that probably someone missed it. It's Link. This is bold. He's going to go straight through. Shalabi's just waiting on the other side. Just like, I don't think that's going to work, bud. An easy kill for him, doubling up the fact that they've already got the opener. This round's looking a little bit more rough for Team Liquid. Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, the early round fights have, have been the downfall uh, for at least the first couple that we saw Vitality get on the board. Here, Cryptix is able to fight back and holding off against this sort of fake A aggression. He's burning up some of his utility. Could definitely come to play later on. Yampi's dead. He's wishing he was on the jet right now, able to dash out of that slow, naded shot. There was nothing that didn't hit him right there. And with Scream and Cryptix being the last two alive, locked out of the site, and in a 2v4, uh, saving is probably the right choice. Not really going to be much that they can go for in this sort of scenario. It is quite surprising to me that, as said, like they, they got the pings outside of sight. They got themselves so much information in terms of where Vitality actually were. And then still, not only do they lose the opener, but the plan is then to try and run through the smoke. Now, I understand that there was a, a Hunter's Fury in combination with that to try and clear out some of those positions. But I don't think that it was 
put through the smoke. So they didn't know if there was anybody actually behind that. So it, it does seem like the, the, a lot of the rounds or a lot of the aggressive plays that Liquid are making are much more 50-50 than I would like them to be. Like these are moves like, okay, I'm going to take a risk here. I'm going to take a risk. And we've seen it just a couple of rounds ago work perfectly, like pushing in towards bathroom, finding that opening pick. But it's still ultimately a 50-50 duel. And when you're the defenders, I don't know. I don't really want you pushing into those sort of battles. Yeah, I can see that for sure. Oh, look, another one of this. I didn't even notice the Molly was on him as well. Oh my God. And they the really slow. committed That's to taking filth. that man down. I mean, when you're slowing and mollying or slowing and nading, the guy's already dead. You know, you can, <laughs> you can put one of those bits of utility somewhere else, but they just decided to hard nerf Yampi, and I suppose I can't really blame them. When you look at how important this guy has been for a lot of the victories, this is a very different approach. In fact, they're going to sneak into the TP. Oh, that's sick. The adaptation using the same utility, the predictability round on round, and then switching it up that tiny bit. This is what top level teams do. It looks like Vitality are suspicious. They haven't seen, actually, they have seen the smoke down before. Um, it was used in, I think, the second round when we saw, or maybe even the pistol, when we saw the recon go through to, to be mid. So. I wonder if they're going to suspect the TP play. Surely you don't. Now you really don't. Yeah, no, the information. Already getting too much for them, though, but Link's going to hear everything here. And with the poison orb down, that that is that just that extra little piece of the puzzle just going, well, okay, there's normally someone behind this. I do want... They are actually watching this. I've, if you... I, I mm -hmm. think it's... I think it's Brams was keeping an eye on this, but now the push, he's expecting it, but it doesn't matter. Link has got the timing perfect. He uses his own orbital strike to clear the players in front of him. And now just two players on Vitality remain. This is such a sick adaptation. Yeah, ratty gameplay is exa exactly what you want to see. Loki's left all alone in a 1v4. He's made it to elbow. The problem is they know he's there. And they're more than capable of taking him down. Six to five. We're looking at a potential Last tied round, up half. Tom, considering how we got here, the vitality were leading by quite a bit. I mean, I was yep. feeling really bad for Team Liquid in those first five or six rounds. And now they have bounced back. They're looking much more comfortable. And you have to ask, you know, for the vitality side, how is that affecting the, the mental coming into the next half? If they manage to be equalized and feel like, you know, out of the last seven rounds, they've only really won kind of one or two. Yeah, it's been a solid turnaround. And I, I think that the theory crafting from Liquid is, has just been insane. Like, it, it, these have already... Like, if you go and break down just a few of these rounds alone, you already have more content than you probably get from most matches. Mm -hmm. So, it, it's been enjoyable to watch. More content the than NABCT. All right, all right, I see the shade. <laughs> You're on Valoranting now. you got to try and take down some of your, your fellow co-workers in that regard. Regional no enemies. I think it's going to be flashback off the angle. They've gone back to this long play, which has been fairly successful, and they've caught out Cryptics, which, well, that's a hell of a lot of utility just gone within a second. Luckily, well, the other Viper's gone as well, so I guess it works both ways. Now, shout out Brams for keeping that disgusting crosshair alive. I've seen Shadow use it before, and now he is doing the same, but I think Link has definitely taken the cake for the biggest He's won abomination. The top Trump's battle. Yeah, that is... <laughs> And it's just ridiculous. He, he can't see half the screen. <gasps> the wall up. I don't know if Shalapi was quite expecting that. He seemed caught off guard as he went up above. Loki able to take down Link. It buys them a chance, a small opportunity. Blinded in the corner. Oh, and he's even hit by the squids. Good night and sweet dreams. Spike on the floor. And it's left to Brams to clutch it. Six to six we go. Team Liquid tying it up at the half and a very impressive turnaround on what was a very disappointing start to their defensive side. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was definitely a slow start. Oh, wow. Oh, I get updates. Yeah. 11 to 3. Who predicted BDS in that thing? Like, who, would, uh, who would do that? Yo, shout out to who the people on Twitter who told me that I was underestimating BDS. Yeah, 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 yeah. 11 to 3. Let's, let's go. 10 star I actually definitely don't have, him, have them all the way to the lower bracket final. <laughs> <laughs> Now, as, Sorry, as I, I believe said, in the you know, comeback. 
for me, BDS is like a decaying team. I feel like they really need something new to, to lift them up because they have just been slowly getting worse over time. And Gatch added to the roster confused me even more because who the hell is he replacing? Why is he there? Why are you six man rostering? I don't get it. I don't know what's going on. I feel like it's a desperation play of a of a dying roster, let's say. So maybe they can impress me moving into the Ooh. next maps, but for now, 10 star wrecking them. But we're back into this series with the pistol round going live and Team Liquid. Oh, they are pushing out that B side, but little do they dead. know, Vitality are right oh, no. behind them. Oh, no, never mind. It's going to be Link who's dead instead. <laughs> He walks back around the corner and spots the whole Vitality squad. Yumpy still in play, but they knew he was here. They saw him walk there just moments ago. Sender in a good position, but now they can actually just take troll of the defender spawn. The thing is, they won't actually know this. Expecting the full squad to come in from behind, the information garnered by screen, however, might give them a little bit more, knowing there's still two players on long. Loki getting in, and actually, he's just going to tap the defuse, try and bait them into position. It's awkward. In fact, he doesn't even get the kill, but it doesn't matter in the end vitality that was a pretty nice pistol round i like the idea completely taking everything away from liquid in terms of control and they'll get their lead back that they will hey you can be good in the early rounds in the pistols but i want to see what else you got to offer you know liquid's ability to come back into that late half and look as dominant as vitality did in the early doesn't fill me with a lot of faith uh, faith rather for this vitality side but with that pistol round under their belt, they'll now face into a very weak buy from Team Liquid. And this should be somewhere that they're able to survive with the majority of their players. Again, similar to the second round of the first half, Liquid will be happy if they walk away with two kills. Just removing that one rifle and forcing two players to uh, the force up in the next round. Brands, that was a risky play to go for the orb without even having that wide swing there. And eventually they're going to abandon that plan. Again, this round, it's all about damage. Can Liquid make this one costly? Maybe get a plant? Probably not. Especially not with the position of Sender. Then again, they've managed to take him out at least. Bram's just going to be waiting patiently around the corner. And I, I still think the chances for this round in general are, are slim to none. In fact, I thought for a second, I might get, actually get caught here. Peek out. Bram's is going to get the quad. And well, a plant, at least, will probably bring back some of the credits that they at least paid into this round. But it is still going to be Vitality now, reaching eight and only losing one player. Not too bad. I mean, especially because Loki came into this one with a ghost. Uh, he can drop a ghost or a specter to his teammates, and they don't have to make any reinvestment, really, with the exception of armor and some utility. So overall, a very positive round for Vitality and a great start. The foundation's now built to hopefully extend this even further. The buy round for Team Liquid is gonna see a lot of rifles. It's gonna see full utility and ah, this is where they done. can be scary. That's how it's done, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, we don't need to uh, make any more memes about you, Tom, if you can just learn from what you've seen on the screen here today. And, you know. I, I'm actually I'm I'm basing myself off Soulcast. I'm I'm gonna be that that Sky main because oh, I, I can't throw Viper utility, so it's fine. You can throw games though. That's the good thing. I don't know. I don't know. I th I think I think you do that better. I call by, you the European randomly steel. going AFK. No, Mitch genuinely the other day walked off because he had put sausage rolls in the oven at the beginning of the game that take ten minutes to cook, and what? didn't th and then thought that he would uh, be able to finish the game before they would hungry. be done so man hungry, man is a man is a moron don't play matchmaking <laughs> with hey Mitch. we won that game tom so let's not let's not be toxic about uh, that it was right? probably a harry hard carry that's basically what we've learned yeah, harry got 35 kills but that doesn't matter we won the game that's <laughs> and without the sausage rolls it might have been different you never know Pushing out onto the site, Team Liquid are surprisingly going into B and blitzing in at that, giving the opportunities for these Spectres to tear them apart. Orbital Strike is committed, not finding anything. And oh, Liquid getting pushed out here. Cryptics hadn't got a chance. That's a devastating round. Up against the bonus. Hey, if it was a clutch, if it was a 1vx that was one out, then fair enough. But right now, they're 9-6. to six. Vitality lost one player in the previous round. They upgraded most of their weapons for free. This is the best start they could possibly have into this half. Yeah, and, and this is the map that, if anything, 
I'll be honest, I was expecting Vitality to lose. Like, they recently lost it to Wild Multi Gaming, which uh, definitely a bit of an upset there. And they're on a, a three losing streak. Sure, one of those is to FPX, but losing to Excel as well, who definitely haven't been in the greatest of form. So, I, I again, they've set themselves up as good as they can. They're winning both pistols, getting both bonus rounds, I believe, as well. So... Off to a flying start in both halves. The thing is, though, what we witnessed in the last was that Liquid were able to break back. However, the problem being here, not going to be much invested into this round either. Just could be some pistols. And again, I feel like it gets to the point now where making things costly isn't really enough. They, they need to actually be doing some serious damage in this round. Yeah, they definitely do. And oh, there it is. Right off the bat, Jampy is able to get one. A second okay. follow through on from Link. And maybe damage isn't going to just be the name of the game. Liquid might actually have a chance to get into this. Now, Link is very low on HP, but you notice so Sokus is right next to him. I'm not sure if... Oh, no, he doesn't have the heal online. That's very disappointing. So Link is now kind of hung out to dry in that sense. What could otherwise be a decent round. In fact, they don't even get the rifle. I, I don't blame them for not going for it, but there were two up for offer. The share of play from Team Liquid being stalled inside a bathroom. The mid guys going to be pushing through Viper Utility, which certainly isn't the easiest. In goes the knife to stop it, but Cryptix peaks before it's down. Scream able to trade. Shalak be on the site, creating distance using that Vandal, but Link, 8 HP, and a second kill for him in this round. Plant even to come through, and with Orbital Strike online, he can maybe play post plant, but Brams is pushing him quickly and connecting the <laughs> shot with a Sheriff of his own. Double digits for a Vitality, but Tom, they got a spike plant, they got four kills. I think on paper, although Vitality have won this round, that was a pretty solid performance for Team Liquid with just Sheriffs. Yeah, for sure. Like, they're definitely in isolation. Solid round for Liquid. I think they'll be a little bit disappointed that they didn't manage to close it out, especially in the two versus one. But hey, the, it was a serious weaponry disadvantage, HP especially for Link in the end. But now we need to see them break back. Because if, again, if, if you don't manage to actually crush the economy of your opponent, then it's all not worthwhile. If there's an instant return in this round from Vitality Ooh. winning it flawlessly, it really doesn't matter too much. And by the looks of it, we're going to see a little bit of aggression. We've got the Operator already into play for Loki and Sender. A little bit too close for comfort. I like the idea here in the early round for Screen to use his knife immediately, but use it on a high velocity or high... Um, Elevation, let's say. So the knife goes really high up in the air and it takes a long time to come back down, meaning that you're refreshing it the whole time. Like your cooldown is already in effect from the second that you throw it. And then you get a knife down a little bit later on in the round when it's slightly more impactful and they combine that with the, um, the utility they had going in through Hookah. I'm looking at this mid play and they've droned it out, but not spotted anybody inside of this ulti, which is lucky because Sender was what, 10 HP at the start of that drone. They're going to throw everything at this man. Orbital strikes going down. Sander can just step right back in there without a problem, surely. In fact, he's got a free angle where he's not even slowed down. And Team Liquid have committed quite a bunch there, Tom, on what was a gamble that they would get the Viper. And now that they haven't, they're falling back. But why is Sander oh, pushing? Did you see the gun? 30 seconds left. I don't think so. Oh, I thought for a second they might have actually seen the gun just poking out of the smoke, but that might just be the slight visual advantage we have from uh, observing from outside. The problem is now 20 seconds. Three players are ready and waiting on the B site. Shalabi heard everything behind. If they make the push through, he's just going to be waiting for them. Easy kills for him, and now the time really is ticking. This round has gone completely wrong for Liquid. And, well, if anything, holding on to the gun by might be the best case because realistically, there's no way they're winning this and Scream's even going to fall at the end. 11 to 6. As said, this was the round where they needed to put the pressure on to break the economy of their opponents. And Vitality survived with four players. Hey, not too bad for Vitality. Two away from victory. And no matter how good Liquid are at those late halves, this is going to be a really tough comeback for them. The start of this half is about as good as it physically could have been for Vitality. Like, every step yeah. of the way, they're getting away with murder. The fact that they lost a couple of players to the Sheriffs definitely looked like a bump in the road, but it was nothing more than that. A little bit of an inconvenience. Now they've got plenty of credits stacked up. They've got rounds of plenty. And they're starting to pop off. Shalapi's even fixed his cam. So, I mean, everything's going their way. Oh, my that. God. Back blinded himself. 
Well, the, the thing is, though, he's, he's actually dropped Scream. Like, it, it may still look like this is a four versus four, but then again, they've walled yeah, it off. Never up. mind. Scream's yeah. going to come back. So it's not really that much of a problem. I guess he's a little bit lucky that he decided to use his ultimate in this round. Otherwise, he would have been dead. It's also worth noting the previous round as well. Sender almost died within the first, what, few seconds? 19 HP? Ends up not only locking off half the map with his ult, but then also helps Shalabi get the other kills on the other side of the map with his screen. So uh, it, it still feels like that last round was close, even if it wasn't in terms of personnel. 50 seconds left. It looks like they're building towards the A site, at least in this case. But again, it seems like Shalabi is almost just rotating and re-aggressing all across the map just to try and find his teammates' information, give them the pieces of the puzzle that they wouldn't be able to get elsewhere. He did the same in the last round, pushing down mid. This time he spotted absolutely nothing, but if he can catch Link, this is gonna be rough. Luckily for them though, Link is gonna win that duel. Oh, well, down goes Sender as well. So Liquid are just rolling over this site. Brams is trying to make a sneaky little oh, play, but they know he's been playing around lamps. So they are clearing him from the front and from the back with Solkus. Catching him out. Is Loki going to go for this with the Operator? I mean, they have got plenty of cash, but it's a 1v4. You know you're not going to win this 9 times out of 10, but he's going to roll the dice looking for that 10th reality. Yeah, I mean, even after the first, the second that he finds it, they're just going to push him down and spawn, make sure he can save this weapon. It just doesn't seem worthwhile. And now you're in trouble, because look at that. Look at the immediate shift from Team Liquid to start Ooh. running at this guy and make sure he can't get they away. they him. He's still Look going. Look at he's, he's already running in behind oh, them. Oh, Loki. So, like, he's got nowhere to escape at this point. Yeah. The Flash also stuck. Like, he should be absolutely dead here. I don't know how he gets away with anything. And Really? Okay, there we go. I don't know if you completely lagged out there, but I did. I uh, did. Yes, yeah, okay. I, did. I was I was getting very worried, but hey, it worked <laughs> out in the end. Uh, very strange post-round play from Loki. I, I don't understand it. Like, he, let's pretend he kills Scream there. He's still going to die. He's going to be pincered between the spike and two players rushing him. And the number one objective, the second they hear that operator, is let's kill this guy. Let's make sure that he doesn't save it, because you earn more by saving that operator also, than you do by dying. Yumpy's got it now. Which, uh... Well, yeah, exactly. Just, you've just given Yumpy a free op, which I'm going to go ahead and say, for any team out there, not a, not a good idea. <laughs> he, he's pretty good with that gun. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see if that comes back to bite them a little bit. If, if Yumpy gets a few kills in this round, we can tick that off as a yes. But, it, it again, it's Liquid now trying to almost scrap their way back into the map. Same as the first half, very far down. I think it was a 5-1 scoreline before they really started to build back in. Ended 6-6. Six, six. Now, it is very similar in the second half. So we'll see if they can do the same once again, or if there is going to be that same resurgence. Now, as you sort of mentioned, Vitality have still got plenty of cash to go into this round. They also have some pretty damn deadly ultimates, which are going to make things pretty hard to hold onto this site. I am, however, looking at that Viper's Pit. I'm interested to see how it's going to be used by Liquid. Oh, dear. Oh, that's dealing a lot of damage. Yampi half HP, Sulk is dead. Losing your, basically your primary duelist in this composition, right? With Sulkus going down, the sky is played as a duelist. You're losing your flashes, you're losing information. That is a bunch taken out of Team Liquid's inventory to start such an important round with Vitality holding on the back side. They're going, oh, that's such a good ultimate. The corner's cleared and Brams is down. One final pulse gonna go out and that even tags up a couple yeah. of players as well. Loki and Sender getting hit by that and Sender finished off, off the information Scream had to play with. That is an absolutely incredible ultimate from Yampi that has just pulled Liquid from the depths of despair really into an advantageous position with spike planted and the viper's pit to play around in the post plant i wonder if vac expects two players to be sitting this far back They're so deep within cryptic's actually gonna fall there this leaves scream alone he corrects his aim just quick enough to get away from the boom bot the flash perfect but it leaves both players behind the next to each other mitch and now they're just defusing he's got an operator oh this is the God. worst gun for this sort of moment he needs to jump up and the pistol will be there to close things out the biggest sigh of relief not just for mitch but for liquid as well that was way too close i am i am sweating blown away by what i've just <laughs> witnessed that was 
That was a crazy round, man. And it's not often that you'll see those Sage Walls to try and go for the sneaky diffuse on those tiny little angles. That's not often you'll see them work either, but it came very damn close that time around. This is, this is the most ridiculous <laughs> job I've seen in a long time. Like, back blinds himself. Uh, it's, almost, it's almost just like hey, like a meme of just like, they well, don't if win I that. can't see, he can't see. <laughs> they absolutely do not win that round if Yampi doesn't have an operator. Like, I, if he had a Vandal there, he doesn't win that. It takes him like one second longer, half a second longer to kill Vac, and then the defuse is already through. Genuinely, they just lost that round because Loki gave them an operator in the previous round. Sure. Well, this one is already off to a flying start. Brams has fallen early. We know how much they've been delaying with their utility. This time, though, it's looking like a much faster pace round. You're going to have the flash in combination with the Seekers, which just forces them completely off of the site. This is a, a perfect execution once again. After plant guaranteed, and well, the remaining players just left behind. Now, Vac... He needs to get something, at least here, if they have a chance. Oh, indeed, but he won't. They'll be taken Hit down the right away. And Team Liquid, okay, another on to Loki. They're looking very good to close this round out. The spike ticking away slowly, as are the numbers for Vitality. But Sander looking to just save this weapon. Potentially, maybe play a little bit of an exit. Okay, off angle towards heaven. That should catch Sulkus off guard. Little bit of damage. Another old point ticked up. He's being hunted from behind, but he knows it. He's going to be more than ready for these guys to be on this angle, but screams too quick. 11 and 9. Liquid not letting this one go without a fight. That's for damn sure. It, it is it is somewhat unbelievable to me that Soulcast is now he, he's he's got an injured wrist he's been moved into much more as you sort of said like he he's basically playing like an entry fragger here in a lot of cases because for Scream to do it. Like, he's still Scream, but it wouldn't make a lot of sense with the agent that he's currently rocking. So we're seeing a lot of those pop flashes in this round in particular, running in behind all of his Seekers. He's still wrecking everyone. Like, it, I, I do have to say, like, I feel like the development of Soulcast when it came to this agent coming into the game was just almost like two completely different players. Like, it, he's improved so much with that addition of Sky. And... I'm starting to get a little bit worried now for Vitality because I feel like it's it's almost like I think I feel like this time in this half at least they've almost given the opportunity to Liquid to break back into this map and Liquid have gone all right thank you very much we're now back on the horse no pun intended <laughs> no it definitely feels that or way or the prancing horse if you're zashed <laughs> the prancing horse indeed I, I love how he says that so how can you tell <laughs> it reminds me of the the Jontron video whenever he says it as well. I don't know if you've seen the the exercise one, and there's a prancer size, which is a, oh, a no. woman, a woman who has a a DVD of you know exercises where you prance like a horse with some ankle weights. It's strange, um, and probably After not as beneficial. That, she, as she's just gonna walking. get she gets signed by Liquid tomorrow. You can see <laughs> you can see Jonas doing the prancing horse exercise. <laughs> He did say he was filming a commercial yesterday, so maybe hey, that was it. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jonas. Welcome to Prancer Size. I like to prance while I'm learning my lineups. <laughs> oh, I would pay money for that, Jonas. If you release a DVD <laughs> of you Prancer Size showing some horse-related exercises, I'm down. I'm down. Not an operator this time. It's going to be the Marshal. Shot's not going to be connected either. So much utility just holding players back off the peak. Nowhere really to move. Sende is going to make a play through, though. And this time, the flash is perfect from back. They take three players down with the Spectres. And everything seems to have fallen apart. Just going to be two players remaining. Of course, it's going to be a switch up of weaponry. Actually, a Spectre picked up for Yumpy. He's going to try and hit them back with their own weaponry. And there is a long flank coming in. Vitality realizing, okay, let's sit passive. Let's not give them any of these jewels and look to try and surround them. Yumpy instead going to try and take the initiative. But he walks into the Marshal and now it's all on to Cryptics.
What a nice shot from Loki as well. Cryptix has got the first, but now he's been spotted, and all they need to do is group up and not offer 1v1 oh, duels, no. which so far they have not done. Still offering 1v1 duels as Cryptix is now stuck in a corner. The ult doesn't what? actually hit him. He's still alive, and the 1v1 oh. just about goes to Shalakbi. It will be 12 to 9. <laughs> Vitality reach map point, but that one came a little bit too close for comfort, Tom. I believed. I believed. I thought he was about to 1v4 ace. Like that was an <laughs> incredibly nice attempt from Cryptix. And oh, Vitality very nearly threw that one away. Like They, they had the right idea. It, it was just this, this small amount of aggression that sort of brought things back for them. And oh, it's slightly disjointed on some of these peaks. So close. A nice try. But ultimately, it is still going to be what was a weak investment actually winning the round for vitality so ever closer to closing out this map as said a map that hasn't looked particularly good for them in the past so a victory here and heading into the second which i believe is split right I, they're, they're looking pretty strong on that map so uh for liquid it's still a worrying prospect but let's be real they could still very easily bring this back most definitely. Yeah, we're, we're not going to count Liquid out at all. But one of the most important things for me in looking at this Vital Vitality roster is that they've had their hiccups before. This is a team that, well, Tom, you've been on a lot of desks with me. You've been on a lot of casts with me, and you've heard me insult Vitality as a roster pretty much every time the opportunity came up. You know, they, I don't know why he was still jumping. That was that was ludicrous from Brabs to just bait them, bait them into that. But Yambi gets him eventually, gets a sweet revenge. Plant can be found, and, well, I'm not going to... First of all, I want to point out that Scream is not the first man in, right? He's popped his ultimate, but he's letting Yampi enter. He's making sure there's no utility for the enemies to play around. Link with a quick 180 catches back. Gorgeous stuff. And Liquid here really just playing textbook Valorant when it comes down to this. Holding all their angles for these guys to push back in. Making sure that they're harassing any map control that's being attempted. And Vitality have no way back in, really, with the exception of some incredible individual plays that just don't come through. So 12 to 10, we go. But just to quickly finish that point song, Vitality typically... Uh, you know, pretty much since the inception of being a terrible team uh, in Valorant, they've never done anything noteworthy, really. They've not been a contender for titles. It's just been a whatever, a so-so team of really good individuals, but no kind of thought behind it, it felt like. Now, though, with this roster, they've reached a point where I actually believe in them. And it's worth mentioning they knocked out Wave, Heretics, NIP. This is a damn strong roster that yeah. I even predicted to win this series, um, which I presumed meant they were going to get 13 3 Wait, you predicted them to win? Oh, so that, that means they are screwed. Yeah, they're that, dead. That, that's as being water. proven right now. Now, of course, this is just pistols for the most part. An SMG for sender. But not much invested. They are playing for the full amount of rounds. 24 likely to come through unless some sort of miracle round. Now, I will say they did win the last round they won with SMG. So not going to hold it off completely. Shall I be forced off the angle but they are being picked apart one by one and it seems like cryptics is well aware of any positioning of these remaining players so they are cleaning things up wonderfully a flawless round coming out as well for liquid and now it's crunch time because as said it, it seems like vitality have almost given liquid a way back in as said at the beginning they've now won both pistols got off to what a 5-1 start or something in both halves so if this now goes the way of Liquid, you almost have to look at Vitality and go, you kind of threw this one away, even if it was an impressive comeback from Liquid. Yeah, well, most definitely. I mean, in this instance, one pistol round, or in reality, one pistol and a follow-up, going Liquid's way, they win the map. You know, and that's, that's not nice, because <laughs> early rounds are historically unreliable. You don't typically have teams that consistently win them sure you have teams that consistently lose them like fanatic but uh you don't normally have teams that win you know 90 percent of their pistol rounds and when it comes to to this series or to this map in particular uh, vitality have gotten quite lucky to have those early round leads to push themselves into the early half advantage in both halves but now they have a real test closing this one out right here right now or it's going to be overtime and in the buy rounds liquid have just looked better and that is a fact for vitality I'm worried. They've got a res, nothing else to play trail. with. 
Seeker's going to be popped. Orbital Strike is available for Link as well. And I feel like it's going to be put out very early on. Indeed, over towards Lamps and it catches Vag. Down goes Brams. They need a hero and they need one oh, now. Sender will not be it. Wall banged and hit by Snake Bites. Ooh. But Jalabi collects them through the smoke, leaving it down to Loki. A one versus two, but a res available. As we said earlier, he's going to slow it. He's going to pop that res, but he needs to cover that player as they come back online. The swing together. Scream does it. Flash is oh. there. Back. Six HP remaining. He's hunting oh, it down dead. and he gets it done. That is the map win for Vitality with a defuse. It is 13 <laughs> to 11. And what an incredible way to close out map one. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Yeah, definitely stick it on the player cams. They, they, they had to let, almost let that go so he could actually defuse the spike. <laughs> what a way to close it. I was thinking towards the end of it, like, there's no way that this res is as impactful as it needed to be. And then VAC... We have to talk about this man. We brought him up so many times. His depths of agents are ridiculous. Mm -hmm. He's now putting himself in the running for sure as is one of the better skies in Europe. And they have taken combined. It was a grind. It also took them getting off to flying starts in both maps. But they're, they're not going to care, Mitch. They now go on to some of their comfort choices. Like Bind and Haven are the ones where they're definitely a lot more shaky. Going into the maps remaining in the series, they're more than happy to play. That they absolutely are. Split is going to be the next map up. And Tom, after that performance from Vitality, yes, they get the early half advantage every single step of the way. They put themselves in a good spot to close out the series, but they still get it done. Now they only need to win one of the next two maps to knock Liquid into the lower bracket. This is the team that eliminated Heretics, NIP, and Wave. And we'll see if they can knock Liquid down below in just a little bit. For now, though, it's time to go to a break.
Welcome back to the VCT Challengers main event where Team Vitality have taken map one over Team Liquid. I'm your host, Yingsu, and I'm joined back on the desk by Twiggy and Geo. Welcome back, you guys. What a map but that was and what a statement from Team Vitality. They haven't done too well on this map in the past, but Twiggy, what a time to step up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I have so many rounds down here, round four, round five, round six, round eight, all, all these Vitality just coming through and being so smart to stay away from the positioning of Team Liquid players they knew were holding great positions, being able to find picks on all sides of the map and giving themselves the opportunities to push in. And they really made the best use of it, coming within two rounds, but they got the job done absolutely flawlessly. Yeah, I, I mean, it was just such an impressive game. And it sort of makes me laugh watching that game, just seeing especially how someone like Shallaby popped off and thinking that when he first uh, got picked up by the roster just a couple of weeks ago, there were a lot of people online who were giving him a lot of flack, a lot of criticism, saying he wasn't going to be good enough. And I don't think you can watch a game like the one that we just we just saw and hold that to be the case anymore. It was It was truly impressive. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, that one round where he could have just uh, last packed them and won the round for me. I don't know about you two, but I was like, oh, Shalabi, that was so close, but he did great there. Uh, well, let's talk about the uh, the elephant, the sentinel in the room. How, how, how about that? The uh, the robot in the room. Uh, Geo, what did you make of Scream's KO here? Uh, especially it being his debut on this agent. Yeah, I mean, this was the big thing that I was certainly looking out for, especially as Liquid said that they really wanted to, to pick him up and we're not getting any jet out of Scream. Uh, in bind it was an interesting one because when uh when team liquid were on the defense i think they were getting a little bit less out of him than they were on the attack which i think is totally understandable but a lot of it in that case really seemed to depend on the way that vitality were playing you know vitality had a lot of very passive attacks they would spend a lot of time kind of poking and prodding at the defense before committing and it was on those sorts of rounds that scream really he would use a lot of his utility quite early and it wouldn't necessarily have a huge turning point in the way that Vitality were playing, but it was on those rounds where Vitality got very aggressive very early. We saw the clip of it at the beginning of our, our little set of clips there, um, where if Vitality did get aggressive at the beginning, he could use his utility so much better and it would give Team Liquid the time to get in those ideal positions to really punish the incoming push from Vitality. Uh, in general, it looked a little bit better on the attack anyway, and I think Team Liquid were less patient in their attack than Vitality was, so he could use his uh, utility a lot more proactively. And what we especially saw, um, for example, on round 19, was when he would use his KO utility in conjunction with other utility that was coming out from the rest of the team. So this specific one I'm referencing was a Hunter's Fury from Yampi. It really gave Team Liquid so much space to push up on their attacks and uh, take down a lot of those really frustrating positions that we found Vitality holding. So it was a little bit here and there, and I would like to see improvement on it on the defense especially, but for a debut, it wasn't terrible. Uh, yeah, and Twiggy, what did you make of that? Yeah, I mean, there was just some brilliant plays all around from both teams. I mean, Team Liquid, they did do absolutely brilliant. I, I you know, I didn't expect this composition to start with, and uh, they came out of nowhere to... to well, I mean, taking 11 rounds with a with a team composition that we haven't really seen from them whatsoever. I mean, this is obviously just scrims that they've been uh, doing this one on. It's it's impressive. Uh, yeah, well, Liquid, you know, they, they were doing some good stuff. Uh, Twiggy, uh, I know you're going to talk more about one of the rounds where uh, they managed to pull off some cool things here. Yeah, I mean, this is round 11. Round 11 was a strategic adaptation of the setup they use pretty much every other fall by round. Link uses a smoke both to cover his cross to the B-short teleporter and hide Cryptix as Poison Cloud, which opened the teleporter door, and then you can see... Uh, later on in the round, Link stays there. He hears the utility from Vitality passing. Now, once they're spotted in Hookah by Scream, Link uses the Orbital Strike to push the Vitality players either into the view of the Liquid players waiting on B or back towards him. And he uses the surprise positioning to take his first pick onto Brams. And then they push through from there on out. It's too late. I mean, Liquid have already made use of the Rush Choke point brought on by the Orbital Strike to take those two picks. Loki is trapped by himself on sight. The last player who can actually do anything is Sender. He tries to catch Link uh, back on his attempt to retake Hookah but Link is already there in time. It was actually a really interesting round too because on Vitality's side of things, not many of their attacking rounds did they have a full team focus on Hookah. I mean, even when you look at the way that some other teams will attack onto that area of the map, usually you get a really aggressive raise and even Shallaby 
generally on a lot of these rounds was playing a little bit further back. You'd kind of poke it a bit, but not fully go in. Uh, and you'd have a lot of focus over on um, Belong and Garden, uh, for example. So the fact that Vitality were sending all of their players up there through Hookah was almost like, uh, you know, digging for gold there for Team Liquid. The fact that that setup was just so perfect to deal with with so many players. Yeah, I mean, Vitality, they did a great job there. They did let Liquid get back into the game a little bit there. Gio, how impressed were you with the way they closed it out? Because Vac, in that situation, yeah. I wasn't quite sure if he was going to make it. <laughs> well, I mean, the thing with Vac, and, and this was something that I, I really noted when I was going back and, and watching a couple of the VODs um, from, from Vitality's closed qualifiers, and I, used, I uh, noted this quite a bit when they were playing against Ninjas in Pajamas, but Vac is that player who is so happy to get in there and get aggressive rather than just holding angles, especially if he's if he's either the guy leading the charge or if he's the last one playing, that's when you're going to see that. So he's the guy who'll like jump down from heaven and, and literally go hunting through hell rather than trying to just hold passively. And that's really what we saw in that final round. And for him to pop off like that, you know, we looked at that quite a bit for some of that leadership, some of, you know, he he's kind of, uh, in some ways, the glue that, that keeps the team together. And uh, for him to end it like, that it was so impressive and a big heartbreaker for team liquid well vitality they have made a great start here but team liquid will have a chance to bring it to back map two is on the way right after this break Last round in the half.
end of Vitality's way, but this best of three is just getting started. I'm joined once again by Twiggy and Geo on the desk, guys. Split is up next, and Geo, this was Vitality's map pick. Yes, and this is where things get a little bit worrying because at the beginning we kind of discussed the idea that Bind was was pretty much going to be an advantage to Team Liquid. It's not a map that Vitality liked to play that much. And clearly things didn't go that way, but in my opinion, I think Split is lent way more towards Vitality. It is a, a real favorite of theirs. They've played it a ton recently. It makes me a little bit concerned for Team Liquid, if I'm totally honest with you. Yeah, Team Liquid only played this once during week one. They did win the game, but it was 14-12 to BDS. Uh, not quite an easy fought win. They played, well, two initiators once again, but this time they were playing Scream on the jet. They were playing quite a normal pre uh, sorry, uh, quite a normal split uh, composition and and what they've played on bind is really not what I would consider to work for them on split. So I'm interested to see how they play this. Well, in terms of a split for Team Liquid, you know, they have to win here. The lower bracket is not the end of the world, but you don't want to fall to the lower bracket so early on in day one. So Twiggy, what do Liquid need to do to get back into the game here? I think the big thing for them is that, you know, they were doing well to figure out exactly how uh, Vitality were playing that one, but it came too late in the game. I think it took about five or six rounds for them to really figure out exactly how they wanted to get back into that first half. By that point, it was almost too late for them and uh, Vitality Vitality took it on the second half. They need to really uh, get going on this one. They now know how Vitality play. And I think they really need to start taking those first few rounds to really get themselves a head start on this. I think that there, there certainly is that whole idea that because Vitality have played Split quite a bit lately, Liquid may have a little bit more to go off of. But, and you know, as you mentioned, Yinsu, you don't want to be falling down into the lower bracket on the first round, but that's exactly what happened to Team Liquid back in week one. So, they're going to have to outdo their previous selves to actually get further on here. And I think they've got quite a mountain to climb considering the position we're in within this series right now. I mean, as you said, Geo, Vitality, they played a split quite a lot. They seem very confident here. Uh, what, what do you think are some of the scary things about Vitality on this map? <laughs> well, I think with any map, uh, sorry, with any team where you know that there is a, a specific map that they want to go to, you have to consider that that's scary in and of itself. I'll be honest, one of my big curiosities here is the fact that Vitality have recently changed their composition that they bring on split. When I uh, when I did the, the Vitality versus Wild Multigaming game, one of the things that we really praised about Vitality was the way that they uh, held mid control on their defense. And a lot of that was a compositional thing because they were bringing a Sage and their opponent were not. Um, but they've actually started to relinquish the Sage and instead bring a Jet. So a lot of what I gathered is the idea of, of how Vitality play this game pretty well, especially defensively, might have changed now because they're not playing the exact same sort of composition um, so that could have in and of itself produced a new kind of play style and new ideas that make Vitality scary in a different way that's actually a bit different from what we've seen of them um, in, in recent history. Yeah, I think the main thing here is we don't know what to expect going into this one. It seems like Vitality, they've changed things up. Liquid, they've changed things up completely. I really don't know if they're going to be playing this Breach jet on this one. I really do hope they bring the Breach, but uh, once again, it's going to be one of those things where we're just going to have to play it by ear in terms of what they pick. Well, speaking of not knowing what to expect, they threw a bit of a curveball already on Bind, but Twiggy, would you like to see the KO again on Split? And more importantly, would you like to see Scream pick up the KO again? Um, okay, here's the thing. KO, it takes one of those initiator spots. Once again, I guess you can play him as a duelist, so if they wanted to play triple initiator, that could be kind of interesting, but generally they play the Breach and Sky on there, and I think Breach and Sky is kind of a, an, uh, you know, they have that throne on Split, and it's hard to take that away if you're going to take away one of the initiator spots it's going to be difficult to justify putting ko in yeah i'm uh i'm interested to see how that's going to go just you know i went over a, a couple of my criticisms of, of screams ko um that the problem with it is that, as I say, while it wasn't a terrible performance on KO, this is Liquid's last opportunity to actually stay here in the upper bracket. And so is going on a new agent a risk for them or do they want to go back to something that makes them a bit more comfortable? That's where the predominance of my concerns come from, is that this is still a new composition for Team Liquid and they don't have the buffer zone here anymore because they just lost the last map. So if they lose this, they've lost it. There's no, there's no real wiggle room there. 
I mean, before we went into map one, I asked both of you, I asked Gio specifically if you saw this matchup going to map three. Do you still stand by that? Do you think we're going to go the distance here? Uh, I'll be honest, I'm worried because when I said I thought it would go to map three, that was on the pretense that Team Liquid were going to win bind, which they didn't so um I, you know i that still i yeah. still have faith that that vitality can probably win split and you know you two and two makes liquid not winning this series um i would love for it to go to map three mostly because i just really want to see these two teams play on breeze but i have have not had my faith shaken enough of vitality on this map just yet yeah i think it's the same thing for me i thought with team liquid uh picking that first map i thought it was going to be 2-1 to vitality either way but at this point it's looking like it's going to be 2-0 to vitality if uh, liquid don't really step up their game we have seen a lot of teams take maps against the people who pick them it happens quite often i think uh, uh, an alarmingly often amount but uh it's going to be difficult because vitality they've played this one a lot liquid they really haven't well, Agent Select is on the way. And again, both of you have said we there is a potential that we're going to see something different here. Uh, but if, we're, if we work off of the assumption that things aren't going to change too much, uh, we are probably going to expect, you know, the double flash kind of compositions uh, from Team Liquid versus the double duelist. Now, Twiggy, where do you stand on this? Is there one that you feel like just works a little bit better on Split? I think especially on Split, you're looking at double flash is going to be the most important thing. Thing. You've got Breach who can send his uh, his uh, lines up every one of those routes because it's very, very, there's so many choke points on this map. And uh, it's definitely that kind of thing that dual double duelists, I'm not sure if it would work. It's too flexible and it, it, it's, it's good for stuff like Haven maybe. But apart from that, it's kind of being phased out even more with the meta changing. It's an interesting one for me because um, I agree on paper that the double flashes is, is probably better here for split than the double duelist. The thing, however, is that Vitality actually only changed their um, their composition after they had a pretty big loss against uh, Giants Gaming, um, which was a, a 13 and three score line. So not their best one to write home about. Um, and that's when they actually started to change it. And they've only had wins since then. So for, it's one of those things where you have to try and strike the balance between what is theoretically better and what is clearly working for this team better. And when you consider that it is a team who have recently made a roster change, it's entirely unsurprising that they will have tried new things that work better for them now that maybe weren't the best decision in the past so it's hard for me to judge just because in practice it has proven that actually this double duelist seems to be better for vitality here on split I mean, Gio, looking at the team as well, they they can play quadruple duelists if they want to. Like they've <laughs> got the they got the players that could do it, right? So uh, we are going to head into Agent Select now and see what they are selecting again. On the side of Vitality, I feel like less likely we're going to run into anything too funky. Uh, like you guys have said, they like the Rays and Jet sometimes uh, bringing out that Breach as well uh, on VAC. And uh, wait, let's just ignore Scream for a oh second. Oh my. Okay, let's not <laughs> ignore Scream for a second. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah, so it's back. We talked about whether you guys wanted to see it back. And now, uh, Geo, with the context of it being surrounded by the double flash as well. So they're playing triple flash now with the paranoia. How do you feel about this? You, I feel excited. <laughs> it's probably the best <laughs> way to put it. I don't like, because I don't want to make a definitive conclusion about it because it's it's new, right? Um, but but I am very excited for it. And the fact that, you know, you've got um, cryptics over on Cypher, which isn't new, but I, I feel like, combining the uh you know combining the sort of initiative if that's a word um like prowess of the flashes with that kind of flank watch that you can have with him could lead to some great things if they can get themselves in sync if they can coordinate well very similarly to what i said on bind it was always when that uh when that utility was used out of coordination with each other that they were really struggling to get a ton of value out of the ko um but i feel like with the amount of intel they could have available to them you got a sky you got a cypher that could actually really help so uh, even though the ko might might not be everybody's favorite pick for split you gotta look on the bright side of life and i think there's certainly potential well uh twiggy you know you were favoring the double flash we got triple flash and no duelist uh who's your money on here yeah i did actually yeah i did say unless they go for that triple initiator and well there you go uh i wasn't really expecting the jet to be swapped out but i i, I really can't shy away from vitality winning this one here so 
Well, uh, here we are. Liquid must win here if they want to avoid the lower bracket. Over to you, Tom and Mitch. Well, supposedly you're muted, so I'm just going to take this away from you anyway and, and carry on as if you weren't. Uh, yeah, th this is had some interesting picks here and there. Like Scream, obviously coming in with a KO is something I'm incredibly excited for. Personally, I, I've been having a little look through uh, this certain guy. I think his name's Jonas Videos recently. And he was talking about <laughs> this map in particular, saying that the reason people don't play Sovers is because there's a lot of positions that you can't really clear with a lot of the darts. Well, you know who can clear a lot of those angles, Mitch? There's this certain agent called KO who can just scan people through walls. So that B site becomes a little bit tougher to hide in. And I'm excited to see how Liquid are actually going to be utilizing that, especially on the attack side. So I'm going to roll the dice here, take a guess that this isn't live right now. A um, couple things giving that away. Ooh. First is nobody moving. Uh, so I think they just need to do a little bit of a a little bit of a refresh seven. shouldn't take too long. I know. I, I have deduction skills, Tom. But you know what? I look at this composition. I think defensive side for Liquid, one of the scariest things is actually outside of that A site. You can throw that knife at an angle that pretty much nobody can clear it. And I'm going to look towards the vitality side to really counter those early knives if they're used up by Scream. I think it's kind of a lazy way to use those knives. And from what I've seen of Scream, at least on Bind... He wasn't going the lazy route. He had a lineup that went from outside, from basically attacker spawn into hookah that bought him, you know, 15 seconds from when he threw the knife to when it landed, ma making late round impact. So that alone tells me that he's going to have something spicy prepared for us on split. Yeah, I, I think as well, there was a, a stat that I wanted to bring up that actually it really interests me and it goes over to that vitality side. So Vac is someone that we have mentioned plays a lot of agents. In the last 60 days, you got Sova, Jet, Breach, Raze, Sky and Sage. A, a decent amount. Now, some of them he's played less maps than others, yada, yada, mm -hmm. get whatever you like. But one of the ones he's been playing quite a lot is Breach. And interestingly, in terms of his own statistics, so ADR, for example, ACS... His highest kills or his highest damage is done on Breach. So out of all of the agents he's played, including that jet, including that raise, this is the one that it seems that he's actually performing the best, which I'll be honest, bit of a surprise to me, but I think this map is a big part of it. We've seen him perform incredibly well on an individual level, and I think it just almost seems to suit him better as a player, which, as said, going back to the Noel Penke days where he was probably the flashiest jet we might have even had in the entirety of Europe... To see him now performing this well on that agent, it's getting me excited for this matchup. Most definitely. Now, we have to mention the previous map and what went down there. Liquid were in a position that is not enviable, losing the majority yeah. of the early rounds, finding themselves at four or five one deficits uh, before they even really got to have rifles out. And I feel like moving on to this map, Vitality, although they barely edged it out on Bind, they have such a huge advantage because... They don't need to win this. You know, it's upper bracket. They have two maps to win on. They're feeling comfortable right now. Yeah, especially with the last one being Breeze as well, which is another comfortable map for them. I think the main worry in this veto was always going to be Bind. So the mm -hmm. fact that they've now ended up on their choice. Now, I, I do want to premise this with saying that this is a map that Liquid didn't play massively, like for a long period of time. In fact, they as well as Fnatic sort of let that one slip through the wayside. But they've always had pretty decent results on it. Like, sure, against V1, it was incredibly close, but they managed to see it through. We've seen them play against some other uh, pretty decent teams here and there and, and still put up some reasonable numbers, like destroying Crew again in Masters, beating Fnatic on it, and recently beating BDS. And although I know you have your opinions on BDS, I, they destroy a lot of teams when it comes to split. Like, this has always been one of their comfort choices. So although this goes in and you still have to leave the favorites as Vitality... I, I, I'm not going to count out Liquid by any stretch. No, you definitely don't want to be counting Liquid out. In the pistol round here, they're on the defensive side and receiving a lot of pressure over towards that A site. Now, with some right clicks going through, but nothing landing, Yampi decides to push on in and try to do some damage, losing most of his HP in the meantime. And they're going to be able to close it. It's now Nade clearing person. I think this is quite scary, really. If you're Team Liquid, you've already been pushed out of heaven for the most part, and having to play super passive, but even despite the low HP, Yampi's able to pick up one. Yeah. A bold peak. Link stunned on the site. 
Now, all the utility is going to be taken away, but without him actually peeking, just sitting at the back, him and Scream are holding down the line, something that Link has been excellent at, but when he's got Scream alongside him, they look almost invincible. It's left on to Shalabi. I almost feel bad for him. He's done so much damage, headshotting multiple players. And if you look at the HP of Liquid, well, there's barely 100 HP between them if you exclude Link from the picture. Unfortunately, they don't get any kills. So for Liquid, it does end up as a flawless round. Flawless as can be. Which is interesting considering how it started. I was certain Yampi was dead. He even got a nade choked towards him, but they get away with it. And I think... <laughs> it's one of Breach's voice lines when he kills someone. Freak. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> That's so toxic. And I love the voice lines in this game. They always get me. It, it's Jet's one when she hunts down the last player. But there you are, you little shit. That gets me every time. <laughs> Turret going to be expended. Again, fighting for orb control. Not the most surprising thing in bonus rounds, but, well, for Liquid at least, the orbs are the other team. Everyone earned just from the single kills they get. And, of course, wanting to make sure they don't lose a single player. The fact that Link has actually stuck to this crosshair, like, there was a part of me that thought that maybe it was a little bit of banter. Man, do you know what I do genuinely wonder? Do you mm -hmm. think there's some sort of way that you can display a different crosshair to the one you're using? Because that would just be the ultimate so. flex. Like, you just run around, like, showing a crosshair that you don't use. And just, like, in reality, you're using the most normal crosshair in existence. I, I don't think that's possible. I'm, I, for one simple reason, I know somebody would have a crosshair that just covered the entire Dark screen. <laughs> like, left you're, the you're not allowed corners. to see what I can do. Yeah, only the corners of the screen are visible for, like, five pixels, and the rest is the crosshair. But let's Just hope that's the never applied. Open. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, he got a kill. We didn't see it, but he... <laughs> I saw him shoot. It's a good question. Would you still see the gun model? You would, wouldn't you? Yeah, it wouldn't draw over that. That would be really weird. But hey, it's 2-0, to zero and Team Liquid face off against a full buy. This is where Vitality get the opportunity to really deal some damage and get themselves on the board. Look at what they're up against, Tom. Four Spectres and a Sheriff. This should be, on paper, a pretty easy round for them, but oh my! Sulcus has made it difficult in the blink of an eye. Two players are gone from Vitality. Spike is dropped on top ramp, and there are weapons there potentially to be retrieved. Vitality have just made a big slip up. Smoke dropped onto the head of Sender, and any sort of play through it would have massive amount of risks. Looking to try and reclaim the spike, but there's a cam watching it anyway, so information's already going to be there. Sender is caught as he tries to make the push, and now the remaining two players, they're kind of screwed. They need, they need Liquid to make some sort of mistake. Now, sure, they're still going to have some advantages when it comes to at least the range positioning, but now the rotation's even coming back from Yumpy as well, and he has a rifle. Clearing out down below, rushing into these players, and the Spectres are just so good at these group waterfall tactics, just spilling all over your opponents and sweeping them away. That is horrendous. <laughs> we we said on Bind multiple times that on the second half, Vitality had pretty much the best start physically possible. They've just had the worst start physically possible here. They've given free upgrades, four free upgrades to Team Liquid. They now have Vandals and Phantoms at zero cost. They've lost their entire economy. So, yeah, well, they, I mean, they've done nothing, right? The pistol was flawless. The previous one was pretty much like... Uh, this, this is pretty much as bad as it gets. And Vitality have got a mixed bag of, of weaponry here, a marshal and four sheriffs to try and deal some damage. Winning the round is not likely, but if they can have a similar effect to what they did on Bind with pretty much an identical buy, where of course they ended up killing four of the players from Team Liquid, they'll be very, very happy. Interestingly, Cryptix is actually delaying when he's placing down his utility, which it definitely seems to have his, its risks about it, but... Well, at least can hold on to it till slightly later on in the round. Yeah. For Vitality at the moment, again, they're almost just looking for players to make mistakes, and although Soulcast is just wide peeking this angle, 
I'm not doubting him missing at this stage. Like He had a fantastic performance in the last map, even considering the loss. And I think it has to be put into context that if you looked at that game, it already seems close. But if anything, Liquid probably should have won it based on how many of the early rounds they actually lost and the fight back that they had. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. I'm 100% with you there. And it was a big clutch by Vitality that even made it happen in the first place. Okay, this so is just cast. a shutdown. Now, obviously, they were just versus pistols, no armor. It's it's about as easy as it gets. But getting away with this one flawlessly, look at the credits. Watch when they pop up. It's, uh, it's going to be ridiculous. Uh, Team Liquid are stacked. They've got ultimates online. They've got more they than enough credits to buy like three rounds. times in a row. And yeah, that's uh, not something we see every day. Look, the funny thing as well is that one kill came in in the bonus round or the, the, well, the second round, I should say, for Liquid where they they were only SMGs versus pistols. So if anything, that's the one Liquid are probably most likely to take flawlessly. So the fact that the other rounds are the ones where they've got no kills is even more worrying. But that's a much better start. <laughs> Soulcast, who's been a terror thus far, is going to be caught trying to make a cheeky play down mid. Of course, with his flashes going through that smoke. It would have been a risk, but there might have been reward through it. Loki, though, is just going to hand that advantage straight back. I, I don't see the benefit of that play at all. No, I think I'm with you there. The Vitality have managed to see some control over Heaven. Spike is behind, but they're watching it from the B push. They're holding for any aggression on A. This is going to be a very, very slow round for Vitality. Now, we've seen their defaults pay off massively, but the majority of the time that that's happened, it's been Team Liquid pushing into them, giving them the advantages. And as you can see, they are not looking to do that this time, playing much more passive on the sites. And with Sulkus down, though, Tom, they've not only lost their flashes, they've not only lost the top fragger and one of the strongest players in the world right now, but also they've lost those Seekers. The ultimate game doesn't swing in their favor quite as much anymore. And this is going to be a much more difficult defense. Good time delay by Link. That aftershock completely halts the push. And with 20 so seconds left, Vitaly are going to have to just run at him and hope to take him down. Link is so strong Aww. in these positions. A 3k goes his way. Scream is taken down, though. I mean, I this is a plan pretty much secured. That. They're going to have to just stare at him. <laughs> hey, buddy. How you doing? There we go. <laughs> Scream's been hitting the gym. It takes a little bit longer to take him out of the rounds now. You really do have to kick him while he's down. Still, this ends up as a 2v2 scenario. Shalabi going to take this close range angle. Teammate trying to spot into heaven. And Yumpy has been seen, but knowing that both players are in the site, he's actually going to be able to get very close up. Both double peaking. Shalabi's gone. It's left all onto Brams to try and turn the tide. One player incredibly low. The clock burning down, but Yumpy hits the final headshot. It's going to be another round on the board for Liquid, even with the fight backs. It's still not enough of Vitality to get there first. That's a kick in the oh, teeth. Oh, add some BM as well. Rub, it, rub the salt <laughs> in the wounds, Yumpy. Rub the salt in. 3 HP clutch. Hey, let them know. Let them know what happened. Well, 5-0. to zero. Not a pretty scoreline for Vitality, and especially considering how this one was going. I did like Scream's usage of the ulti here. Stopping anybody Flash pushing ball. down the alley. Like, a really important piece of utility in him throwing the fragment at the alleyway, which just means that Link doesn't need to divert his attention from that main push because he knows nobody can get down beside him. The ultimate pop stops them from flashing, fault lining, ulting if they had them, which they didn't in that case. But moving into this round, I think that'll be more important. It's really, really solid stuff. Yampi's aggression is going to be taken down by the drone. Now, one thing... The difficulty with playing against someone like Yampi when he's running the operator, on this map, you don't have a Sova most of the time. And one of the easiest and most common counters for that operator is to have the drone go through. So I like the little bit of an adaptation in putting the, the turret there, which catches the op aggression and sort of buys you that little bit of extra map control at a very low cost. Could be so much information. Scream. I'm sure the knife is going to be going through in just a second. It's going to catch so many different players, but they're still just looking to try and run through the smoke. 
screen trying to watch onto the angle and he will eventually find the first kill. The stun coming out as well. It's so perfect. Nothing for Shulabi to do and Yumpy just still trying to play around the edge of the smoke but he is being pressured. Still takes one with him though. However, Brams has made this one more than possible. The Seeker gives him away. Not that the information wasn't already had. And he's trying to fade things up and the smoke faded. Oh, Cryptics is just looking at him like... Yeah, not, nice TP, bud. Nice TP. I thought <laughs> that the smoke in the first place that he threw was ambitious, but the fake shadow step? I, that man completely miscalculated how much time was left on that, which is funny because he was standing in it when game. it popped. Enemy remaining. One enemy remaining. Yeah, don't show the whole thing, please. Please, turn it off now. No. Oh, don't do him like this. Cut away. Everybody don't turn off your like monitor. This. this didn't happen. No. <laughs> Oh, I gotta watch it back a second time just in case we didn't catch it the first. Tactical oh, we've got tech. Should we should we watch it again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see it in slow motion from Brown's <laughs> perspective. Oh, yeah, six to zero. Liquid are definitely improving on what Vitality had for them in the the previous map in terms yeah. of early round score lines. And it really is. I, I don't know if we can. Um, I don't think observers can hear us, right? But if they can, can we pull up the scoreboard? Uh, I think at this point, Vi Vitality have at least accrued a couple more kills than previously, Tom. But it's really, yeah. it's getting heartbreaking on this attack side because you can see them finishing on like five rounds and still being in a pretty good position for the next half. But the way things are going right now, it seems unlikely they push even to four. Yeah, no, it, it's definitely looking rough. Now, I will say that we see a lot of teams still put up pretty ridiculous halves over on the defensive side, but mm -hmm. you don't really want to just have that level of wiggle and this combination of utility. It's already going to make things a little bit awkward, and it delays the push, but realistically, they are still making their way around this corner. Yumpy needs to be very careful on this peak, but with no trade potential, it's almost too easy for him. Peaks in, fades out, early advantage. That was a weird um, situation from Loki and Sander inside of B main. The smoke went down and it seemed like they didn't really know what was happening. Yambi still going forward with his operator, oh, no. picking up every single player he sees. This is ridiculous. The frenzy reloaded. He still what? gets away with a fourth. One player remaining and Yambi's going for the oh. ace, connecting it seven to zero for Team Liquid. And they are just giving Vitality no room to breathe. Well, it's a map three, right? That one was Breeze. I think I think that's what we were heading to. <laughs> like, so like how do you come back from that? How does he get this kill? Like, what? He reloaded and then still corrected his aim. Like, that's just ass. Like, that, that <laughs> shouldn't have happened. And then still has enough to correct his aim at the end. That was a sick round from him. Yeah, sure, it's versus pistols, but I think just the manner in which he won it. Impressive, to say the least. Okay. And we are going to see... I thought the, the blade storm might come through a little bit earlier, but we'll get it in this round still. Loki, not actually putting too much into the last, so maybe just buying up for a teammate to make sure that they have something extra for this one. Look at the B play. It's definitely been a rough start. But this is a this is a root. Rolling Thunder? Like yeah, but th oh that's God. the thing. Is it a fake, though? They're going to fake Rolling Thunder and send in Loki? Like, that seems like an awful lot of commitment just to try and bait them in on a rotation. That, yeah, that's a lot bigger. Team Liquid are literally playing to counter this Rolling Thunder. They're back off site. Yeah, they're allowing them to take all the space they want. Anywhere. And they've got the cam, the tripwire. This is just perfect. Team Liquid know exactly what's going on here. I don't know oh, if this is advanced preparation, but it looks like yo. Sliggy's got the little... Uh, uh, it doesn't matter. He still got killed. <laughs> the ult would have done the same thing, right? Uh, oh. Give me those back. I mean, playing anti rolling thunder on site and then letting him run into heaven is is you know questionable slightly I, I think the early round setup from team liquid here was perfect they had the read they did absolutely everything right but vitality have just found the opening with loki getting behind yeah. this is going to be a free site no plan. way oh, i'm so I glad they were baiting it. him they were baiting they, they were going to 180 the second he completed that so i'm, I'm glad yumpy didn't commit to it I, I don't know. Somehow, I still believe he would have got a kill, at least. I probably would have got all three <laughs> with one bullet. Somehow, this has gone wrong. As you said, like, the read was very good. It's just like that slight hole in the defense. 
One going down at least. Loki still causing them issues. He was the main reason that this round has slipped away from them. And now back hits the timing almost perfect. No way the Yumpy gets that shot at all. No chance. What was... That was a dash and an updraft, right? I mean, I don't know if we can get a replay of that. Did he dash into the wall and then updraft? That was weird. Unless I completely Maybe misread that. I swear I saw two. Because I saw him. I heard him dash. And then he didn't move. <laughs> he just stayed completely still. That was bizarre. But seven to one, we go. The Brazil comes out. And Liquid are still going to be pro feeling pretty confident. That, that was a, a lapse in judgment. But they had the right read. They knew exactly what Vitality were going to do. And it's only that sneaky play by Loki who really just completely opened up the round, giving them the B site, the plant, and then everything fell into place. For Team Liquid, they're still not really there when it comes to the ultimate game and their ulti's not being that strong in general. But Vitality have already burned up the first, and that's going to be the Killjoy ultimate. Now, nothing found off of it because it's destroyed the players pushed out of main great counter utility but look at vitality's oh, response like they immediately move in through heaven they push down to the site now yampi is again going oh, to be isolated with this operator in hand but still a double is found going out wider scream has already taken the pushing back and they've got a double man set up inside of b main this is a ridiculous round vitality the making bullets. the perfect counterplay and liquid counterplaying that counterplay it's it's gorgeous yeah, I, I will say it, it seems like a lot. Uh, there's been a few rounds now where the counterplay has involved Yumpy killing everyone, but honestly, with the, way that, the way that he's performing, it doesn't matter too much. Because let, let's just say in a world, there's a one-for-one -one trade there. His teammates are now completely surrounded in main. But instead, he gets two kills. The rotation comes in from Scream. Scream gets the final, and that, that's a perfect hold. But... It, it really is relying on their superstars performing to such a high standard, but they are. I'm liking all the counter utility. Their aggression into B main has been almost perfect. Like they've taken so much control there in almost every single round, be it with paranoias, with fault lines, this time with the aftershock. Like they are just running them into the ground with utility and vitalities. Well, the only round they've won is basically off Loki getting some cheeky kills, sneaking through. Scream though. You don't want to give oh! this man the opportunity. Somehow comes out with three, even while turning the flash. And while the back will at least be like, yeah, got, guys, I got a rifle. Guys. One enemy remaining. And then you ran into Yampy. <laughs> that's, how, that's how that one goes. The turret up. Yampy's not even going to bother. He just waits. Wall bangs him he through the turret. Him through it. Beautiful. Oh, Nine I love to it. one. Jeez. Well, I mean, we said this was a a difficult map to call you can see it being a 50 50 you can see vitality coming out with some some decent plays especially shellac beyond the raise but i don't know man some people really hate slapped. omen i think i've heard i've heard dream i've heard george from upcomer say that omen's just a trash agent worst agent in the game now credit to dream i think he did say on split he's very good uh, but on every other map he's trash um and you know I don't know that I want to say it's the omen, Tom. I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to say no. that it's anything to do with the omen. I think Yampy might just be one, one of the you know top ten players in the world, easily. That's at this twice. Stage. twice. This is the second time that they've managed to wrap through heaven and get behind the player trying to hold outside B. I'm not quite sure how that's worked twice because it's normally one of the positions that if you have given it up, you're very aware of it. But hey, Vitality finally pushing down on what is looking like a vulnerability for Liquid. And now in this retake, it's not looking too good. I'm not quite sure how they're going to be able to get back into this one. They've got no ultimates to play with. A very small amount of utility other than Yumpy, who I I'm going to be honest, I don't really want to see him put away the operator to try and pull out any of that utility. So... Unless, again, there's going to be some wide swings. I don't think there's anything there. And Loki, again, he's going to be the knife in their back. Yeah, his flanks have been fantastic. Whether it's that playthrough spawn on the B site or right there lurking through mid to grab them. The second round on the board, and I think both can be attributed heavily to Loki's impact on the round. And for Team Liquid, I'm seeing a lot of players towards that A site in the early stages of the buy phase, but it looks like they're shifting back over. It's still only going to be a two-man B setup, and it looks like they expect Vitality in the final round to make it towards the A site. In fact, you'll even see this knife come through and pretty much confirm the information. I do where he's going to throw that is breakable, though, right? 
It gets slightly deeper than some of the other knives that we've seen. Oh, oh it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at God. all. What a good flash. Yampi just single-handedly entering on the defensive side. Three players down. Vitality have to clutch this one back. And with Brams on 30 HP after Yampi's push, well, I, I, Tom, I'm not feeling too confident about Vitality's chances of hitting three in this half. Some would say they're screwed, and I would be part of the sum. Because, yeah, it doesn't look like there's going to be any way back into it. They, they finally decided not to push B main. Almost like, let, let's avoid Yumpy for once. And the man <laughs> had the sixth sense to be on the other side of the map. I think for maybe the first time in this entire half. Like, I, I don't think he's done that once. So, I, I don't know how they made the read. I don't know why they made the read. But it worked perfectly. And now they got 40 seconds to try and... Alright, never mind. 10-2 half. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got 30 seconds for Sander. Spike dropped up in heaven. Two players on the left. A site. He'd have to kill them lightning fast, get back into heaven, pick up that spike, get to site, plant it, and then win the 1v2 post plant. That might seem uh, unreasonable, and that's because it is. 10 to 2. Switching Liquid side. taken across the line in what I think it's fair to say is convincing fashion, and Yampi dropped 20 kills in that first half with four deaths that is absolutely ridiculous on an omen as well so we can't even give him the excuse of oh it's just a jet no skill agent look at that he runs into five players and he kills three and leaves another on 30 hp how does he get so much value out of every situation he's in yeah i, I think as well like the utility usage there not only the paranoia which is, of course, still one of those abilities that is just so difficult to play against. But mm -hmm. they also had the fragment in the this corner so that fun. nobody could even run back. So they had just like a nice little setup from Liquid. And that's been a lot of their defense, just having these cool, quirky little ideas to try and shut out a lot of control. We've seen it a lot when it came to their B-site defense as well. And, well, this time it was a low-key. See you later, oh, mate. Peek yeah. through the smoke. Caught out already. Shalabi, oh. he needs something here and he's going to go down as well. It's Whiff City for Vitality and a pistol that's basically keeping them in the map. Not the strongest hold I've seen on mid in a pistol round. Team Liquid flying ahead. Now, again, Sulkus doesn't have that heal. Buying up a ghost means that, well, he ain't going to have the creds to spend, Sander. Come on, that's a, that's a free kill. He's running away. He's just though. wasting their time as well. They're, they're going, eh? Like, yep. the, him being there is literally just to be as annoying as humanly possible. Leave the low HP player behind. He, he's low as well. He's 22 HP. Link just swings and takes down back. Oh, God. One down. Hey, there we go. <laughs> hey, we got there him. we go. Solgus is also 20. Cryptic's 38. This is definitely winnable for Vitality, but it's tough. There's players absolutely everywhere. They're fighting into two or three on every angle. They push. They Look at the crossfire down below. Cryptic's ready to swing with Yampi and take that kill. It's 11-2, and honestly, that pistol round was probably the last beacon of hope for Vitality. Losing that almost confirms this is a Team Liquid win. In fact, I think it's quite likely they go for a force by coming into this round just to try to make that comeback happen. Just conceding for OT and winning 10 in a row would be... <laughs> Uh, a risk a difficult task i mean I, look best of the best of a bad bunch really there's there's no there's no right choice Pick there's no poison. easy choice yeah there, there's there's nothing like at this stage there's no unless they can rewind time uh <laughs> there's really not much that vitality are going to be able to do here in terms of their purchase so they're gonna they're gonna take the risk uh, as said it, at this point it's really not that much of a risk and this is patient play from cryptics he's just trying to bait them into a push he's actually got the spike alongside him as well so if he was to fall it would be a bit of a oh no oh that was the split second that you yeah. don't want to be shooting the trip oh roll up roll on breeze just roll it on like this is just I like, torture. A lot. I like i like breeze a lot i think vitality have a much better shot there based on what we're seeing because this is not the team we just witnessed on the previous map. I mean, the fact that they went four rounds without a single kill, Tom, pretty much sums it up. Ooh, Solka's getting tickled, and he's the only player that can't be healed up, now vulnerable to these stingers. No one's using the Lothar trick. You know, the the right-click triple burst. Oh, come on, Yampy. Leave him alone, for God's sake. 
I mean, if they get this round, if Vitality of Force fought and it's flawless from Team left. Liquid, that is... Oh, God. I feel like I'm talking over wow. a funeral. This is this is ridiculous. Yeah, especially after the last map. Like, it was a close victory. Back and forth rounds. Liquid fighting uphill to try and uh, to bring it back. Well, uh, Vitality... Yeah, Vitality are definitely going to have to fight uphill, but I don't know. This, uh, this is like trying to climb Everest without the use of your hands. Like, it's like you're just going to use your teeth on some of the rocks. Like, I, I, I don't know how this would ever be possible as a comeback. And the worst thing is as well, because they invested into that round, this buy is going to suck just as much as the last one. So, yeah. Good luck. I, I, I wish you the best, but I am not feeling too confident. Cover going out. Not confident at all. The reality is Team Liquid's gameplay has just been on point so far. And it feels like yeah. every single attempt of Vitality have made, like the fact in the early rounds, I can give Liquid a lot of the rounds that they won. But sometimes there were just these clutches that it felt like Vitality were lost in. Losing out to like 2v4s and such. Okay. Nice little paranoia by Brams. Nade through, stops the push. Liquid are now going to have to fight back in. This also a flank play. Loki has been very solid when it comes to those attack yeah. side lurks. And now he's pushed all the way down middle, hiding for these guys to come back through servers, meaning that they can pretty much commit towards a heavier A stack, like three or four players for the entirety of this round. And Liquid will still be running into it by the looks of things. They've almost tried to bait them back, but because of Loki's position, no one's actually rotated off. They know they haven't come through mid. Vac is already going to pick off the first, and Brams' his corner is deadly as ever. It's not going to be checked, and the swing out grants him a couple of kills. Shilabi is there to close it as well, and Vitality have their lifeline. A solid round for them at least, maybe a little bit of win back in the sails. And I'll be honest, Mitch, I don't believe that they'll be able to bring this map back at all. But if they can at least get a few extra rounds, make it a little bit less of a dominant performance and maybe build up at least a little bit of confidence going into the final map exactly that's uh, something we speak about a lot and it really is important getting those fist bumps in winning around just bringing the morale right back up and for vitality look that was a solid round the push down middle get the information they react perfectly to it keep the four man stack on a completely destroy the push on through now team liquid pull out the rifles yet again and vitality aren't really in the same boat they've got a vandal a guardian and everything else is going to be specters and marshals that's a pretty tough situation to continue fighting just for an overtime but they're gonna try I'm going to try their damnedest. I like the setup on A, actually. They're going to have faster rotations from the mid play. Maybe they suspect Liquid to be more mid-centered after the pistol round, after what they've seen in the past. But they'd be right on that. This is still a much better purchase. Coming up for Liquid. Loki left with... Just a marshal in hand. He's done some damage with it in the past, but they are ready for any sort of aggression to come through. In fact, I'm wondering if we're going to... Are we going to get a pot flash? There it is. Just trying to force him backwards. Even the stun afterwards so he can't run away. Scream. Looking to try and push around the corner. Might not expect him to still be so close, but it doesn't matter. He wins the duel anyway. The clearance from Solkas even bypasses the aftershock and leaving just two men standing to try and save Vitality from what has been an embarrassing map. A two versus three, low HP on two. It's doable. That's for damn sure. Plenty of utility. <laughs> We've seen what Yampi can do from this very same angle in the past. The smoke there. So if they dive off, he'll see them down below. The spam is not actually landing anything. Yampi's good. Just tucked in the corner. Oh, no. As they push out, look at that. He oh, you saw him. There we go. 13 to 3. That was not a nice map for Vitality. After a very close bind, they have been slapped out of the series. Or out of the map, rather. Here on Split. <laughs> yeah, not of the series. Not of the series. Because there's one more. There's one more left to go. Of course, Breeze is going to be up next, Tom. And I think it's fair to say it can't go much worse. Oh, dear. Why, why have you said that? 
Like, why have you said it's, that? Like, it's, it's almost like you're trying to true. will it into existence. Kinda, but you, you are true. correct. Like, it couldn't have got much worse than that. Not, not. Even, I think one kill in the first four rounds of the game was almost the the stepping stone for what ended up being such a dominant half. Liquid looked incredible, though. As said, this is a map that. I, I, I never really saw them pick into it that much. It was one that they were willing to play. I'm hoping they do from now on. I, I think teams are going to have to start banning it against them. You can see the interplay between a lot of different players, some cool little ability combos that they've got to set themselves up. And Yumpy looked on point, which... DC's had good games, but I think so far, at least in this stage of uh, VCT, that's probably the best performance I've seen from him. Yeah, that's fair to say. You know, I... One kill within the first four rounds was definitely a bad omen for Vitality, but <laughs> Yampi was anything but a bad omen. That's for damn it was a sure. Worse omen. When it comes down to uh, to the next map, though, I'm going to hope there's going to be a bounce back. One thing I'll say about Liquid is that in this series, in this map in particular, the level of preparation was so apparent. Yeah. Although they ended up still losing one of the key rounds that I would highlight as being one of their better ones for the prep, they were ready for that fake B play. They maintained... so. Going back to the round, it was the Rolling Thunder coming out of the breach onto the B site. They played for that. So they played back inside of the spawn so they wouldn't be hit by the Rolling Thunder. They committed to a three-man A stack, conscious that they might use that as a fake, which they did. The only hole in that was that they let Loki lurk up. They did not account for that level of aggression and him coming back behind them in spawn, catching a player off, and then completely changing the outlook of the round for Vitality, who then rotated to B and took an easy plant. I still felt like that pretty much sums up Liquid and how good they are at counterplaying. Vitality thought well yeah. on their feet in that. Loki sensed and took a lot of space. But ultimately, when you're when you're sitting down and you're um you're looking at what this team likes to do, having the ability to know when they have this ultimate, they like to do this. They're likely to fake out to roll this B site. It puts you in a position to win a lot more and to push your opponents out of their comfort zone, which I think is one of the most important things, Tom. But it looks like we're just about ready to throw things over to a break. The AD finished snacking up on their lunches, but they need a couple minutes to <laughs> drink down some water, get the vocal cords ready. So we're going to go to a little break now, and it's going to feature something special because we've got the song of the week for you. It's by Kashmir. Ooh. Take a look at this one.
Challenger's main event where Team Liquid have managed to level things up. I'm Yingsu and I'm back on the desk by uh, and joined by Twiggy and Geo. Welcome back, you two. What a great response from Team Liquid. Geo, after the way they lost on Bind, they were not going to lie down on Split. No, um, no, they really made a mark here on Split and I feel like... Well, me especially, it made a little bit of a fool out of just because I had quite a lot of faith in Vitality on Split, but Team Liquid weren't having any of it. And I think one of my suspicions about them having a lot of, you know, like VOD resources of Vitality playing on it lately probably really helped for them because that was a resource that the Vitality I mean, significantly lacked in comparison. Yeah, there was just so many times. I Like, my, my, my notes devolve into just, just like... I, I, like, I just started writing words, like, what a liquid, everything's just going wrong, and it's just, I think there was just this point, round, round five, six, or seven, where, where, at that point, you know, Vitality, they just kind of lay down and took it up for, to a certain point. They got themselves two rounds in a good fashion, but it was not an easy uh, few rounds to get for them. Yeah, no, it wasn't easy at all. But Twiggy, you know, you said the what you wanted to see from Liquid is a quick start to making a lot of impact. And yeah, 7 to 0. Uh, was that enough for you, you think? Yeah, I think that'll do it. <laughs> the, the, if, if, if there's any way to open up a game, I think 7 0 is probably the best way to do it. And uh, I mean, it was brilliant. The first two rounds, especially, obviously, the pistol round 50 50, and they got that one quite convincingly. Even after they lost positional advantages, they just won through pure your gunplay and then obviously second round was expected but the third round was really one of the big turning points where Solcast he displayed brilliant patience and you know Vitality had a really tough ta task gaining it back 3v5 and then round four it was expected for Liquid once again round five I said was the turning point once again in the the gunplay crux really didn't work out for Vitality you know they have two duelists and it's difficult when you have no support after your after your duelists die you know they have much less support util than Liquid. Yeah, I mean, you could even just see from the stats that were present on the screen there, the MVP of Team Vitality was Brahms, who had a 0.8 KDA, and then compare that to Yampi on the other side, who had a 6.0 KDA, both <laughs> playing the exact same agent, by the way. So I think that tells the story uh, qu qu quite well enough. I mean, Geo Yumpy was feeling himself on that map. I think on Bind, uh, he was sort of trying to get into the game a little bit uh, slower. But on that map, his operator was just ridiculous. Uh, you know, yes. And you put an operator in the hands of Yampy, like, what do you expect is going to happen? I think we, we kind of know the tale here. But it certainly didn't help the fact that Vitality just really had nothing to go against him. You know, there was a lot of face checking being done on Vitality. It was very, very clear what the difference in the, the triple flash versus versus non um, was having on this game and you know one of the one of the big things that i i noticed was you know when vitality decided to forego the sage and they don't have any wall available it's really hard to take a lot of this space on this map whether that's going to be mid whether it's going to be b a lot of their pushes had to be over at a and that meant if you've got someone like yampi who's standing there very steadfast he's got the operator he's hitting his shots what else are you going to do to try and shift him out the way other than literally taking him face to face that is the really the only option that they had. They didn't have many options to try and clear him or anyone else from Team Liquid out. And, uh, you know, so while a lot of it is to do with the fact that Yampi is, is just fantastic on that weapon, I think that the way that Vitality were playing and the limited options they had certainly helped facilitate his success. Yeah, it's the thing when you have, you know, you can push out enough utility from those flashes if there's two or three of them. But, I mean, Liquid had four of them. You push through, you, you burn a bit of util, and then you've got to do the same thing somewhere else. And you have to keep doing it. And if you keep losing your duelists, you don't have any support util left. You can't get in anymore. And they still have flashes to spare. We saw how many rounds. Uh, Yampi just got like a 3k, a 4k off of just a flash. Scream did it as well. And it's just you, unlimited flashes give you unlimited pushing power. I mean, do do you guys feel like, uh, Gio, I'll come to you first, do you feel like the fault and what went wrong for Vitality did come down to the agent compositions? I think a lot of it, yeah, it definitely felt that way. Their composition just felt like it was being flattened and they didn't have much answering power to what Team Liquid were bringing. Uh, you know, we can't understate the power that the, the flashes that they brought had. And I think that it's a very poignant example of it that all the way back on round one, the fact that two different flashes were used on Shallaby is the last 
last remaining member on a pistol round um, were used to secure that final kill. It kind of showed what an abundance of it that they had. Um, but I think the fact that uh, Team Vitality were really struggling to make space for themselves. I kind of mentioned earlier, they were naturally struggling to take B and uh, to take mid at all because they, they were lacking the utility that you, you would usually look for um, to be able to do that successfully. And that meant a lot of the time they had to go over to A, but if you saw the way that they were pushing onto A, not once do I think they actually got any real clear onto elbow. They struggled to clear out screens. There were lots of angles they couldn't get. There was just no way for them to take room. Well, uh, we are going to take a quick break now, but do not go anywhere because map three is on the way. for the VCT Challengers main event because we are going the distance here for Team Liquid versus Vitality. I'm Yingsu and I'm back on the desk with Geo and Twiggy. Now Breeze, that is the decider, that is the third map, but Twiggy, the momentum is firmly in Liquid's hand right now. Yeah, Liquid obviously, well, I mean, there's no other way to put it, is uh, the, the, the momentum is well in their court. And uh, I mean, yeah, they've played Breeze a few times. They played it in week one, three times, but every time they won it, it was to teams that were lower seeded them. Alliance and Finest, they lost it to Fnatic. 
I mean, I thought I was. I thought that was some kind of like pause just for dramatic effect. <laughs> then, and to be like, they're lost yeah. fanatic. Yeah, um, you cut me off. It was a twenty-second pause for yeah. dramatic effect. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, yes, it's been a while since since Team Liquid have played here, and I think that's a, a really important thing as well. Is that everything that we know about the way that Team Liquid have played here on Breeze? I suspect is actually going to be turned on its head today because. Following their pattern so far, they're probably going to be bringing new things out. Well, you know, we spoke about what Team Liquid needed to do on Split to kind of get themselves back in the game. But now uh, the shoe is on the other foot, Geo. Uh, what do Vitality need to do to get back into this game? Uh, not whatever they did on Split. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think honestly, the most important thing for Vitality here is to regain their mental because one of the suspicions that we had in Split is just that they were they were getting boomed. Um, and that's one of the really tough things. It's relevant in esports, it's relevant in any sport really, is it doesn't really matter how skilled you are. If you are mentally out of the game, you're out of the game. So it's really important that they kind of recuperate um and you know one of the things that we discussed is given how dominant their last victory on breeze was which was against heretics it's with 13 and 2 uh, they might have a, a lot better a chance to come into this map with some confidence um that can kind of make up for what they lost after that split game yeah, I, I I would talk about the uh, composition that Team Liquid play on Breeze, but I really doubt they're going to play it. <laughs> it seems like Scream is quite committed to this KO at this point, and I'm, I'm expecting him to pick it once again here. I, it, it, it's, it's a difficult one to judge. I don't think they're going to be playing the same thing as they did last time. Well, I mean, this, they've been more consistent here, right, with their agents. They've been kind of changing mm. and flip-flopping on all of the other maps. But here, they have played it three times and have only played the same composition. Uh, I think it'd be fair, uh, Twiggy, that, you know, we'll at least see the Viper and maybe the Cypher too. Yeah, Viper's definitely a big part of Breeze. It's always uh, the, well, it's how you cut off mid. It's how you get for, to uh, each site. And uh, Cypher, obviously, a great way of stopping the Jet players from getting through onto site. Killjoy isn't really that much of a player on Breeze. So I'm expecting those two at the very least, possibly a Sova as well. Uh, but maybe we see that that uh, Sky swapped out for a KO this time. Oh, I mean, yeah, maybe. I, the big thing that I'm going to be looking for is is the fact that, you know, even though we say we don't want to rely too much on what we know Team Liquid have played in the past, um, assuming that they're going to be bringing a Cypher again, and I'm a big fan of seeing Cypher played here on Breeze, and we know that, you know, someone like Cryptix is is a big fan of playing Cypher. Uh, that is something that we know very likely will not be brought from Vitality because of the, the, the roster swaps and therefore the role swaps that we, we discussed earlier. And when I've seen Vitality play on this map in, uh, in the past week or so, one of the things that did become quite apparent to me was that when they're playing against a team who's bringing a Cypher, you can really sense how much... Uh, lacking that that um, you know flank watch affects them, and so what they oftentimes have to do is actually send someone to go and physically flank watch rather than relying on utility, and that can have a big effect. And I worry that being fragmented in that way could give uh, Team Liquid a, a big advantage over them, um, especially if they're going to be playing in a way that gives them way more control, like we saw on Split. Because another thing that we know about Vitality is that after their loss against Ninjas in Pajamas. They also switched their uh, Breeze composition very slightly to include a Rainer. So they they got rid of Omen, they brought in Rainer, so it's a Rainer Jet double duelist composition. It's the only time they've played it like that, so we don't know if they'll continue on. But judging by the pattern that they've had so far, I wouldn't be surprised. So the question is, is leaning into the double duelist going to hurt them like it did in Split? Um, especially when you know they're not going to be bringing flank watch. Are those kind of points of weakness that Team Liquid are going to be able to exploit? Because after our last map, it would not shock me if that is the way it goes. I mean, the good news here, right, is that the last time we saw Vitality play on this map, they absolutely steamrolled yeah. Heretics 13 to 2. And that is when, like you said, uh, Geo Brams was on the Rainer. And having spoken to him right after that match as well, it felt like it was something they were comfortable with and they had a very, very clear game plan. So do you feel like that is what they need here? Um, and maybe the double duelist didn't work out on split, but Breeze could be a different story. I mean, I've always been a proponent of at the end of the day, a team has to pick the 
composition that is going to feel the most comfortable to them. And that's why I said at the beginning of Split that, uh, you know, while on paper we might think X, Y, and Z about these compositions, but ultimately it comes down to what the team think is the most comfortable. It didn't work for them on Split. Okay, they move on. Um, here, while I am a big fan of quite controller-centric play on Breeze, uh, not all teams are, you know? Not everybody is. And, and if they have gone through the motions of actually playing the games themselves and they've come to this conclusion that going into the double duelist and playing with the Rainer is better for them, then cool. And you know what? After seeing the way that Brahms was playing uh, the the Omen on Split, I do wonder if maybe he would be better off on Rainer here on um, here on Breeze because he was being very aggressive and he was getting a lot of kills, but oftentimes the way he'd use his utility wouldn't actually help him close things out. Rainer is very self-serving. Uh, which is why a lot of teams don't necessarily like to always play her, but that could actually help him find more impact from those kills that he was getting on the previous map, but not actually closing out rounds with. Maybe this is what's actually going to put, you know, the 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 ball in the putt or whatever it golf. <laughs> <laughs> oh my uh, god. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. What's it called? The, the you mean the green? A hole? A hole? Oh, you're just talking about a know. hole. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, Twiggy, come on. How much golf do you know? Uh, give, give, give us some analogies here. Oh, no. I'm going to disappoint my dad so much here. <laughs> uh, yeah, golf. You, you put the ball in the green and then you put it in the hole. That's about how much I know. So, I, honestly, I'm expecting... It, it's, it's a difficult one here. Uh, Team Liquid, they need to really bring something out. I do think... The Rainer is actually a good choice on, on Breeze. I do like seeing double duelist comps on Breeze. Chet and Rainer are a good pick. And we did see, obviously, uh, Brahms was uh, very much... Uh, we, we, there was a point where we said he, he was do, definitely doing kind of the duelist uh, work a little better than the smoke. There was that smoke that he missed a little bit when he got killed on that teleport. Uh, and that was a uh, ouch. But, you know, it's, it's, I, I think it would, it would serve them quite well. Well, like we said, they have plenty of players that can take up that duelist role. Nothing to worry about here in that department. We are going to head into Agent Select very soon. Uh, as uh, We're going to head into Agent Select now, actually. So as we theorized, Liquid, they've had one comp on this map. We've only ever seen them play one comp on this map, but everything goes out the window today. You know, Scream, he could just be a KO main at this point. Uh, and Brams, uh, yeah, he's decided to lock in that arena like you guys predicted, Twiggy. Yeah, I do love that pick, actually. Um, and I think we're actually going to see Liquid play exactly the same comp as before. Yeah, looks like we're just going for exactly the normal one. Ooh, that is yeah. interesting from Vitality. Talk us through it. Like. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the sky, obviously, you do expect it, but when you're playing uh, with that uh, Rainer, sometimes you do forego that sky. Uh, so you have that, uh, you have the uh, Cypher available for your team, but this time uh, it's not happening. Well, I mean, they're both regular comps for Breeze. It's just that p picking out that Rainer has definitely given them some uh, interesting choices in the support roles. Yeah, I mean, that's... Uh, oh, I, I was just going to say that's, that's what I... Uh, I was I was wondering as well because you know simply since Jasmine left there is no one really to play Cipher on Team Vitality so they have to be making decisions like that. And Geo, uh, no KO this time. First no. time on uh, stream is going back to that jet. What do you make of that? I think it's boring. I hate it. No, <laughs> I, 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 no, it's it's fair enough. It's understandable. But um, I was very looking forward to seeing how KO could be used uh, by Scream here because I, I was pretty impressed with some of his zero points that he used back on split. Um, I thought he needed a bit of improvement on bind. Uh, but um, I don't know. I mean, it's... Uh, they're clearly leaning into something a little bit more aggressive, um, and I think that's fine. And I think with the long ranges that are here on Breeze, uh, it's understandable as well. We're just, I guess, we'll just have to wait. We will have to. Uh, we don't have to wait too much longer, fortunately. Neither of these teams want to drop down to that lower bracket, but unfortunately, there's just one space for the next round. Mitch and Tom, let's head into this decider. Thank you very much, Sue. Tom, I'm excited to get this one underway because both teams are pretty damn sick on Breeze. I mean, Vitality knocked out Heretics here, and obviously Liquid, they beat Alliance, and they had a super close game up against Fnatic that they lost 13-11. This yeah. has got to be the best map so far. 
You'd hope so. I, I, w- I will say that Bind was pretty good. It was just the manner in which it was played was kind of weird. Like, it always seemed to be an uphill battle for Liquid and some incredibly mm-hmm. strong starts. And I think that's going to be the main talking point here is coming into this matchup. We're looking to see who's going to kick things off with a bang. And if it is going to be those sort of, like, slower starts coming in for Liquid again that could mm-hmm. come back to bite them. I have to say I'm excited to see Brams, though. Because, like, seeing the Rainer come out once versus heretics it worked out heretics playing an incredibly long day though of valorant with back-to-back best of threes might have been caught off a little bit i don't think liquid will have the same issue yeah we've seen this from vitality pretty much every time that they come into the game they decide to play non-sentinel um and it's kind of an interesting composition that you see because it's going to give you a lot of ability to play those entries but they're starting on the defensive side and how they're going to make this one work Actually, let's pause that point, put a pin in that, because look at the B side and the pistol, Tom. There's three players grouped up on that B side, including Viper, and they have nobody on A. They're playing complete yeah. dedicated retake. Yeah, I don't know if this is a hard read. Vac's got to be really careful because he's already being isolated. I love the deep poison orb, which basically just gives no information and also gives the opportunity for Soulcast to give so much info back the other way. Vac now going to be even lower than when he started with no armor available to him in this scenario. And in fact, this is going to be a perfect split. Now, they're using a lot of utility, dash, everything to try and find out where these players are, Mitch. But as we said at the beginning, there's no one there. But there is a hot flank coming in fairly fast. The problem is, Liquid do Cam have themselves it. a cypher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, they just spotted it out. Cam was left in spawn, ready for this kind of a push coming through. Again, it feels like Liquid are ready. Like, they're reading the strat book of Vitality a lot of the time in these early round setups. Oh, no. Where's the right clicks? Cryptic's not able to get away with anything. Shalafi comes in with a quick kill, but Liquid are bouncing back so damn quickly. The low HP on Sander, he didn't stand a chance. It's all on to Brams and with 10 HP, well, he goes the same way. It is one to zero. Team Liquid take the pistol here, and it looks like a slow start to the half will at least be pushed back for now. Although, recall map number one, Bind. They win the pistol, they lose the second right away. Now, we've seen Vitality go for four spies before, but something tells me we won't see it here on Breeze. Unless it's Marshall. Yeah, I'd, I'd be... I'd be kind of surprised. Yeah, maybe a few investments into the marshal, which, of course, at this point is only a slightly more expensive sheriff. So not too yep. bad of an investment at all. Also, something was talked about on the desk is like Scream, KO. I, I think on this map in particular, a lot of his utility, it, it, you'd have to have a specific counter for it to be worthwhile if you were going to bring in KO here. Like we sort of talked about it a little bit. No, Brams. Oh, this is so good. perfect. Oh, his teammate's kind of taking the uh, brunt for it. <laughs> I don't know if he was ready for that many players to come running around the corner. That wasn't pretty. That was not a pretty fight at all. The side's going to be theirs and a free plan for Team Liquid. Now in a five versus three, what felt like they were about to run into a four-man firing squad ends up in a pretty comfortable round by the looks of things. Now, Vitality will want to play exits on this, and they have every single angle covered. Coming out through mid, spawn, and indeed towards the attacker spawn. Problem is the weapon. Wow. Problem is the weapons. I think Vax's face says it all after that. Uh, not a great fight for him. Cryptics and Scream, both low HP. You really wish you could just line a couple of those body shots. You know, two body shots. On to, one on screen, one on cryptics, and this is all of a sudden a, a decent round for Vitality, but instead they end up with nothing done and Liquid have a flawless round and a free bonus. Now, Solkus got off to a 7-0 to zero start before he was eventually shut down over on Split, and Tom, he's doing it again, yeah. man. And, and the thing that gives them such a benefit in these bonus rounds is his ult costs six. Yep. So if, he, if he's getting seven kills, it doesn't take a genius to work out that that's enough for him to get his ultimate almost instantly. If he gets one orb here, he's going to have it online. And that's so useful for clearing out all of the sites, especially if you combine it with Viper utility. It becomes very difficult to destroy all of those little squids before they get towards you. I love the Viper orb used to push up into mid. Now, so Focus is going to be dropped right away. The Vandal having a decent advantage when it comes to these kind of fights, but they've dashed past. They're on the side and they're overrunning it now, capable of just getting that plant down. Their Viper wall covering the retreat as it will come back up online in a second. 
And this becomes quite difficult for Vitality to fight back into, especially with this Lurk play from Link. He is coming behind very slowly. I mean, this is off-ground timing. There's no way that you expect it at this point, and he's able to catch back completely off guard. Brams on the Cryptics at least gives them a chance, so a foothold back into this round, and oh, the wall completely saves Scream's life. At this point, it's all about running the clock down, and Team Liquid are doing a fantastic job of it. A great tag by Yam be followed up with the kill the defuse not even halfway as they rush around the side of the site and indeed stop it brams has no time left and no oh, ammo no. that's a round for team liquid and link with a phenomenal 3k great mid lurk on that flank and fantastic job on the site of just delaying that push in through middle using the wall spamming through it and making sure that vitality were facing towards the site so that link could catch them from behind yeah, the, the time wasted is one thing. I, I think also th this is again just showing how Link is almost like that Swiss Army knife of Valorant where it's just like any agent he seems to pick up, it almost just like, oh, yeah, he must have been playing that for years. No, I think this is his fourth time ever <laughs> playing Cypher and it, ju it just just looks natural for him. So we'll see, maybe there'll be a few holes in that, but uh, I, I highly doubt it. Three and zero, bonus round victory. Again, it's a flying start for Liquid and we're watching Vitality to see how they can come back from this. But again, a complete change of pace, a move for Scream to just walk right in. And already it's looking like the plant timing though. Well, there you go. Maybe, maybe we'll get caught every once in a while. In the words of a great man, what a timing, and that most certainly was. But Liquid bounced back very quickly, Easy. taking down every single member of Vitality and putting it four to zero with four players left alive. Now, this is starting to become very familiar, Tom. It feels like the start to the previous map where Liquid got themselves a ton of credits. Oh, who's doing the replays today? They're just savage. Every time someone <laughs> gets timing, they're outdone. They're just popping that on for the world to see. I love it. Uh, one of the other talking points that I've always had, especially with Vitality, is... It, it is really intriguing to me, especially on this map, that Shilabi is actually the one playing Sky. An, an agent, again, that he never really yeah, played sure. uh, in previous teams. Also, he is an absolute monster on Jet! And well, speaking of Jet, see you later, Loki. I see you later, Sender. Exactly Link is popping off. This is the this is their proper full buy round. This is everything. All the trimmings on the side of the meal. They had everything they desired in this round. And again, they're just getting slapped. Shilabi, he's dead. There's no way he survived. He's got two HP. He's blinded in the corner. He's stuck and he's caught. But somehow, Mitch, this is a two on two? Yeah, it has flipped into Vitality's Perhaps? favor quite quickly. Link is the only one left alive, and he's creeping up behind. His flanks oh, have been on point. He found the double earlier on, but now two more sit in front of him, and Brams is staring right at that oh, corner. Man. A 4K out of him with 30 HP remaining. And that is going to be the first for Vitality found at last. A heavy investment from Liquid as well. That's actually eaten decently into their economy. Yeah, that is... That is a weird round, I have to say. Like, it mostly came off the back of an individual play from Brams, like being able to take down four players while pushing up through the connector. I don't know if that's something that they'll be able to repeat, because realistically, I, I feel like Liquid almost threw that one away. But hey, if he can get off the starting block, and I said get off it, I think he's already on like nine kills, so he's definitely off the mark. <laughs> then maybe that can be a game changer for them. One of the main reasons we've seen him switch up to the duelist is we know how good Brams can be individually. Now Solcas, he's actually gonna, he could get caught here. If he gets tagged up, he's screwed. Oh, that shock dart right on to Sander. Does a lot of damage, but not as much as the operator. Now it's screamed down. Pretty much all notion of pushing into this B side is gone because they had to split in through middle. With that Viper ultimate, you do not want to push through that choke point. I mean, you are you are dead if you do that nine times out of ten. So instead, they slow the pace and hope that Vitality get aggressive, but they don't need to. Rams is still going, though. And I suppose because they're playing retake on A, they want to get this information very quickly if they are rotating over, and it's going to work out so well, man. That time. Oh, what? no! A wallbang headshot! He just about stays alive! Oh, no. <laughs> I would just give up at this point. Brams, I think you've uh, overstayed your welcome a little bit. Vitality 
Still maintaining the five versus three, and now they've got the info that this is going to be an A hit. It should be a pretty left. difficult round for Liquid to get anything done in. I've already yeah, used a wall on B2. They do have a Viper's Pip. It's whether or not they'd want to commit it here. And actually, the look back could give an angle. Never mind. Loki connects the shot. Second player dropped as well. And now it's left all on to Link, who is at least going to make things a little bit more expensive. But with still two players left on the A site, no chance at the round. It will be Vitality to double up and take their second. And now the money really is scarce for Liquid, but I do still see a Blade Storm and I see Scream with the name next to it. So I'm uh, not going to count any chickens. I found that really interesting, actually, over on the B side that we had the wall put down early. And it's something that we'll see as an adaptation from a couple of teams on Breeze. And just in general, when you're playing up against a Viper, but I feel like Viper so consistently plays the B side here. Like, you pretty much never see a Viper on A. So when that ulti is online, pressuring with your own Viper wall means that you then are relying on, on dealing with Viper. And oh. often that's going to be done with a drone or something like that. Brams is so aggressive. I like It's this. working out. Yeah, I, I don't think Liquid would have... Like, this is one of those maps where aggression other than into mid is incredibly difficult, especially because all the angles are going to favor the attacking side a lot. Oh, right dear. Here. Is this about to be the counter to what we just saw for Soka? Never mind! Vank comes out of the drone and then still manages to find the kill onto Yumpy, seemingly having the sixth sense that somebody was around the corner and even, even tapping up Scream as well. This is starting to fall apart, and that was the spy... Uh, not great. I mean, they had two players going through uh -oh. tubes, so I don't mind sending the spike there, but he can out afterwards. Right. Uh, it's a death sentence and a flawless round between Brams and Vac. I don't know who to compliment more. That was a gorgeous one out of Vitality. Some with aggression, pushing down through B or th through middle, I should say, into elbow. And others just more conventional plays, allowing Liquid to walk right into the trap and being very conscious of where they are. You can see Vitality's comfort level with this map is so much higher than it was over on Split. Yeah, for sure. Like, I, I think their willingness to almost just be this proactive. And I, I think the change that they've made for Brams, a lot of the time Brams' role when he was playing Omen was to almost garner mid control in a way that just denied the opposition. In this case, it's almost gloves are off. I'm, I'm, I'm coming to fight you, no matter where it is on the map. He's already pushing deep down tube as well. Like, he's going to have a perfect flank. And there's not really anybody watching that angle because well, who does this? Oh, Shalabi's actually completely avoided the Hunter's Fury. The flank from Brahms oh, isn't going to be successful. This time, they're quite conscious of it. And Shalabi can't really do anything. They have to wait. The tag actually on to one and a second as well. Good follow-up. Shalabi shut down and scream. The one-tap machine delivers the bullet to put Loki in a 1v4. Vitality have had a couple of good rounds, but Liquid are back to play. And even with Yampi falling, he's still got three more to Look deal with. It just feels undoable. Yeah, the link, Link's position should basically end the round. I, he's taken a very long route to get there, but this will... Ah! Oh, no! No! I, there are, there are, I have two major, major issues with that. One, Loki opened that door a few seconds ago. So, so to just not expect him to be there is madness. Two, that's the biggest whiff I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think it is. I think that as a, not just as a shot, but as a situation, opening the door, being surprised he's there, missing the shot, he's not even looking. And of course, Don't you dare. a replay operator Don't you dare. is going to show Don't us this one. You hey, chuck it dare. on 0.5 speed. Why not? Oh, there thank you. Go. Look at They're that. Nice this time. They're not being so, savages so we found anymore. Out Loki fans. Biased replays. <laughs> Bias replayer. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, look, they're going to want to put that one behind them pretty quickly. And what better way to do it than with the full buy they currently have? An operator again in the hands of Loki. You know, hopefully a little bit more successful this time around. Now, for Liquid, their A play seems to be a favorite. After that previous round, they're going there again. They put the wall down. They're taking sight. They're probably going to even commit Viper Ultimate to it as well. Shot not going to land by Loki. He was under pressure, though, in fairness. He didn't expect to be that quickly. And he's found the information for Brams. But sadly, Solkus has wall banged the man. And headshot him through the doors link is still shutting down mid the blade storm at least connects to him but now they've got to fight back oh they've already used their drone they've used it way too early it's not going to clear out the viper ult. now they've got to go in dry 
Oh, but the timing is so good. Still not going to be found. And now Cryptics can just fade back in oh. to an unknown angle. One I don't know how left. you fight in here. It's all he needs. Just one. Never mind. <laughs> Yumpy with the double flank. So, yeah. I, I saw I, that, I, but... A lot of lurks in that round as well. Like, I, I like the mid control almost just being a ruse. Like, the rest of the team just, in the meantime, just pushing onto the site. Liquid looking pretty damn good, Mitch. I really wanted you to full sell that. I saw the little flank coming in, and I, you're just like, one knife <laughs> left. I really wanted the full commit. Like, he's got one knife. This could be I'll the be, play be to honest, make it happen. And then he just gets shot in the back. After, <laughs> after the ult... Oh, after the missed shot in the previous round, uh, <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to give him something, man. Come yeah. on. Uh, Yampy didn't, unfortunately. And yeah, no. I, I'm really surprised at the... On the one hand, I'm surprised at the drone. On the second, the fact that it's used from so far back, I guess there's not really that many places you can use it from other than maybe the boxes up close. So, like, the main counter to oh. a Viper, for those of you that don't know, is just popping your drone, right? Go through, tag her, she's dead. Especially on a map like this where it's so open, there's nowhere for her to hide. She can go back through a choke point. And if she did, she wouldn't be able to get back to her ultimate. So, it's very strong indeed. Brams, we've talked about the early round aggression, and it has been very successful so far, but... This time, they're just going to be pulling back a little bit. Unfortunately... Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I feel like the squids almost blocked the vision of the fact that Brams was there. He's popped the Empress in this round as well, so just trying to put his team on his back might not be needed. Sender holding off. He's just like, you know what? I don't really fancy peeking that one. Just going to try and fade back, but Scream is already crossing to the site, and they're still ready, waiting, and watching for any sort of peak to be made. However, Sender doesn't need to do it. They are in a five versus three retake. He does not need to overface here. However, Brams is gonna fall on the flank. Scream actually with re-aggression and just as quickly as they get the advantage back, Shalabi puts them in the ground. How do you fight up against Scream in this situation? There's three players, but we've seen him win them before. The first goes his way to flank, coming around. Oh, I almost thought that hit. I, I thought the dash was the sound of the kill. About to lose my mind, but Vitality get it done. They deal with Scream, they deal with Liquid, and put four on the board. Already shaping up to be a good defensive half. They can push up to one more. They're going to be over the moon. And when you look at Liquid, the situation that they're currently in, I don't know how comfortable they're gonna really be remember they're basically the vitality of map one they've had their super early lead but now it feels yeah. like they're finding it incredibly hard to actually close these rounds out and vitality are finding their groove yeah for sure and especially with the fact that okay sure the flanks might be a little bit of a problem when it comes to not having cypher on the second half but realistically it's the defensive half you almost worry a little bit because there's a, a lot of information lost the trips to hold onto the b site is such a common combination alongside with viper so if if, if vitality end up with like five or six rounds here they, they've done a pretty damn good job well, considering this is oh, oh my no. god this is such an important round. If Vitality win, it's an eco from Team Liquid going into the final with zero ultimates to play with as well at this stage. And that double opening, that collateral from Loki puts Team Liquid on the back foot, even with the trade onto Shalakbi. That will be Seekers taken out at least, making it slightly easier in this round. And actually, you can already see it. Seekers would have been popped probably at this point, or at least a deep flash to confirm there's still players there. Instead, Vitality now have to commit to a full retake on B. But the wall that they have allows them to do that this wall is perfect for getting back into the b site and so they're content to stick with a four-man a hold or at least close to with the mid obviously being a big consideration and as team liquid go out onto this site oh my that is unreasonable well very unlucky for vitality i suppose the yin and yang of the collateral they found to start it that now they're on even numbers as they try to fight back in zero information on where these players are and as sender comes up above that wood he will be spotted and taken down the trade is very quick to come in but a good crossfire on the players on site even able to see loki coming through the wall vac is tagged up by every piece of utility remaining and a one versus two this is very Basically for a 6-6 six, six half. Big pressure on Vac, but it's taken off him quickly. 7-4 to four we go. Team Liquid answering back in this buy round, round and making sure that a quick. solid attacking half is within their grasp. I mean, they can definitely put eight on the board here. Yeah, for sure. Especially with how I, I guess the operator has almost changed a, a lot of the game in terms of vitality. I'll be interested to see if they can afford it here because 
Loki was off to a, a very, very slow start, but his operator play, excluding the one round which shall not be named, has been incredibly good. Like even opening up with a double in this round. So the fact that that's going to be missing, definitely a bit more of an issue. Doesn't have his ultimate and in fact is all the way down to a Spectre. And even Brams, who has been the aggressor in the majority of rounds, has left only a pistol. You, you sort of mentioned how integral that it was for Liquid. It seemed like it was the same and already a fast push in, the dash distraction coming out from Scream, giving space to the rest of his players. Loki now trying his best to make some sort of play. Oh my <laughs> it's God. very awkward and he's not going to win the duel. That was a beautiful oh. attempt. That was absolutely beautiful attempt. I enjoyed every second of that, Loki. <laughs> Making a tunnel towards him and then dashing out of the way. God, if that was an operator, he got that kill as free as could be. Feel bad for him. Shalapi coming around the corner is caught by Yampi and Team Liquid looks set to take this across the line with eight on the board. This has been an incredible half for them on the attacking side. A four to zero lead certainly propped them up to the position that they're currently in, but oh my okay. God, Rams. What was that shot? It won't yield any big result on the, the half, but hey, it was it was nice to look at. At the end of the day, Tom, eight to four for Team Liquid. They've matched up pound for pound in the buy rounds. They had their early game lead. This is a fantastic position for them to play from. And even with Brams having so much space, seizing so much on the B site, pushing up on the mid aggression. I mean, Brams has had a fantastic time but that hasn't translated to rounds for vitality, unfortunately. Yeah, that that's the issue. It, it, it seems like, although a lot of the mid aggression, the B aggression actually worked out, it always seemed to be at the surrendering of the A site. And their retakes didn't really look too good. As you mentioned, like drone usage just didn't really clear some of the spots. I think also the interplay from Liquid and After Plants looked incredible. Like in every single round when that spike went down on A, that for me at least, that was the round done because we never really saw anything in the retakes. The rounds that were won by Vitality were them being aggressive. Now, luckily, they now move on to the attack. Their double duelist is going to be thrown into play. The Lurk, instead of obviously being the, the normal Sentinel, is actually going to be put down to the Viper. So it means that either we're going to have maybe some earlier walls thrown in, and the other will be Brams. Now, the thing with Lurking with Arena, it has its benefits of the... He can basically be self-sufficient and heal himself. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, he almost won that duel, which does irritate me. But ne <laughs> nevertheless, uh, he is going to die. Tom is currently leading a, a holy war against the uh, Do you like the, the, rope the accuracy. accuracy on the ropes? No. Do you like them? No, no, I don't. Then shut your mouth. I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> like it, but you hate it. <laughs> like, I always get owned by it. Yeah. You get like one tap with a vandal while flying through a rope we're, on Icebox. We're playing Split or Icebox and I just hear Tom go, God damn it! And I'm like, yeah, I know what happened. I know what's up. Oh, they tagged a few up. It's not going to land any kills, though. Team Liquid are falling apart at the seams in this pistol round. Screams dash doesn't really get him very far, but that might be to his advantage. Inside the smoke, an awkward fight ensues out of ammo, but the right click comes in for Vac. It's going to be Yampy to clutch it all oh, out in a quick double. There's only one left. A 1v1 from nowhere, and Yampy comes within one shot of acing the pistol. But it will be Vitality. With 15 HP on sender, walking away with 8 to 5, a pistol they desperately need to close the gap on Liquid and one that they've only barely found. He's looking good. He's looking very, very good. I don't know if it's based off the, the Sova usage in particular. Again, I think it's the same as what we said about his omen. Like, I don't know if I'm going to be raving about the agent, but I am going to be raving about Yumpy. That was so ridiculously close and what was looking like an impossible scenario. Just going to be a few pistols invested into this round. Maybe a little bit of aggression along the way. They've got the window covered by the cam and... The information not being found almost grants a freebie kill to sender, but not going to be the case this time. A spread out offense, just waiting for any little pieces of aggression. They know that Liquid have to take a risk in this round because, well, they haven't got much else. Yeah, well, exactly right. You roll the dice, you take some aggression as a team now. It looks like aggression is sort of what they're going for with the fact that you've got Yampi pushed up into elbow, but three players on the B site with a Viper on A, something I mentioned earlier, you never really see the Viper on the A site, but this wall, it's more typical of just denying that sort of, well, typical push, you know, it's what everyone likes to do. 
put your wall up on A, push in, get your mm. control. This Good way, though, they kind of... as well. Exactly. This way, they split it as they push in, meaning that if you have someone on site playing closer from the doors, they can actually get through and still fight for that. And indeed, you kind of force your opponent to play on site. Now, the spike being swapped left. over to Shalakbi because he's just one away from picking up that ultimate now after planting down. And seekers could be very valuable to catch some of these flanks. Sander wisely starting to create some distance and back away, but uh -oh. he'll still be caught by cryptics. That's, That's a weapon that can be retrieved. Like, this is now quite scary with the fact that you've got Yampi Scream alive and capable of playing with a rifle. They not. Oh, there we go. Okay, we go. Sol Kefo. Took them a little while, but yeah, that that's the only rifle that they actually have into this round. So they basically just handed over their most valuable weapon to their opponent. And Yumbi's even going to pick up a Spectre. Now, for the majority of players here for Liquid, they're still just going to want to die. There's, there's not really any reason for them to survive into this one. So the main thing will be just making sure that they don't die to the other players. And that's exactly what they do. Yumpy even gets another kill. And Solkas gets to hold onto the rifle as well. Uh, other than winning the round, that's pretty much as good as it gets for Liquid. That is a win-win. You know, you give a consolation round to Vitality, but Liquid are the real victors there, certainly mm. in the economic game. And I think it's ridiculous, again, that you look at around the halftime. I think Yampi's averaging like 16 kills a half at this stage. It's just, it's unreasonable. It really is, regardless yeah, of guess... what agent he plays. On, on split, that didn't really happen because there weren't enough rounds. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. the second half was about three rounds, so it didn't really count. But yeah, I'll, I'll give it to you. Scream, this is a much more aggressive start. Of course, now he has his dash back. He's not just working with the flashes, the fragments, or even trying to take abilities away. He's looking to try and take lives, take heads, as he pushes all the way through. Now, Shalabi is aware of this potential, but he turned. Ah! Yeah! Oh! What's happened? Yeah, there we go. He was just trying to scare us. The, you know, Scream would never miss a shot like that. Yeah, he's going to cut the first couple of seconds of that fight out of the, the highlight movie. It's just going to be like the headshot dash. Like, yeah, it was clean, bro. It was clean. But he got away with it in the end. Link heard some steps, right? Right? Did he not hear them? I swear I What's going on? Oh, no. Guys, hello? Liquid, you alive? Well, this is ridiculous. Vitality have just walked onto the site completely under in front of even Liquid's noses. I, I don't know how that's happened. Putting Liquid in a position where they have to really contemplate. Do we go for this? Three rifles committed to a retake where our opponents have rifles and in fact, some upgrades for free and the site control and the wall to stop us pushing in. I don't think they go for this at all. I think they've made the right call in falling back, but that is a devastating loss, Tom, in a round that, I mean, I don't want to say they'd won. It, it had only just started, but... They certainly shouldn't have lost that quickly and convincingly. No. Oh, and then, why? If they do want to bring in something a little extra for the next round, Brams has got it. It's going to be that operator. I, it, it, everything about that fight was just incredibly confusing. The fact that Brams is just able to walk up mid, like with no one seemingly having any idea about it. And then even after that, once link goes down it seems like they still didn't know he was there because <laughs> then you yeah. have yumbi peek back through and like try and take a fight on site so i, I feel like something just got lost in translation communication maybe a bit because what how does that happen like this is the the play like, he's on cam what? like i just i don't understand why he's on the cam because i i swear i heard a step to his left now maybe that was his teammate and i completely misheard maybe i had my headphones on backwards i don't know but I, I, to cam like that and not have anybody watching for it, it, it was just so strange. And a, a hiccup. Look, it's a communication hiccup. These things happen. But it's the cost of it. How did Brams expect that? Come on. He's staring at the angle and his screen jumps up, peeks his little bun, hair bun above the wall, and oh, it's shot off straight away. Gone. This is a uh, suboptimal start. He hits such a nice shot and then it cuts back to that crosshair and uh, it just ruins it. It ruins the moment. He's, he's taken all the beauty out of any play that he would ever make by having that crosshair in. Well, the gamble to be, uh, well, it's been worked out seemingly by Vitality. Even going to invest the Seekers into this one. Don't want to lose any weaponry. A good opportunity to build up some extra cash. After the last round, they still had a decent amount already, but... This will set them up at least for a couple of rebuys. And you know what? Rams, 
He's looking to just farm up those kills. I am enjoying thoroughly him playing this Reyna. It seems to just be a comfort pick for sure, but it means that he's able to almost just be that initiator, that aggressive player pushing into the site, taking a lot of those early fights and just making it so that it doesn't even come down to retakes anymore because they have to get through him to get to the retake. And so far, Liquid haven't been able to do that. Well, this has been a damn impressive comeback by Vitality. In fact, matching Team Liquid pound for pound in terms of the, the early half that Liquid had on their attack. Now that we're tied up 8-8, eight to eight, you really got to give a lot of props to Brams, man. Like, you, look at that scoreboard. Dude's on 20 yeah. kills. He's top fragging the server by quite a bit. And we'll talk about Yampi all day long, especially after that. It, it's also to do with how flashy he is. But Brams has been in a position where he he's hyper aggressive, right? On this map, he has been so aggressive. And he's finding success the majority of the time. That is yeah. invaluable to a team. Already we're going to see the Empress pop. It looks like he's going to be the one leading that charge as well. Drone alongside. Pop flashes ready and waiting. And Cryptics, he's going to have to try and deny some of the space with his utility. The Umpy already here on the rotation has a drone of his own. That might give him a freebie. And if it's Brams, that would be quite valuable. There he goes. Straight out of the round. Any extra damage? Great. Nice. But you've taken out the danger man. He actually tags two other players as well. Yeah, really good adaptation. I was wondering where that third burst was going to go and hoping it was elbow, and it was straight down because there's nowhere you can go, right? Like, elbow, if you ult in that with a Hunter's Fury, there's maybe two pixels that you can stand in that you're not going to be hit by it. Now, Scream is being spotted. Just notice Scream is the same hairdo as as, um, as Jet does. You could do the little thing down the side, you know? And then it will be perfect. Maybe dye his hair white, do a little cosplay. I don't know. But for now... How low they are. It's a four versus three, but heals are coming in. Shalakpi is able to heal up Sender and put them into a pretty reasonable position. But I have to feel like for Vitality, they have somewhat of an advantage if they take down Scream because then that's an isolated B player. Problem is taking down Scream ain't that easy. Now he's dashing away back on site and ready to help with stopping this push. Cryptics, so much utility just to make these ratty angles so hard to clear. And in fact, he's even going to get rid of Shalabi as well. Scream there to support. And that's a much better looking round from Liquid. It, it does. It, it, I always hate just like highlighting one player, but it really does seem like it's the Bram show at the moment for Vitality. They need him to get them those openers. Otherwise, everything almost just grinds to a halt. I really felt bad actually on the push in because they had perfectly read Cryptic. So look at that. This is exactly what I wanted yeah. to talk about. They put the snake bite down, but then they only have one player peeking into that corner. The second still not connecting, even though he's taking double damage. And they peeked through the one way that they knew was there. Like they saw that one way way before they even went towards that corner and decided, not nah, screw it. I'm going to go for this fight. Terrible decision making, really. Like, I feel like they could have done that so much better. Oh, that dash. Loki taking damage, but he's made it to the site. Cryptix wants to try and deal with him now, playing inside the jet smokes, but doesn't want to overextend too much. That's Loki down the spray from Cryptix. Okay. Catches a second after being tagged up, and oh my! Screams delivering headshots through walls or just straight up. Sanders got it all to do in a clutch situation, and well. Scream staring right at him for the third kill of the round and double digits for Team Liquid. That is a quick round, very swiftly dealt with. Yeah, and at the moment, that the, seems to be the main struggle when it comes to this A site is that even seemingly knowing where Cryptix is going to be, having counter utility, having fast, aggressive plays to try and clear him out, they're really struggling. Like, it's just like. Wow, it, it almost sounds harsh, but it's like the cockroach that survives the like the nuclear bomb. It's just sat there in the back. You, there's nothing you can do to clear it out. And at the moment, that's been the issue, especially with that B site. And it's only going to get worse because now he's put down the Viper's pit just to go, all right, come my way. All right, see you later, Loki. Goodbye. It almost feels like in the previous round and at the start of this that Vitality are eco. You know, <laughs> it's like I know they had rifles. I saw the rifles in their hands, but it doesn't feel like Finish. they had rifles in their hands. Shalapi's here to change that perception, though. Link still hasn't been detected up close, and now he's ready to play into his cage. The catch back off guard. The spray is decent, One but as he's fall... Oh, no! <laughs> he only tagged up back for about half, and then in comes the shock dart to finish it off. Vitality just being slapped in these last couple of rounds. They tied it up to 8-8, eight to eight, but Liquid pulled out those oh, rifles, those ultimates, and now... With Scream and Yampy fragging, 
What can you do? Yeah, that's always been, it's been the scariest thing since the second they yeah. signed Yampi. We used to say with Scream Fragging, you know, oh, what Screaming can you do, team. man? Then they added in Yampi, and you're like, all right, well, GG, we've got Solkus who can have 40 kill games on that sky. But what are you going to do against that? They need an answer pretty soon. Yeah, and, and as said, like, for the majority of the rounds, it seems like their answer has been Brams, and he's been silenced over the last few. Like, yep. the, he's had some really solid plays on the defense. In fact, I would say the majority of their defensive rounds was his, like, re-aggression and pushing around the map to give his teams information. Now on the entry, it, it's a little bit of a tougher task. Like, he's very much just reliant on some solid flashes and almost forcing some people out of positions with utility. And as said, like, when it's come to the B site, that's just been a struggle. And then there's also just the rounds where Liquid are not going to play ball and just sit back and be passive. And you have players like Scream just running straight down mid, updrafting, and then headshotting people who are still basically in their spawn. So uh, it seems like, at least over the last few, Vitality have fallen a little bit flat. Now, they do still have the finances to actually invest into this round. They've got a couple of decent ultimates as well, but I, I do feel like both of them are relatively situational. And as of the last couple of rounds, they've not really had any ground to use either of them. And Tom, one thing I want to highlight real quick is the fact that, as we said to start the series out, Vitality eliminated Wave, Heretics, and NIP. Yep. Knocked them completely out of the running for Berlin, and for some of those teams, that meant completely out of the running for Champions. This is a team that has made waves over the last couple of weeks, and now... This is their opportunity to really cement themselves. Beating one of the teams that made it to the, what, top four in the world? That is yeah. huge. They can manage to I, do that, but it's an uphill battle. Yeah, they, they've definitely proven that they are dangerous. Even even yes. winning on a map that I think that or top they're 10. quite weak on in the form of bind, they, they've showed that they're definitely a dangerous team. It's whether or not they are one of those top teams. And that, that's a yep. very different thing. That's being consistent. That's having depth within your map pool. And that's where I start to ask a few questions. Now, I said it's situational. This is an opportunity, but out of all the players to tag, the Jets always going to be the worst. The easiest to try and escape. Brams needs a play, and instead it's Link. He goes straight through his own cage to find two openers. 30 seconds now for the move to be made, and Scream still alive and kicking. Well, they're investing a lot into this one to try and get some space, but Centaur is getting owned. One kill is all he will get, and Liquid hold on, well, almost easily. 12 to 8 with that. Very quick rotations from Liquid into the site. They knew what was going down immediately. So much committed, and without this success found, and with Link being able to lurk like that towards double doors, it was, it was out of the question. That they managed to make that work. One other thing I'll say, Tom Shalakbi on the sky, not not so much hitting. And this is a guy I got a lot of respect for. I mean, he has had there's been rumors in the EU scene for a long time that this was one of the better players uh regionally in like EMEA wise. Yeah. Obviously, coming from Egypt, he hadn't had a lot of exposure within the EU scene because it's, it's difficult to play on that kind of ping in general. But he is solid. I don't I don't think I've ever seen him play Sky before, and so far it seems like there's Dude. definitely a lot to learn there. But coming into this potentially final round, looks like Vitality have opted to really up the pace and just dash their way into that A site, getting the plans, but still all of Team Liquid to deal with. They're, they're now aware. Like, this push that they've had through Tube from the defenders has been something they've done so regularly that sender is watching and vac is actually just around the corner to support him so they are not allowing anybody to come in behind the only man really deep within the site is going to be loki and they do actually have two players close just outside the timing though is not great loki gets forced out of the angle link is going to wrap around do they expect the second player though no they don't eventually though the trade's coming back through yampi with another shot and cryptics to close a perfect retake in the End, and they don't have they time don't have the it. final snake fight <laughs> <laughs> oh they've just my about God. gotten away with it man if vitality make the comeback happen now after that round divided by a second oh they're gonna feel it. good that's what puts a smile on your face so honestly moments like that those clutches that's what gets you going hey we can do this boys it gets you roiled up riled up and let's see if they're gonna <laughs> doesn't help the money though <laughs>
<laughs> that is true. That is true. Like, oh my god, it's so much is a worse much than I thought. Worse buy. <laughs> yep, they had zero buy uh, surviving, Mitch. What did you expect? No, no, I, I know that, but I, I, I didn't think we'd be seeing this kind of budget. We got two bulldogs, the Spectre Mitch A. Mitch has gone out to the money tree. <laughs> I'm pulling credits out of every which way. Ever do that in the arcade? Give the machines a little kick. You know, sometimes, sometimes something comes out. I used to go around all the as a kid, all the coin machines. You know, just, just. Oh, I tripped over again. Oh, what's that? A couple, couple ten cent coins. Okay, I'll take those. Vitality. They're gonna take whatever scraps they can get. Fighting into this round, this is their best chance to buy their way back into the series. Rams one away from multi. Not gonna be the biggest of impact, really, when it comes down to it. You really want to be seeing something like the Blade Storm, like the Viper's Pit. But obviously, they burned these up along with the Seekers in just the previous round, or very, very recently indeed. Liquid have got. A pretty comfortable spot to play from, but Vitality have made no real aggressive presence. I mean, this is a stalled play, hoping that Liquid get aggressive in themselves. And so far, Tom, that hasn't happened. So eventually, they're going to need to make that push. And there's still a bunch of utility there for Team Liquid to play with. Well, perhaps this time there is... Well, I was going to say the Empress, but he was quickly dethroned. Link has cut off the legs of their mid play, and it leaves it down to just all the players trying to push through the choke on B. Scream is eventually going to get one, but they haven't actually cleared this close angle. The smoke fading, though, gives an opportunity, and now Scream is dashed into the open. He has to be dead here. How is he getting a kill? How is he still alive? Kill the man. He's in the open, just flying around, floating past the site, and he still could have kept the remaining two kills. What? Man. This guy is something else. Something That's else. Unreal. What an incredible series from Team Liquid. From Yampi, from Look Scream in particular. Look at they his face. They did an unbelievable job. And Tom, I have to say, you know, looking at this game, Vitality have definitely cemented themselves in my what heart as a top wearing? 10 team, possibly going even further. But of course, Liquid now will proceed on in the upper bracket. And Tom, there's a couple more games happening today, aren't there? There's a, few, there? there's a few really good teams playing from what I've heard. So obviously that series one done for the day. But Fnatic are going to be taking on one of the best teams in Europe soon. I don't, don't think they're facing Liquid. Tom, I dislike I you more your case the, every time the we A speak. doesn't stand for Alliance. All right. We won't. <laughs> we won't. Uh, we won't go through what it could stand for. We'll let the viewers at home uh, imagine that for themselves. But hey, you know... After that, after that series, I'm impressed by Yampi. I'm impressed by Scream. I didn't expect that to be any different. And we need to talk about the players of the match, really, don't we, Tom? Because there's a couple of mm. options. Now, typically, Solkus is going to be one of them that's up there, right? He's just been so consistent over on that sky, but it really feels like he was kind of outshone by your Scream, by your Yampi. And between the two of them, I don't know. You want to give the viewers at home some way to go, but... I'm staying hands off on this one. They were both spectacular. Yeah, it's it's a rough one. I, I don't think I'm going to be leading into either of those. That That's totally up to you. I think in terms of Twitter, they might lean into the, the headshot machine. But, uh, <laughs> you know, may, may, maybe somebody will go in the other direction. Maybe the Finn will get a little bit of love. Either way, that w that's the sort of performance we wanted to see from Liquid. For Vitality, though, it's not like they're out of the running. This is double elimination. Thank the Lord for that. So Vitality <laughs> will have the chance to try and run that lower bracket. And you know what? Famously, that has been what a lot of European teams have done in the past. So uh, I, I wouldn't want to meet up against them in the lower bracket. Yeah, there's going to be some decent teams going down there. Of course, we've had 10-star versus BDS going on in the background where 10-star managed to win out 2-1, to one, taking the third map in a very close fashion. And then when it comes down to uh, the games coming up next, Rix versus Giants and Fnatic versus Alliance. Stay tuned for those. We're going to be going to a quick break. When we come back, AD is going to talk you through that game and set up another exciting series. See you real soon.
got the money in the bank. main event where team liquid have progressed in the upper bracket after taking down team vitality i'm yingsu and i'm back here to bring you guys a quick post-match interview with team liquids yumpy hello yumpy welcome to the show uh, congratulations today you were absolutely incredible that ace uh, was something else on split talk me through today's series first of all thank you yeah, at first map, I think we just got, not say unlucky, but uh, we lost both beat stalls and it's, they just got like a really good rolling on the map. And uh, I don't think we had our, our chances on the first map. And I guess after that, just we just relaxed and knew that if, if we like have the win and uh, just need to be more prepared for the stuff in the split and uh, had a good commerce actually, but in both of the last two maps, we uh, talked really good with the team and uh, I think that was the keys today to win that uh, we, we communicated really well on the last two maps. Well, we got to talk about the KO as well. You know, Sliggy said to me earlier today that you guys feel like this agent is really strong, but I guess people probably didn't expect Scream out of all people to play us. So talk me through why you guys decided to switch him onto the KO. I, I think it was the best start from us with the chat from the KO and uh, I think it's been uh, working really good like uh, in practice lately and stuff so I think it's just good good agent for him also. Uh, well how have you found your new role as well because ever since Iceland you know you've been uh, moving away from that jet which we're so used to seeing you on uh, because it doesn't look like it's affected your operating abilities whatsoever. I mean, of course, the uh, op is still the same. Doesn't matter what agent you use. It's just uh, with chat you can do a lot, a lot of uh, more stuff. But um, yeah, I actually like uh, I like those new agents. You know, I can like um, do some IGL stuff and maybe do like control our game more of like uh, than I did with chat. And uh, yeah, I like learning. You know, it's always nice to learn some new stuff. So it's been like great process so far. Uh, does that mean you guys are still sharing that kind of um, IGL shot calling role? How how involved are you with that? Mm, lately, I haven't been more involving, but uh, yeah, we are still sharing. We don't have like a, just one caller, but I think it's uh, been working really great lately in practice. Uh, now, uh, we're going to see you guys back here tomorrow and you're going to be taking on 10 star. Uh, how much do you know about this team? What do you make of them? I mean, they have a lot of UK guys and one Finnish guy there, all, so... It's going to be an exciting match, but yeah, I have watched like a couple of day games. Uh, to be fair, I don't really know those guys, but I know like Travis uh, Link is like really good friends of those. And uh, yeah, I hope they have been playing really great lately. And uh, yeah, it's going to be an exciting match for sure. Yeah, it is going to be pretty exciting. Uh, well, thank you for join me, joining me, Yumpy, and uh, we'll see you back here tomorrow. Yeah, thank you. Always uh, good to chat to Yumpy, uh, but two people who have been waiting on the wings, uh, who I'm sure are eager to break down everything that we just saw, are uh, your analysts for today, Twiggy and Geo. Guys, join me again. Uh, welcome back. Now, it's interesting to hear that Yumpy, ever since going off of that jet, Geo, is becoming more and more involved with a leadership and IGL uh, uh, kind of role. Yeah, he says he seems to be really enjoying that. And you, of course, mentioned that this sort of like shared IGL idea. And I think this is something that we're seeing in a lot of teams and a lot of games actually is um, many teams like to have almost like situational IGLing. You know, there is there is someone who takes this part of the round or, or or whatever it might be. You kind of share the role a bit more and it can give you way more of an understanding of what is happening all throughout the game. Um, and he said as well, you know, he, he likes that he can have more control with it because if he's playing these uh, agents, you know, like Omen we saw him on earlier, uh, he can literally play that more control role and you combine that with the IGLing and it can be very effective.
Yeah, there's like this massive thing with IGLing with more than one player that gives you so much more control over the over the flow of the game and being able to do all that. Because usually with one IGL, you're just looking at basically, or well, a dedicated IGL. You're looking at basically just doing exactly what's going on there. There's not too much flexibility going on, and uh, definitely being able to have the operator in the hands of somebody other than Jet makes for an interesting dynamic for the team. I mean, I think we were waiting for Scream to pop off today as well. And in true Scream fashion, he was like, I'm not going to play a series and not actually top frag. Um, so as you guys can see there, uh, 3.8 KD for Scream back on that jet looking quite comfortable too. Now, uh, you know, after this series and looking back on what they were able to do, Twiggy, were you a big fan of that KO? Because it does sound like from Yumpy that this is going to be a permanent thing going forward. They're very comfortable with Scream on the KO. Yeah, I mean, thinking about how Scream was performing on the jet before today in week one, I was... Uh, definitely excited to see how the KO would change things up on this one and I think it actually worked out quite well for them especially on that second map it gave them so much more pushing power so much more flexibility coming into it uh, that, that we really didn't see uh, from last week uh, with that jet pushing forward but uh, he's also made the jet work brilliantly as well on Breeze there so I'm excited to see how he plays with both of them I definitely like the KO though positive move I mean, it's one of those things where kind of, as Yumpy put it, right, is he said, it doesn't matter what agent you play to be holding on to the op. And it's not that it's not that I'm, I'm saying that that's what Scream does. But, you know, the skills that we see Scream have in terms of his gun skill and his mechanics and stuff, those are doable on any agent. And if you're bringing something in like a KO, I know a lot of teams are saying, you know, kind of essentially like a, a, a duelist anyway, uh, but you just have so many more options for what you can do. And I think a, a lot of teams leaning into this idea of playing more around what you can do for your team rather than just for yourself. Um, it's really nice. It adds so much flexibility. And you know what? If you want to go back to the traditional duelist for a map, you can do it. You have those options. Yeah, I mean, it's just like having Scream on your team, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, he, can, he can do a lot with whatever agents you want to put him on. And speaking of Scream, uh, surprise, surprise, guys. I'm going to reveal the player of the match result. And uh, of course, Scream is your winner. I don't know. I feel like Yumpy had a really, really good series today as well. But, you know, when you put Scream in a poll, uh, you don't, probably don't even need to put it out there, Twiggy. It's kind of one and done. Yeah, I think uh, people kind of <laughs> like Scream. I think there's this bigger <laughs> thing going on there. I mean, for good reason as well. The guy can pop off absolutely massively and he did that. Well, I mean, we saw the last round to close it out. Like, it's somehow dodging every single bullet, something out the Matrix and then tapping three heads. Uh, he, he has those moments that you, you definitely can see why people vote for him as player of the match there. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can see it. I, I think personally, I would have liked to have seen Yumpy just because I was so enamored by the way that he was playing in, in those last two maps. But yeah, Scream is Scream man like he's always like his it screams lowest point is always going to be higher than like 99.9% .9 of the everyone else so uh, yeah <laughs> you know man's got fans <laughs> yeah he's got one or two you know out there um and uh, before we move on of course uh vitality uh fanatic even versus alliance is the next match in this upper bracket that is coming up next uh, sadly i'm not gonna have you two here with us so i want a quick prediction from you guys uh, uh twiggy Fnatic or Alliance? Who are you, who are you back? Uh, I'm so sorry, Mitch. I, I have to go with Fnatic on this one. It's not that Alliance aren't a good team. They've been performing brilliantly. Uh, but I just think Fnatic, they've got what it takes. I want to see them uh, succeed in this one, especially after last week's performance. And Geo? I think for me, you know, I get a little bit concerned about the, the consistency of Alliance just based on especially how they played in Challengers 1. It didn't quite look like it was enough to cross the, the mark. So even though they're here for Challengers 2, uh, they're going to have to prove a lot. And this is certainly a proving ground going against Fnatic. But I, I don't know if I think they can overtake them just yet. So I'm going with Fnatic. Ooh, okay. Thank you so much, Gio and Twiggy, for joining me today. Congratulations again to Team uh, Liquid. We are going to head to a quick break now, but do not go anywhere because Fnatic will be taking on Alliance right after this.
count that that big bang.
Here we go. Welcome back to the VCT EU Challenges 2 main event. You know how it goes down right now. We've got eight teams. We've got just two EMEA playoff spots remaining. Who will make it there to battle it out for a spot at the Valorant Masters land in Berlin? It is getting fiery. I'm excited to be here. We've already seen 10 Star and Liquid progress to the upper bracket semifinals with BDS and Vitality dropping into our lower bracket round one. We've got plenty more to come for you here tonight. My name is Ian Chambers. I'm your host once again. Thank you so much for having me. And today I'm joined by two exceptional analysts. This man used to have the same accent as me but he was smart enough to lose it. He's a Valorant visionary. Seriously, you should check this man out on YouTube. It's Ryan Central. Ryan, welcome to the show. How are you doing? It's good to be here. I, I ain't lost my old accent. I still, I can still bring it back if needed. Yeah, but uh, it, it's been great. We've recovered from Madrid, at least, from doing a Red Bull Campus Clutch. And now we're back into the swing of things of EMEA and looking at seeing how Fnatic does. Because you would have expected them to get a little bit further in the tournament, but they have a second chance here at least. Absolutely. We'll uh, deep dive into Fnatic very shortly. Alongside myself and Ryan is a man who, if he's not playing Valorant, is probably asleep somewhere. I met him for the first time in Madrid and he's just a scary in person. It's Lothar. Lothar, how are you doing? Was it scary? Like, you know, scary look okay? <laughs> yeah, that's scary. That, that's the look. Right? That's the look. And I saw yeah. that with my own eyes and it haunts me to this day. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's pretty hot in Poland, but uh, you know, I was playing Valorant in the morning, then I was rewatching VODs, and now I'm here casting with you guys. And I also brought an instrument because I saw that, you know, the two previous analysts brought their own, so I have to be like, a, I have to like, you know, flex something in the background as well, even though I'll not touch it for the next two years or something. I feel like I should have like a violin or something, Ryan. I don't know, like behind me. Maybe we should think about that for next time. Yeah. I'll um, <laughs> Next break, I'll get something for sure. I'll, I'll, I'll bring out something. For, like, that's definitely for sure. Absolutely. Right. Just a quick reminder. You obviously know this, but if you've just joined, Fnatic Liquid, BDS, and Rick's GG were all directly invited here after missing out during Challenges 1 with 10 Star Giants, Vitality, and Alliance all battling their way here through the closed qualifiers. Strong competition here with every team deserving of their spot, Ryan. Yeah, I mean, w the fact that it's this competitive, we're still seeing the typical teams that we expect to see at this level, like Ascend, FPX, Guild, G2, all making it to EMEA so far. But that still leaves not only Team Liquid and Fnatic, two teams that actually got to Reykjavik, the furthest out of anybody else in this region for Stage 2, but also some new faces that have found some really nice form. Vodafone Giants looking really strong. Um, BDS have been somewhat consistent up until recently. And then the likes of Tenstar, a recently new all coming into Valorant, actually doing well and winning their first game against BDS. They'll be playing up against Liquid tomorrow. Mm, exciting stuff. Let's um, begin by looking now, of course, our first best of three. Here, as we go along this afternoon into the evening, it's Fnatic versus Alliance. Um, we will start by taking a look at Fnatic. I will come to you first, Lothar. Um, these guys, they, they like this route. When it comes to coming through the hard way, you know, they did this last time. Masters finalists, they went out with challenges one. It didn't look good. And then they qualified and looked like one of the best teams we've ever seen. You know, Fnatic, I feel like they always want to go against the stream. You know, they, they like to challenge themselves. They like to reinvent how Valorant looks for them, which is amazing to see uh, when they're being led by Bosa, who seems to be just playing Valorant all the time and tinkering new strategies. Uh, and we have seen, uh, again, some innovations from them that didn't work out in the previous um, in the previous qualifier that much because we have seen them play three plus, triple smokers. Like, we had Brimstone, we had Viper, we have Astra on Bind, and typically Bind was a great map of Fnatic, but now it's in the red. So it's, uh, it's, it's a very interesting topic about Fnatic because I feel like they're going to reinvent themselves during this qualifier. Yeah, they love to reinvent, and at times, Ryan, they, they look shaky, and then they just like to really turn up the volume and surprise everybody. Yeah, it's the fact that it's in real time that they change stuff as well. So I would expect to see more KO being added. We might see Fnatic play with it. But yeah, gaps in their play, mid-rounds, trying to make decisions on the fly usually get caught out. But I did think they ran into a really inform guild in G2. So we should expect Fnatic to do well in this competition. Staying with you, Ryan, let's now take a look at Alliance. Uh, Mitch was rocking the hat. We know he's back in. I actually made, made these guys my pick to, to go all the way. Um, but they are the absolute underdogs for sure. Or could you say, Ryan, that they are the dark horses? 
I definitely think Dark Horses. The only team that they lost to coming up through the open qualifiers was an Inform Vitality. Uh, Giants even, sorry, who look exceptional. They're on the other stream today. But it's a team that, respect to Banks and everybody else from Alliance, the fact that they're building this up from nothing. You've got players like Kadavra, Ajusu, who were no names, really. It wasn't built off previous reputations in Counter-Strike. It wasn't decided big, well-established names. It was young, decent talent that is starting to flourish. And I think Kada is one of the best players in Europe and has the potential to be something special going into the future. But right now, Alliance is still fostering that talent. They still need to go a bit further, but I can see them maybe surprising Fnatic here little bit you know it's funny uh when it comes to when it comes to alliance i feel like even though they might be underdogs but coming against fnatic they actually not losing that much when it comes to the map pool that they play typically they also didn't play split uh so it's the same as as fnatic they also are strong on bind so coming into this uh particular um you know opponent i feel like they're gonna just ban the good maps from Fnatic and not lose much from their own power so even though they're gonna go here as not the favorite into the match it might surprise a lot of people on at least, you know, one or two maps. So it's going to be a, a very good um, match ahead of us. I could speak to you guys forever, but um, we have to move at a quick pace. And speaking of maps, it's time to take a look at our map vetoes. Hopefully we'll be able to bring those up for you. And Ryan, I want you to talk us through some of the logic behind these choices and where we're going here. Yeah, definitely. I think when it comes to bans for Fnatic, they're straightforward. They tend to always go for split at this point, and that's exactly what they're actually going to be banning out for the most part. Tenstar uh, and all those kind of teams, they come in with a bit of an interesting look. I would say for Alliance, they also ban out split quite a lot, judging off previous performances. So there's no... There's no winning, I suppose, the, the map pick overall, I'd say. They both have the same ban, so we're definitely not going to see split. So it's a lot about what maps they're comfortable on, which is a bit of a problem for Fnatic. Their bind, their icebox doesn't look as good as it used to be. These used to be their dominant maps. Now, it, they don't look as strong, and they're losing quite a lot of these opportunities. Some wonderful analysis from Ryan there. So let's actually find out where it is that we are going here in our next best of three. Um, Lothar, Ryan's pretty much bang on there, isn't he? Yeah, I think it's very much dissected uh, how it's going to go because it, it feels like, for me at least, uh, the split will never going to play, be played from those two teams for sure. And then the next one, do you want to give a 50-50 even uh, like on, on bind for Fnatic even if they don't look good, but it's a strong map for you? I mean, I'm sure that Fnatic will change something on the map, right? So this is why we see uh, bind not being played. I'm going to go to Haven, which is uh, not that strong for Fnatic as well. They played it six times in the past 20, uh, 20 maps and they won only twice. They were strong on, on attack with 52% win rate, which is not really that strong, right? What, while not really great on defense with 46%, while Alliance on Haven is 2-2, so it's like split um, with also better performance on attack. So it's an evenly split map, but the thing is, Fnatic didn't play for almost a month, and, I, and I'm sure that Bosa cooked up something in his lab to surprise his opponents. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? The fact that we're going into this first map. It's a, it's a good way to kick things off, really, Ryan. The fact that it feels like a bit of an even playing field for these two teams to sort of start to suss each other out and for us to suss them out as well. Win or lose, watching Fnatic on Haven is always a spectacle because it always goes to overtime for some reason. Like it gets killed <laughs> against G2. It's always just a bit all over the place. You have that freedom for Fnatic to put together some neat plans. But if uh, somebody like Cadaver pushes down mid and catches two, it kind of throws Fnatic completely off. Icebox is going to be an interesting one coming up. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But yeah, Fnatic on Haven, it would be a great way to start it off. But I think Alliance is going to have their number, as did Guild and G2 in Challengers 1. So Fnatic need to bring something new to the table or their strategies are just going to be found out, I feel. Sounds like... You, sorry, Lothar, I'll, I'll let you continue, then I'll jump back in. I, I'm just checking, you know, my stats and my notebook from right here uh, about about Fnatic and it feels like Fnatic on, on default... Uh, pistol on defense pistols they're playing very aggressively on long c so it's going to be very interesting to see how uh alliance will take on that a strategy that we have seen from Fnatic before because there's a lot of small things that can happen when it comes to anti strating here but let's focus first on the agent select and it seems like Fnatic is are going for 
The Echo on Jet, no surprise. Uh, Mystic on the Omen, which is not something that we see him play all the time. Bosa on Sova, no surprise here. Magnum on Cypher, uh, a big lurker role here. And Doma on Sky. So pretty standard when it comes to like the meta game on, yeah. on Haven. Uh, for the other team, t uh, team for Alliance, they have the Sage um over over basically uh wait what, what's missing on the sova which is a big thing because now they are lacking the double initiation uh when it comes to attack while they try to compensate that with the sky on Firod. and they do get some informations with the uh, tasmanian tiger but at the same time they don't have the drone which is such a big and and nuanced tool to have on haven yeah right and i mean is is this pretty much what you expected coming into agent select it's a hard one because we saw Fnatic actually running Astra Sova. Boaster playing the Astra, Mystic played the Sova. Now there's a bit of a switch route. They're moving away from Agent 15 like a lot of teams have, which I think is a bit of a mistake. We're starting to see the pick rate going up in North America for Astra. She's still good, not as good as she used to be after being nerfed. So I'm a little bit concerned that they're not going to have as much control over the game going forward. But I do think that Alliance, this is where they're going to be sort of homegrown. I think Kada and Jusu remind me of their Kradoma of Stage 2, that deadly duo of duelists that could go in and frag out hard. I'm scared for Fnatic, but ultimately this is a challenge they have to be. I would expect them to be the champions of challenges too, but this is a, a really difficult first map to start on. Yeah, it's interesting with Alliance. Do you think that they seem to almost hit a wall um, at some times, Lothar, when they come up against the bigger teams, when the heat is at its highest? Uh, do you think it, it comes down to maybe a lack of mental strength, strength when it comes to the bigger situations? That's a topic that always comes up when it comes to the teams that are not yet, let's say, proven as much as the big, big names in Europe and in the other regions as well. But I feel like the more events we have under the belt and Alliance is getting more and more, uh, I feel like they're getting more um let's say just confident in the way they play. And we have seen that with Yusu and um, with the he, how he tries to spearhead the attack on Alliance. That there was a big change uh, in the way they execute. They're actually a little bit slower on the executes, more confident when it comes to the explosiveness, but way more deliberate when it comes to the ability usage and the intent of, of how they try to execute the attack. So I'm, I'm pretty confident with Alliance when it comes to how they're going to play on attack. The problem is how they're going to play on defense because Haven is such a complicated map when it comes to pl playing against teams that have also complicated executes, just like Fnatic. All right, well, let's get into it, shall we? Who is going to start on the strong foot in this best of three? It's Fnatic versus Alliance and calling the action for this one. We have the brilliant Zest and John Allen. Hello, yeah, thank you very much, Ian. Uh, we've, uh, we, we're having a great time here. I'm uh, uh, glad to be here as well. A little bit of a last minute sub, but I'm glad uh, to be jumping in. Zesht, uh, you're pretty excited about this match. I know Fnatic, Alliance, big names here in the Valorant scene. Absolutely big names. And uh, you know the most ironic thing, your John, is when I asked Lucker yesterday, two days ago, you have changed a lot of Haven compositions recently. You have added this and that and removed this and that. He said, yeah, we're still doing a bit of a mix-up where, you know, we're still trying to figure out what works the best. And again, they hit us with a new Haven composition. Like, what's next? It feels like sometimes they just find a kind of surprise egg, just pop up and, yeah, what's there? Oh, new Haven composition. At the same time, <laughs> I'm very interested to see how successful that one going to be. Because at the same time, there's a lot lot of thought going behind it at the same time you also have to play with a stand-in sort to say because Jusu still not officially signed still not an official five-man roster you always have to live with a surprise yeah, I mean, I, I feel like even within the top ranks, there have been a couple of shuffles. I mean, most notably over on Vitality that we just saw, uh, the addition of Shalabi, you know, bringing in these sort of newer uh, additions to rosters. And it generally has been going okay, but you're right, you know, Fnatic, they've been bringing in innovations time and time again. Those Kinder Surprise comps, I, li I like that one. I might I might, uh, might adopt that uh, into my own. I've stolen it from you and there's nothing you can do about it. No worries. But we are going to be uh, getting into the game pretty soon. Fnatic will be starting off on that offense and it looks at the moment like they're just going to go uh, for some basic spread out set plays nothing really too fancy maybe vying for a little bit of mid control there you can see omen stacking up uh, towards the garden so shouldn't be uh, too much to worry about for alliance in terms of fancy plays off the bat you know, you have to say, usually Ryan calls this a Zeshtism, where a weird metaphor comes in. Well, well I'm sure gonna keep you up with those. In the meantime, Kadafra finds a great entry onto Dirk, and Jusu is keeping that on and on. Great kills coming over here on the B side, and suddenly, Boaster left alive, and yeah, well, 
Not too many seconds we have had our action yet. Well, John, seems like one more minute to find Poster. Hide and seek it is. I'm a great fan of hide and seek. I think it's a fantastic game mode, but unfortunately uh, it's not the sort of thing that you want to be bringing in uh, to the first round of the VCT, uh, the upper brackets here. So, I mean, like, uh, in the end, it's a flawless round for Alliance, but I don't think it's the end of the world. I mean, you look at how that round went. It was uh, Cadavra just nailing these shots over in over in the middle site and just stopping anyone from moving forwards. Garage was controlled, and from there on out, there was kind of very little that Fnatic uh, were able to do. It's the pistol round. Fnatic now with a chance to try and show up here. I mean, they're not looking to reinvest into the round. They're not looking uh, to try and force this one out, go against those marshals, against those spectres, but potentially a rush on the cards here and towards Garage. Taking their time here. No, no big surprise at that point. As no, that little alarm boat ready. And same goes for Juice, who's the very versatile Irishman that is able to, you know, swap agents from time to time, be an absolute battle saint, or rather a duelist, is going to get some support from Kadafra. Alliance, there's, there's not really too much of a line here. Obviously, down, the suspectors. Yeah, an excellent ice wall at the start. That barrier orb doing so much work to hold off uh, in that garage position. And it just slowed everything down for Fnatic at that point. It, it, it's it's almost the round over there and then. Uh, Fnatic held on a little bit and were able to get a kill. But I just don't think that's, that's really going to be too worrisome. However, that's all really coming off the back of that pistol round. As I said, you don't really expect to be winning these rounds. So Fnatic now really looking to step up into their first rifle. And this is where it matters. This is this is obviously where Fnatic can come up with the big guns, the rifles in hand. And at that point, Haven, it's it's always something that can be annoying very much for, for a team like Fnatic when you simply can't prepare due to lines always swapping compositions. There's a little change here, a little change there. That's annoying. That genuinely must be annoying. And at the same time, it's down to you to play your own kind of game. Durker already entered the side of B, and this has already been occupied by the Fnatic side of things. Spike planted. Quick one-for-one one trade over in the mid, and actually the spike pushed all the way up. No control over the back of B anymore as Durka now has that spot. Trying to go for this retake, actually very tricky. There's a lot of pressure across the rest of the map. In mid as well, it's being controlled. And a hard push to start. Suddenly, it's a man disadvantage that happens over over on the side of a line. So no big surprise in the end. With that swift take on the B side, the way they obtained territory, the early passage of the game here, John, generally not surprised. And this is the thing, right? You, you lose the first two. This is the classic scenario where you lose the pistol, momentum shift in the way of the ones a pistol, blah, blah, classic amateur talk, whatever mm -hmm. you would expect. But here's the thing. The reply right now lays within the weapons and in the hands of Alliance, who got the operator out and the actual oh, rifles in play. Here. Yeah, I mean, the start of this game is the opening, right? It's the first moves in the chess game. You're going for those trades, it's the back and forth, and we're in a known position at this stage. But this is where it starts to pop off with those rifles. Fnatic, though, they don't so show signs of slowing. They move straight up to C, and there's no one there. An overinvestment coming through from Alliance to play in the middle of the map, and now they have to go for the retake over on that C site when there's control already being exerted. There's trap wires behind. There's so much intel. Fnatic have the upper foot here. A bit of an awkward scenario when suddenly those defensive mechanisms of the Fnatic side have been established without even a single casualty. And retaking this spot is going to be costly, not only with casualties, but also time-wise. And Derek is obviously dodging that little trailblazer. No chance for the Tasmanian Tiger to bite anyone. And he's waiting back in the corner. Still an option coming in for Magnum. And here's the assistance you're looking for. Good old Niels, no chance for him. Excellent trades coming through from Fnatic to bring the enemy team to their knees. I really liked the crossfires that they established. They planted it in pretty much the perfect spot. They had the sofa all the way down long. And Boaster just nails that. Excellent, excellent play being set up and executed very nicely. I was worried at the start with that first uh, pick on the retake, but then Durka just turns around and does what he does best. Top of the tables, five kills on the board. Already got those knives on line after getting the spike down as well. So I should be pretty happy with that one.
And Haven recently doesn't feel like it's the sort of battlefield where Fnatic feels too comfortable at. A few losses they have found themselves in recently. For example, against round? <laughs> What's going on? No, All no, right, it's, it's 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 just the perfect time where I can actually tell you something you've mentioned per perfectly. You, you pretty much you build up on it. You said you it's like the first two rounds of chess, right? But you can lose in the first two rounds of chess. That's not possible, Valorant. Equals Valorant is the better game. Change my mind. Look, you and I could discuss this for hours, but I think the more important part is if Boaster can hold off with these shock darts against the push potentially coming on through. The knives already in, but a triple frag comes through for the Fnatic squad. Traded for two, but it's getting dispatched down the long duck and nails the last three stay alive for Fnatic and bring them three and two. For a second, it looked a bit like a nail battle round here, but... So, case closed in favor of Fnatic, and a thing I have to mention, I really, very honestly hate to talk about how many kills a player got, so and on, so on. But unfortunately, Dirk is a player where you want to see him on the top of the leaderboard, where you want to see him drop in those 30 bombs or something like that. And in the recent games we saw against G2, for example, he was missing that. And right now, seeing once more on the top, let's hope it will stay that way, because it's a good sign for Fnatic. You've got him on the operator now as well. So this is the time that Durka can really start to pop off. Take a look at the ultimates as well. Boaster almost up to that Hunter's Fury. You've got Doma on those Seekers. There's a lot of pressure that Fnatic can invest into this round. I mean, you're more than likely looking to see the Seekers potentially over towards the A site this time around. Uh, it looks like that's where the spike's going to be stacked up. And then Durka can play that massive, massive threat on the operator. Actually trading it over to Boaster, so fair mm -hmm. enough. Want to keep those knives in the back pocket potentially, but a lot of ults. The question is, where do you invest them? Another thing I imagine here is that if he has his dash available, that's the best way to enter a site and find a proper frag. In the meantime, though, Magnum is being eliminated and the Hunter's Fury doesn't seem to find a thing at the moment, but it's Dirk who starts off good with that. Whilst Lucker remains patient, first kill found, the second is not granted, and suddenly the defense on the A side is somewhat weakened. But you gotta get the spike down, and Doma saw it with a triple! That's beautiful flicking and beautiful control. Excellent stuff coming out of the orange squad. What looked a little sinister and that could have been turned around 180, all in favor of Boaster and the boys. I'm not gonna lie, Alliance had me in the first half there, but I felt like Fnatic, you know, obviously Doma sitting towards the top. Now, you said you wanted to see Durka pop it out, but the rest of the squad perfectly capable of pulling out the frags when it matters, uh, swinging this corner beautifully. I think that, though, the ult usage from Fnatic was on point, and I mean, you know, fair enough, you've got Boaster at the helm, he knows what he's doing, and investing two ults there, they still leave themselves with that neural theft with the, uh, with the Blade Storm as well. And they are going to be able to look to invest them. Hype, though, they have that Defender Killjoy locked down, so potentially looking for some strong retakes. Set up for the B site. If you go for this, I think it's going to be a mistake. If you if you know that Hype has that lockdown available, it's such a difficult site to take. You mm. can't move in there because you know as soon as you try and take ground, you're going to be forced away. Top of four-round streak, and well... You can't do it like that here. The marshal won't be the option when your opponent already got the operator in hand. And you mentioned the lockdown. Hype would hypothetically have the opportunity to use it. But is this the round is the question at the same time, John. Because the weaponry is not really inviting you to take such a well-fortified I mean, site. But here it comes. Yeah, I was going to say, look at where he's sat. Like, this is the standard place yeah. for the Killjoy to drop this ultimate, getting those lineups. The question is, does Boaster have the Ooh. counter lineups to get, just get rid of it immediately with those shock darts? We'll have to wait and see. Retake, though, already straight on. They're already starting this defuse. Uh oh, and, and the problem is right now, not only the flank from Gitaver work, and one player is defuse. attained. Slucker is totally joining that. And it is the defuse that has been initiated and successful for Alliance. The entire chaos that descended over on the side suddenly leaves Alliance with a thrifty, successful round. And I can't even lie to you, that fully passed me. It looked like they were still fighting that one, but what a casual retake it was. It, it didn't feel like it was that much stress. stress.
I think, yeah, that, that's potentially a little bit of a missed beat. You do have uh, the shock dots available. The question is, did Boast use them in the round earlier? I didn't quite catch it, but if you have those lineups, you can take down that lockdown fairly yeah. easily. It's right there in the corner. It's the same place really every time. Technically, you know, if you're up to date on your geometry, you can figure out exactly where the Killjoy lockdown is every single time because you can see the, you know, you can see your tangent to the sphere. Uh, but we won't get into that either, because at the moment it looks like C back on the cards. It worked out earlier. Dirk is shut out this time, though. Kadefra. Starting over the counter frack on the counterpart. But right now you see there is a lot of room to take over on Garage. No tripwire to be found, and Luckert... Gotta be careful about exactly that position, but it's just 60 more seconds. Seems like they prep up for the A side take, but Firov might have a say in this. Potential to bring Doma with an orb with those Seekers, or try and find a kill there, but already being a, a player down, you don't really want to be going for uh, too many ults to be invested here. Four players all the way up to B. Maybe just get some fast ground here. Get some fast frags if you can. Alliance struggling to hold out this initial push, but the spike looking to get planted. That's beautiful. And Locker is even keeping up. That's going to be the B side in favor of the German and Mystic as he still tries to take this one nice. home. He's still on it. Most definitely the Seekers though. Should have identified where the final Fnatic Soldier is standing and he's standing strong. But some tasks are also impossible for him. And Ten seconds left. As he should check on his last rabies. Yeah, so he needs, needs, needs to make sure you're up to date. I mean, yeah. it's, 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 it's necessary. Dropping back down long, grabbing that op, making sure that you're saving it in. Fair enough, you can put that back in the hands of Durka, trade it over to Boaster when you need to. That's something that I really like that Fnatic are doing. They're, they're putting it into this, the Jet's hands and then leaving it back towards Boaster uh, to, to play as that backstop on the Sova. Um, looking for those retake potentials, looking for the Fendos on the angles to just get those one taps. Mystic with a really great shout there, uh, but it was already a, a done deal. I mean, that first kill led them to push into B. And then after that, they were just kind of getting surrounded there. They didn't really have uh, the presence. They didn't have the picks. They didn't really have the tempo to be getting into that site. They were lucky to be able to get as far as they did. And there it goes again. Dirk is starting off good over on the side of eight. This was swift. And only with Kadaver remains to do some of this Abracadabra stuff. But Boaster got the same weaponry in hand. That's the operator taking out... The Alliance Jet leaves it only down to two. Jusu, as much as he would like to revive anyone, slim chances, but therefore he gets a lot of information. Here's the players rotating away from the A side itself. Magnum is coming close, oh. and that is the spike delivered on a silver platter right here. But it is isolated. It is split off. A really heads up barrier <gasps> no! wall there and lands a second headshot over on a booster. Drops the res and Alliance have this round now. Mystic again with it all to do. And it seems like such an odd mistake here from the side of Fnatic. Mystic once more proved like he has the capability Dang. to clutch things. But look at that. 35 seconds and three opponents remaining. One of them being elevated up in heaven. What a dramatic change of events here. And Fnatic... Falling short again. The Irishman for Alliance standing tall right there. What a play from the Sage coming through. Jusu absolutely doing the team proud. So much work there. I'm glad we're getting a replay. I mean, you look out, you get that swing onto Boaster. Already drops the wall behind. You can see there was a sigh of relief. As you know that at that point, they just know they've kind of got the round. They're, they're up against Mystic again. And Alliance are going to be kicking themselves for letting that one run away from them. I mean, what do you do there? You have to have checked that site, right? You have to have fully scanned sure. it. They pay the price for not having that happen. And an overzealous return to A with the spike, they, they get punished for it. And, and this is the thing. It seemed so reckless at that point in time, right? It seemed so reckless to just jump on the side when there are two more players alive and you have no information about them. That's the thing, right? That the, the neural theft being put in there, sure, you get a temporary piece of information. At the same time, to be honest, that is just too risky. Because sure, you know, Josu is a, a, mainly playing over there in Garage, mainly elevating his wall. That's cool, that's fine. But he knows how to use WASD and knows to <laughs> move over to the A side. And this is where I think... It's so unusual. We're talking here about a Masters finalist doing such mistakes. It's human. We were all do mistakes, but 
it's still on. Yeah, it's not it's not the time you want to be making those mistakes. Yeah. You want to try and, and minimize them as much as possible. Uh, going into this round, Fnatic, they're not really going to have the best of buys. You can see a couple of sheriffs. They've got one Vandal, the hero rifle, on the side of Durka. I mean, fair enough. If there's one guy you want to have it, it's him. He's going to dash over straight away. Ah, and Jusu falling down on the ground early on. Durka showing his entry capabilities once more as he dashes in, but instantly... They're a little afraid to move, and I know this spot. Liquid hates this spot, but oh. this time, Firov does need to fear a thing. No, no. God, don't let it be oh. cursed. Nope, it's not cursed. For a second, I thought we have to see this again, oh, and Europe is not allowed to play at this spot anymore, but it seems like Alliance gained their sixth. Very, very solo from Alliance. <laughs> no. I mean, that... Uh, that Look, I'll, t I'll be honest, I was very, very worried for Firoth there after missing that spray, and I felt like Magnum was going to win it out. But, you know, obviously, with the drop on it, with the advantage on the angle, Magnum in a little bit of a panic, you are going to get that one. Let's take a look at that spray one more time. Oh, that is brutal. <laughs> that is brutal. It's Team oh, Liquid PS uh, PTSD. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear. But, yeah, by the way, Alliance pick up the pieces on that round. They bring it back together. Six rounds already on their half. I I'm fairly impressed with what they've been able to do so far, clutching out rounds that probably they shouldn't have done. But it feels like Fnatic, yeah, this is the perfect time to go for this tactical timeout. I was just about to say that Fnatic, it feels like they haven't been quite cohesive and they need to just realign, taking this time, take that breath and make sure that you can get these next two rounds on the board. Go into the half evens and you've got a much better chance of coming out on top and at a crucial juncture as well. Of course, being in the upper bracket, you do have that lost card to play, but you don't want to be playing it, especially yep. Yep. if you're Fnatic, a team who people are looking to, to be the top in the region, certainly in this run uh, for the qualification spots. I remember very much our the great woman from the production called Leah did a did a little bit of a survey or, or you know a poll on who's going to win this tournament with all our casters, <laughs> and I think everybody said like Fnatic, 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 and yeah. then at one point I think someone was trolling and said Ten Star. I think it was Twiggy saying Ten Star, and I'm not quite sure if he was serious or if he was trolling. Either way. I think this shows you how much confidence everybody has in picking Fnatic. And it's a bit of a weak start. It's a bit of something we have seen earlier against Vitality with, with the guys of Liquid as well. Let's not hope this will happen once more. Yeah, I do. You know, I mean, Tedstar did win their game. They did win the game. A nice ping out onto Fearoth. Finds Dome of the Kill. And the angle found against Cadaver. It's not going to matter. Durkin nails it. So does Jusu. Playing forward up in mid. Dropping that spike down. They didn't get the info on that. But Fnatic going to have to beat a hasty retreat to get through there. And that's going to lose them time. Allowing Alliance to spread out across the map. You can see they're rebasing their fire line. They move Jusu back. They move Hype over towards that C site. And immediately Alliance have that line. Excellent, excellent tempo control here from Alliance coming through. Magnum, I have the individual despite. fanatic picked up after they got rid of that British duo of T second Mo. Specifically, he was picked actually for the reason I got the spike. to relieve stress off of Boaster because he on his own very is very capable of being that little setup, little cipher, little sentinel nerd in a very good <laughs> way. And I can understand the point. I mean, the guy left. is. As young as he is, one of the most crucial individuals at the Fnatic side. Right Caution now, Boaster here. is the crucial point man on the Fnatic side who just might run into the skull of Kadafra. Yep, he does. And a little flick is no tough task for the Frenchman. Magna might be just lurking around, but Doma holding the side on his own here. I got my doubts, John, and it seems like they are for a good reason. Doma able to find Jusu, though, now. Playing from hell. They have the plant. They have the spike down. Oh. Uh, did they not check it? Oh. Doma finds Hold two. On. A quad kill looks no. for the next. And what? it's an ace coming through from Doma. No. Fnatic bring a round back. But do you want to tell me that they know where he is? You can't oh, yeah. be telling me that. And then I have no idea. This was so reckless. Look at this again. Right? Okay, he stepped. He definitely stepped on site. Kadavra heard that. He even killed Jusu. So, at this point in time, guys, what do we have right now on our belt that we can use to turn this one around? And this is the answer? No, this is not a valid answer. I'm a little surprised. This seemed very reckless and absolutely unnecessary, but still, what a job.
I mean, you talk about human error, and that's it right there, right? Yeah, there you go. Just miscommunication coming through from Alliance. It must have been. I mean, that's the yeah. only reason I could think that to happen. We'll have to put that aside for a minute, because Fnatic not slowing down one jot. That tactical timeout working out. Yeah, still got to recover from that one, but either way, Dirk is showing what he can do with the tiny blades. It's just... Is waiting patiently for the players to come around, but Boaster has to reply to this. And as they want to take the plunge over on the B site, still a few more obstacles in the way. And specifically, we're talking about an individual having a lockdown he could use anytime soon. But first of all, he's trying to use the bullets in his magazine. He knows where Boaster's around. He still finds Magnum. And this leaves it only a locker. Does he have the right timing? Not too many more bullets. Three overall. He's got a fake it once. But don't play mind games with Boaster, because he will lose this party of chess as he still considers to swing. No, still a little belay over on the wooden floor. And left, right, and center, he's checking. No clue where Lucker is coming from. And he still needs to defuse, and oh. he's still taking him down. This was one hell of a dance, and it seems like this salsa comes to an end. They are going to have to take a break. Sweaty retiring from that dance floor. The half is upon us, and it's 7-5 to Alliance. Good. They have the lead. They have the advantage here against Fnatic, but you do not want to let them start to get ahead. On defense, with those shot calls coming through from Boaster, you know that they are going to have some solid lines to be trying to move on through. They've got that control from Magnum on the Cypher, moving that over to what looks to be over on that C site, leaving some utility on the B here on the pistol. It's going to be very, very hard to get through this line, and I'm expecting... That alliance might struggle just a little bit. The question is, do they have something up their sleeve? And at the moment, they're looking to stack towards A. And as we're switching, alliance seem to be overall in the last few games a bit more comfortable over on the attacking side of this map, which could be a Somewhat of a harbinger of what's happening soon to the Fnatic side, but... You know, I would right now try to give you a German saying, but i rather dodge it. 7-5, let's leave it like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's fair enough. Boaster playing up close on the A site, looking to control the sewers, and a slow round so far on the pistol for Alliance. It looks like they were looking for picks. You can see they've got someone on the back, and there's the pick they were needing. Boaster does go down on the A. silence before the storm hits and alliance is not actively gaining too much information they sent a little guiding light in front of garage no sound has been made all good but here it comes they realize what's just awaiting them in front of the gates of the side of a and Fnatic is waiting patiently as Derek keeps on hitting those beautiful taps it leaves and only down to hype and he's gonna start doing his best using bald impression to run over to a but he's not even doing that rather sneaks around right hand side it's already Doma awaiting him. Two more on the left. It's not going to be that one of an easy task. And it seems they haven't realized, but behind him... Oh, hold on! Oh. Doma's whiffing his shots! This can't be happening! At the same time, in no universe, that spike has to be planted. In no universe, this can work. He's dodging around. He's flying around. But he's been taken out in the end. Core Alliance will not let me sleep easy. Goodness nope. me, I'm going to be nervous all day after that. An excellent crossfire at the start there uh, of the push for Fnatic to be able to hold off Mystic. Brilliant trigger discipline. Allow Durka to give that call to say, go for that swing. Gets a headshot to the back immediately. Attention completely drawn in. It's an AoE taunt by the looks of things from Mystic. And Durka just nails those headshots around the edge. Mystic ends up going down, but by then the work is done. Fantastic setup on the pistol on the first round. of Fnatic looking strong on their defense. Now it's time to bring in the SMGs. Durka's sticking to that ghost and Boaster on that frenzy as well. So a little bit of cred saved in the back pocket but you got the sheriff to worry about coming through up close and personal Dirk it doesn't make it work yeah and that obviously doesn't end too easy for Dirk as the <laughs> damage dealt once more on the side of the lines is quite decent even the man advantage are taken home and again they end up successfully over on that a site Options limited for Fnatic. You talked about they have the submachine guns, and let's say it like that, there are more ideal weapons than that. As though it is actually Mystic falling off a of fall damage, breaking his ankle, and leaving it down to only Doma. He has whiffed, unfortunately, in the previous round, but this time he could become the savior, nice. and he will. 
Oh, this back and forth, you talk about not sleeping easy today? Are you sure it's not going to be the entire week? Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm scheduled for my next cool. easy sleep in uh, in sometime in August, I think. Uh, probably, yeah, probably about yeah. August 5th. I'm, I'm, I'm looking mm -hmm. at my next. I'm free that day. Uh, I don't know what my sleep has to do with you, Zesh, but Just we'll lying in, you know? uh, Oh, yeah, fair enough. Absolutely. I feel like uh, that's that's the best way to build synergy, you know. But a cheeky little clutch coming on through. The saving grace of that round was the fact that the two players who went down on the A site did not have SMGs. They had, I believe it was, yeah, the Ghost and the Frenzy from Durka and Boaster, right? So you don't give over those SMGs. If you lose a player, you give over a Spectre. If you put that in the hands of Alliance, that game, that round goes an entirely different way. But as it stands, Fnatic able to retake, able to come back through, and they can reinvest here. What that means is that limits the amount of impact that this bonus round can have to try and counter them out. Alliance, they're fully on the rifles, sure, but you're coming up against three rifles uh, in response. You've got Mystic, Boaster, and Dirk up on those uh, up on those vandals as well as two specs from Domer and Magnum sure but you're playing against a cypher and a sky their utility kind of makes up for that a little bit right. you've got the pressure from those trap wires the cams the flashes it's very very hard to move through they're going to force you to play close to them and that's where those specters can do a lot of damage that was a perfect one minute podcast and how valuable those specters actually are big props here John would download <laughs> at the same time though i think we don't really need to elaborate at how strong those high caliber rifles are when it comes down to pure aim fights Durker being tacked to 26 it's not making it any better right now for fanatic squad though it is mystic and boaster in combination doing a proper job they cannot prevail over on the site it's not going to be that easy for fanatic to keep it up, but as Durka swings and comes even with that flank, yeah, that might be just a nail in the coffin for this round number 15. Juice got to play one perfect round, still could heal himself if he feels like it, but I got my doubts, and well, it seems like they're justified. Four seconds, and that's the spike not going to be planted. They even know that there's a player there. Can't even find the final kill. Juice goes down, Fnatic put another one on, and that is demonstrating just how strong Fnatic are in their defense. The story so far has been crossfires, and that is it for Fnatic. They have incredible positioning when it comes to the fights that they take. It feels like they've already thought it out two, three, four moves ahead, right? And they and they are just always in those right positions. They know when each other are going to be moving. Uh, they've been uh, they've been in uh, in the dojo practicing up on those uh, on those balance techniques, making sure that they're. Uh, in sync with one another because right now it's looking very very clean from Fnatic on this defense starting off though we're going to go back to the pistols for alliance back onto the rifles not fully for Fnatic they want to try and capitalize and actually get a cheeky little bonus on boaster here Let's see what they can do but the seeker's coming in for alliance Doma has anticipated before it all happened, but Gaddafra is ending up behind the back of Doma and he's still alive hides and does his own smoke but he keeps up going for fights losing that one indeed costly for sure don't get me wrong Fnatic still only playing with three as once the majority is killed there's going to be a big rebuy in the next one but the primary goal here is to find success over here and Lucker is passing away well not most Watch literally and as you hear the beautiful German accent, this is how it could sound like, but in the meantime, you only hear the gun sounds. Hype is finding Dirk, and same goes for Lucka with Mystic. He's finding another! Boaster is being brought to the ground, and Alliance tie it up. And one thing that is so notable about this squad, whenever they just have to work with the worst weaponry, just a few sidearms here and there, they still flourish in such a beautiful way. This is what makes them so lethal again and again. Cadaver sitting head and shoulders right now above the rest of the lobby for the squad as well. I mean, Lurker in that last round, phenomenal, phenomenal triple kill. So on the swivel, brings him a thrifty victory, picks up a rifle, saves that in as well. That's going to see them pretty safe. Not a lot of money to be spoken of on the Fnatic side as well after the damage that was dealt in the previous rounds. Leaves them a little bit destitute. Only a Spectre on Magnum, and that's really it. Trying to thread the needle there but Durka does pay the price a headshot found and yet another Fnatic probably going to be going down here looking down the barrel of a 9-8 deficit for Fnatic 
they're going to be trying to pick this one back up, get some economic damage inflicted, try and have the same sort of impact around the corner. Only one kill found so far. Would have been quite a unique miracle if <laughs> that shorty could have done the job, but back in the lead. Alliance, the ones, you know, that have decided to rather play this map. Pardon, that was Fnatic. Excuse me. What a stupid mistake. It's Icebox that comes next for Alliance. That's the right way around it. And hypothetically, Breeze would be out of sight. You know, people who pay attention have realized that already earlier in the map selection. I would love to see Breeze, but... I just can't decide yet if we even see three maps, to be very honest. I really think it comes down to how Fnatic perform here. I feel like they've... I, I feel like they have an advantage on uh, on the Icebox, but obviously being Alliance's pick, they feel like they're more comfortable there. If Alliance can take this Haven, that is absolutely phenomenal for confidence to come up against Fnatic. Propens uh, probably the strongest team in this phase of the tournament. Certainly on paper, certainly yeah. in the minds of a lot of people watching, in the learn in the minds you mentioned earlier, the people who are going to be talking about it on the camera, on the broadcast. So to be able to take their map, that is really a statement for Alliance. Still yet to come to pass, so Fnatic still have time. And if there's anything that we've seen from their defense is that it is pretty consistent here. Alliance obviously able to punch a hole through it in the last round, but now they're up against the full rifles. <laughs> Realizing what's coming up and hits a perfect entry over on Locker. No time to end up in despair because you still got a flank in the form of Kadafra coming around a little too eager, it felt like. Left. But it might have been Hype who actually went past the security measures. Knows that there's an omen back on the site of B, who's not gonna spot him, but they got him on the radar. Fnatic realized that another player could have passed through. And it's going to be that B-side hit, which somewhat comes in with a flank. Hype is still around. Hype is going to be blinded. Dirk's also taking out Jusu, but it's still Fira who stands with his teammate, but no chance in the end. The back and forth goes on, and I think uh, we're here for a long, long time. There, John. I, yeah, I don't think that Fnatic are, are, are going to give this half up. I do feel like now they're on this defense. They're pretty secure here. I think it's... Uh, what is it, two rounds now that they've, uh, two or three rounds that they've lost in this half? I, I need to double check on that. But it's it's very, very minimal uh, moving into this one. Bringing it up nine and eight. They started the half, yeah, so it would be two rounds that they've lost in this half overall. Um, and that last round, you know, it's fair enough. It's against a full eco. They lost the one before that, but they come back and you can see their confidence really not knocked in the slightest uh, to be able to go for these holds, to be able to go for these retakes. They're still very aware. You mentioned right. it. They knew that there could have been a player through that connector. They controlled that ground. They came in for the retake. Now, setting up for A, I'm not the biggest fan here. You know Durka's going to be absolutely on the ball. Yeah, and think. he just nails the shot. You're moving into an operator. What do you think is going to happen? You will not kill my and he's basically a tower of strength. The Bastion of Calm over on the sides. And, well, also that Bastion can be taken, but nope. He's retreating. Only reasonable move. And we talked about lineups. We talked about killjoys. And oh, Dirk is just waiting for it. He's being detained. Well, at the end of the day, a little bit of a worrying aspect that he can be taken out of the game that easily. This has given him a slight advantage in taking the side. And this is what they do with E. Stoma is the point man. Eliminated. And the refracts are coming in again and again. But obviously, this is not done when Sturka falls. Same goes for Boaster. As he's swinging around, finds another. The triple is secure. If the quad could come next. And he gets Whoa. that quad as well. Dirk's on fire. That is for sure. But Locker is knocking on the back door any second soon. And Dirk is realizing that. Boaster is here to support. And suddenly, they're all blind. Locker wants to get that round. Double digits for who is the question. And he's still keeps on tapping the bomb. Dirk is on it, and the ace Huge. is well deserved. Ice Cold Finn, obviously bringing it home for Fnatic. The name might start with A, but it's the A site that Fnatic dominate right now. It's absolutely brutal. <gasps> Dirk are just dismantling any idea of what they wanted to happen there. Even with the Sage ult, the Resurrect, that was six players in that round for Alliance, and Dirk moved through them like a knife through butter. Honestly, the guy is insane. I mean, he sat at the top. 
23 kills right now for the squad. Incredible, incredible stuff. Lucker looked pretty good on this retake, I'll be honest. Had a big flank a little bit late there, uh, maybe to try and save the rest of his team. But when you're coming up against Dirk, I mean, fair enough. Goodness me, what a round coming through from Durka. Ults online for Fnatic. Tempo in their favor. 10 and 9. They're looking at at least the next two rounds, probably. And to put themselves on 12 or 9 would be phenomenal to see. Certainly looking pretty good for this one. The Vandal being bought on up. For Alliance, they're trying to go for that hero rifle. Trying to move that one forwards, potentially into garage and open up in mid and B. Potentially rotate towards that C position. But realistically, you're looking at Fnatic and getting, getting that 11th on the board. Getting some confidence to come back into this one uh, after their deficit at the first half. And just as the thunderstorm outside of my window, Fnatic seems to strike with the same sort of force. Ten rounds that I have now obtained, and, you know, in the way that I'm very glad to see, because, like I mentioned earlier, if there's anyone out there who thinks that, you know, ACS and KDR and average damage per round is a great indicator of putting players in this sort of category, you're absolutely wrong. Please educate yourself on how you know, team shooters work. At the same time, <laughs> you want that Dirk performs. You want that he's absolutely on fire, playing a jet, being that sort of, well, not so low entry, because you, you never do him do any stupid. If there's, the, can you recall any move where Dirk has seemed stupid? I can't. It always is a very well done entry move. At the same time, you want him on top, and this is what he right now obtains. Absolute hero for Fnatic, as they have picked him up when he was even playing in the CIS scene. A lot of Europeans didn't even have on the radar because, let's be honest, how many European Valorant fans are too much into CIS? I mean, sure, for the, for, the, for the average fans, I mean, for talent scouts, especially when you're looking at, at teams like Fnatic at that sort of organization, they're going to be looking, they're going to have their eyes out because they knew what Valorant was all about. Certainly in the early days, they were looking everywhere, picking up uh, some, some of the UK guys as well, obviously Boaster. Uh, coming on through from one of their squads. Alliance with their tactical timeout. Again, it's a very similar position to uh, where Ali uh, Fnatic were towards their first half. It feels uh, pretty similar in terms of what they're trying to do. Just cut off that pacing. Uh, the Fnatic have been able uh, to build up, try and play that circuit breaker card and bring themselves back because they know that if they go down here, if they go 11 to 9, it's going to be very, very difficult in terms of not having that leeway to move through, not having the opportunities to potentially look to come back into it. And so Alliance now really wants to revise their strategy. At the moment, you've got Durka over on that C site. The question is for Alliance, do you know that this is the sort of adjustment that Fnatic are going to be making? You don't really want to be moving up into the sight lines of Durka, I'll tell you that much. I mean, especially with the operator down C long. I mean, I mean you know, Safer times have been had, certainly. That's that much I can definitely say. So the question for me is, what do they go for? What sort of strat are they going to pull out? And at the moment, Here. it looks like they're setting up Here. for mid, but we've seen these rotate in towards an A, in towards a C, but the pings start to come down. And yeah, look at this. They want to try and play B with a flanking garage. Well, if you're World War, I'm sure you want to run into his crosshair. Other than that, you don't want to run into your crosshair of Doma as well. Man's on fire. Sure, cool he had a strap. few... Weird witch from time to time, but brilliant stuff, pure aggression. This is the new sky, by the way. If you have pretty much went into sleep mode ever since patch 2.0, this is 3.0. And, well, this is how you play sky nowadays. Fnatic showing strength early on. Very, very solid from Doma. Just reads it, hears the footsteps, knows what's going on, flashes out, gets two kills. Absolutely worth. Doesn't have the Seekers online, so you know that isn't going to be uh, wasted for that retake. And now Fnatic have four ults available. They allow B to be moved on through. They think they can get this retake, and it looks like they're going to have to do so. You need to move in. Magnum probably going to be on the flank here. Uh -oh. An excellent Hunter's Fury is going to be pulled out of the bag to start things off for Boaster. Yeah, but... Poster is lucky enough to have his bodyguards around him. Hype is definitely locking them in. And here we have the green wall. Tree cloud for optic. But other than that, the retake abilities off the Fnatic side look ideal. They have enough abilities and also ults that would help them out to obtain control. But now you got to stay careful, first of all. They know about the mid control that Juzu holds. But do they also know... 
who's waiting back in window. That is one of the things. At the same time, Lockers waiting outside of the gates, and more players are coming towards the site. The defense remains strong, though. Lockers teleporting oh, in, bitch. and he's taking him out. No! no! It's Dark who's getting the no scope, and you end up in front of his peril. But Hype has an opportunity to deny it once more. The quad has been brought in by the Frenchman, oh. and it's actually Booster who dies off of the explosion. It is exceptionally well played by those guys. And it's so crazy that I even call a Lithuanian a Frenchman. It's tight again. This is why we say European Valorant is the best in the world. The plays going on in this round, honestly, the size of the balls collectively for these squads is absolutely gargantuan right now. It's 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 un incomprehensible what just happened. But there were two real things for Fnatic that I, I was worried about during that round. I feel like, first of all, they allowed Alliance to get onto the B site, fine. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to take a break because the round's already popping off. A one-for-one -one trade uh, starting off pretty well. A pistol for Fnatic, they're not expecting it, so a good trade to start things off. In the last round, I just want to say the rotation's a little bit slow to come in for the retake and the kill on the back lines as well, but they start the C site take. Well, again, it seems like it's gonna be a long night, but I'm absolutely up for it, most literally. Booster. <laughs> <laughs> Only coming in <laughs> with a little frenzy here. One enemy remaining. As he's hitting the first. But old Jake is doing his best. 47 points of health. Oh. Killed in the process. 11 to 10. And look at him. What is Juicy saying? I have no clue. The man <laughs> who came to Ireland six years ago. Mother and father, French and Turkish. And previously played for Volvo Peak. Not too many players had him on the radar. Not too many noticed the capabilities, the strengths this man has. But for the, his age, an absolute talent that, uh, well, maybe the fifth in the end. Fifth player. I mean, certainly. Certainly something to be worried about. The thing with that round, though, just there, is that Fnatic on those pistols did a lot of damage to Alliance's bank. If Alliance aren't able to win this round, it's looking pretty disastrous. They're up to 11-11. Durka gets an early frag over towards Suez. Back to basics for Fnatic, and they already give themselves the advantage. Juicy doesn't have that res available. They've got the lockdown to try and play behind, as well as the Seekers, which is excellent for a take. But the retake also equally strong coming on through. You've got that neural theft to isolate those post plant positions and the seekers to lead them in as well. Patience is key, as we all know. What's also key and absolutely valuable is that little lockdown in the hands of Hype. Could be just basically the life insurance, but as he's moving forward, Durkin might just find him beforehand. Nope, that's not happening. And here it comes. The A site is under big attack right now here, John. Looks like the Killjoy will be dropping that lockdown. Some pretty sneaky little spots you can stick alive in and stay unlocked down. Durka able to get the shot down onto height. Mystic swings out from hell for another, but Firoth looking to try and do something into the round finds too. Finally taken down by Mystic, but Jusu looking to rally on through. Has the spike, moves to control, spots the flash around the corner, sprays it with the pre-fire, but Doma takes it down. A Fnatic who limited the economy last time put another punch into the gut of Alliance, and I do not know if they're going to be able to stand up and catch a breath from it. And you see right now, it's over on Valorant Esports 4, where you can watch Rick's GG versus Vodafone Giants. Somehow they already have a free O scoreline for Vodafone Giants. It's magic. Don't know how, to, but it's magic. <laughs> Nobody knows. It's impossible to know. It's a super secret, but either way... Uh... They make it happen. They make it happen. A little bit of a technical timeout coming on through. But as I was talking about with the economies, with uh, with Fnatic, with Alliance, after the last round, now Kadavra is stuck over on that Guardian. They're putting the Vandal onto Jusu, but there's really no other rifles available. Fnatic, a full lineup right now. They have everything that they could need. Mystic has not had to invest there. They've got that Phantom from the last round. They're looking good to put that 12th up on the board. For me, this is the situation that Fnatic were really, really looking for, especially off the back of a couple of rounds that they potentially shouldn't have lost there. 
They don't really have too many ults to play with, though, and that's my main worry. You've got the res available for Jusu, and that could be crucial here, especially on an eco round. If you get one, two picks, you bring those rifles over, and all of a sudden, it's another story. A site stack looking to be up for play. One down. <laughs> no res. Stock from Durgan. There you go. <laughs> exactly, as you mentioned, the res. Now, out of the game, Boast realizing what's coming his way, but those shock darts. Oh, just seemed like they should have killed Lucker in the end. Dodged him. Barely, most likely. And there's no flank from Fnatic. You see right there, they take oh. absolutely Spark no risks, as in the meantime, another player off the line side falls. I mean, they're trying to go for the spike, but in this situation, it's really damage control coming through from Alliance. Sure, maybe they can pull off a miracle play, but the thing you're looking to do is try and put as many of those rifles in the dirt as possible. Try and keep Fnatic on the back foot. And don't allow Durka to get back on that operator. Try and deny oh, come on. those alt points coming through from the kills. I mean, if you're able to get the kills, fantastic. But Mystic already ready and waiting to report. But potentially a little bit of a bait coming on through. But Mystic senses it. Falls back to the A side. 30 seconds left. I, I'm, I'm always amazed how much damage Alliance deal at the end of the day when... It just shouldn't be too much of an option for exactly doing so. And as I say it, Mystic falls, hype swiffing, and it only comes down to one. Lucker could at least put the spike on the ground. Most definitely is very keen to do so. And that's something. That's all right. Surely he should not stand a chance. And he's considered swinging. Okay, big risk. One player coming through and Durka even being eliminated. Nevertheless, number 12 coming in for Fnatic and... Let's be real, the likelihood of an overtime is oh, probably quite high at this point, the way we saw them play. Well, let's, uh, let's, let's look at what happened last time these two teams faced, right? This is, a long, this is quite a long time ago, to be mm -hmm. fair. This is back in April. This is before a lot of the roster changes that happened this year. Um, it was back in April 1st. It's the same first two maps that we're going to be seeing. So Haven, the first map between these two teams, it went to quadruple overtime on Haven. It went 18-16, and Alliance were able to win it out in the end. And they're back on the rifles. They have their shot, but the question is, what are they going to try and pull off? Killjoy potentially looking to control towards C. Durka aggressive on A, but B site again, potentially fast on the cards for Alliance. It worked out for them before. They were able to move through. Fnatic didn't respond fast enough. They didn't have the impact from the flank as well. And now it looks like potentially the same thing happening, but Seasight potentially a little bit more under focus right now for Alliance. Well, for Alliance, it seems like it's time to shake off the cobweb off those weapons, and it seems like this is exactly go. what they're doing. Just ask for it. Thank you very much for doing so. Appreciate it, Nils. Vielen Dank. And as we're getting into the 12 to 11, it seems like we might just even end up in a tied up situation. But there's still Dirk is sneaking up from behind. And that little turret didn't figure out a thing. No, Dirk, what? he whiffs like that. Just get caught by surprise. And it's a flawless. It's not a close round. It's not three. It's not four. No, it's all players surviving overtime. to get into overtime. I mean, what happened? What on earth was that? I mean, there were a couple of whiffs coming through and it felt like just Fnatic crumbled. They hadn't tried Seasight really in that same vein with the split up in Garage for Alliance. And Fnatic just were not ready. They did not expect that in the slightest. You have to be hitting those shots as well. I mean, you see Hype wandering through the dark cover. You have the advantage there. You should be winning those every day of the week. You have the cover from the, the Sentry as well. I mean, like, what... What more sort of an advantage can you want? But all credit to Hype for nailing that one. Goodness me. Absolutely on the swivel. Keep Alliance in the running. And now it's Fnatic's time to try and go for this attack as well. They're not practiced on it. The half obviously changing. And they're back in. But Cadaver, the four position given away, has to dash back with the Tailwind. Well, as Chekhov's Law said, if you see a 12-11, next thing you know is that there's an overtime coming or something like that. I don't know. I think I that's know, exactly Russian. what it is, yeah. Exactly. I think mm. I, I know Russian theater really well, so absolutely believe me on that. Man, professional Radiant player. Either way, getting away from that, it seems like Fnatic are once more coming up with an approach that's very slow. We saw them approach the B side a little slow, moving over, so on and so on. And at this point in time, the seaside seems so alluring, doesn't it? 
Oh, it's oh, it's just so open. Come on, fanatic. You know you want to. The sun's lovely. Bring your bring your sun cream. Factor fifty. But the tan they're getting probably a little bit more than they bargained for. Trying to get past this wall. Don't really want to wait for it to time out, but there's no one really that close by. And actually, the opener onto Hype in mid is so important. Durka immediately pulls the trigger. And this is a great start to the Seaside take. Well, it looked like one alluring, glowing sight that they'll take. Absolutely did that. And as Juzu plays around the edge of that Omen Smoke... <laughs> Is that going to work that well, is the question. Once more patience is key, we know that. Blocking sight. Blocking sight. As we see their flank coming in over on the minimap in the form of Firov, is that even valuable? Durka finds Jusu, but Kadavra is still there, and Durka is now even slowed and makes a lot of steps. Is going to be killed as well. It's a free versus free, and the flank was not even relevant. They might just be able to stick that thing, and they will definitely do so, but they'll fake it as much as possible. Every single piece of utility is coming their way, and now we start the action. It's halved. Locker keeps on, but is being killed. And very honestly, Kadefra shouldn't and won't make this one work. Excellent plant there coming through from Fnatic. I mean, they set up for long absolutely as they needed to. They moved through. There just wasn't time for Alliance to come back on in. Hype going down early into the round meant that those rotations were cut off, were slowed, because you have to be checking those angles more in mid. A fantastic take coming through from Fnatic. They start things off slow. They find their opening, and they flow like water all the way up the long. Durka immediately pulling that trigger and giving Fnatic the advantage they need. Looking to put that 14th up on the board and try and take themselves into the win. I'm really surprised that this got this close. Like, I expect a lot of things. Don't get me wrong. Alliance has been showing amazing progress as team and Banks announced it a while ago, formed this team that obviously had a few hurdles into their way. But Fnatic, they most definitely have issues against this team. And this will be a promising best of three, but for now it is a promising haven. <gasps> Where Mystic missed at the players to his left hand side. Oh no! Oh, he finally needs to kill him! And he oh. even gets the double! Doma's on the right hand side, and Man is eager for more. Realized that there came a few shots over out of that smoke. Nice. He still cannot support. That is the spike that still doesn't nice. hit the ground. Kadafra is looking for the ace, but Doma says, ah, I'm having none of that. Spike delivered on a silver platter. Pulled up the Seekers as well. They know where Hype's going to be. Fantastic position right now for Fnatic. They have the Spike. They know where Hype is. They have two players. They have the advantage. Durka has the Operator. Brilliant stuff from Doma to be able to control the site. And Fnatic looking good. Durka seals the deal. And in round 26, Fnatic win their map pick. It was quad overtime last time these two teams faced here on Haven. But this time around, it's only going to be the one that Fnatic need. Alliance, unfortunately, going down 0-1 as Fnatic take the first. A well-deserved victory by Fnatic. At the same time, how close it was over the course of this game. It could have been a 14-11 at the end of the day. It was a flawless to put us into overtime. And I'll be very honest with you, John. If this is not the most promising sign, the harbinger of a great series, then I just don't know what is. This is going to be an amazing series, and this is just the first one for us tonight. Yeah, fantastic game coming through. I mean, sure, it was close last time around, but with the roster changes coming in for both of these teams between those two, I feel like we weren't expecting it to be this close. You you mentioned it during the games. It's, it's just not what we were looking for, which really gets my hopes up for Icebox. I was expecting Fnatic to be pretty dominant in this series, I'll be honest. But after that, I am looking forward to what Alliance are going to be able to put on the table coming forwards. And coming forwards, well, it's going to be Icebox from the somewhat tropical haven to the ice-cold island somewhere in the northern part of this world. We'll just be right back with you. You better don't go anywhere. We'll head into a little break. And then we head on map number two with Fnatic versus Alliance.
30 seconds left. Long. planted. Welcome back to the VCT EU Challenger 2 main event. I mean, come on now. What did you expect? It was always going to be big. We've just seen Fnatic take Haven. That was our first map of this best of three against Alliance. My name is Ian Chambers. I am rejoined now by Ryan Central. We got Lothar alongside me as well. John Allen said very articulately, I'm not going to repeat exactly what he said, but at one point <laughs> he said that the collective size of, um, let's say, courage was uh, was very strong, very big, and he wasn't lying. And Ryan, I gotta give you props, mate. You called overtime. Yeah, I mean, I think both these teams suffer with overtimes on Haven, but it was a, a good result nonetheless for Fnatic, and it was really nice to see both Durker and Doma show up when needed. Doma, he used to be like the Ray's main duelist for Summon FC and Fnatic before they bought out Durka. And recently he's kind of fallen to the wayside a little bit. He played a lot of Sky in the first challenges and he really didn't perform as well as say Starzo or somebody like Soulcast because he's very new to that kind of agent. Today, not only did he have this amazing ace, but he also just did a lot of moments with some nice little pop flashes. He seems so much more comfortable with the agent and Durka had a great tournament. I do feel, however, that it was more Durka and Doma bailing out Fnatic in a lot of these rounds as opposed to Fnatic looking dominant in a lot of these. Yeah, I, was, I feel like that that's that's what happened, you know, with, with Fnatic because they didn't look solid. They didn't look, uh, let's say, consolidated as typically we have seen from Fnatic in the past. They are a little bit shaky and I feel like Alliance kind of gave them a way out because they changed the way they played. I, I was talking about like how Yusu kind of spearheaded uh, a lot of games for Alliance, but that wasn't happening here because he wasn't the stage duty. In the past, we have seen on Haven, Alliance was playing with double duelists with the Jet and the Phoenix combo, where Kadava was playing on the Phoenix, and that was a he heavy strategy on feeding him the orbs. We have seen a lot of uh, A control on defense and C control on attack when it comes to getting those orbs and just playing very defaulty, very slow on attack and that wasn't really happening here and even if it was was happening there was no explosiveness late because we didn't have that second duelist that was uh, giving away uh, giving uh, the, the team so much utility and also what you have to consider is that 
because of the fact that we uh, we have seen Sage for Alliance instead of the Phoenix, uh, the ultimate economy for the team also was just so let's say just risen up by, by the team from six to eight, right? So it's way harder to have those uh, turnover rounds where you use your ult to convert uh, the power of it to win a round. So I feel like it's Alliance kind of kicking themselves, you know, in, in the back uh, of the head while giving Fnatic more chances than Fnatic And that's hard to do. Winning. That's hard to do. To kick yourself in the back of the head, yeah. that, is a, that is a tough feat. Um, but come on now, Ryan, you've got to give them some respect here. I know that you predicted overtime, but these guys must have taken some confidence from that first map there. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I think Alliance are going to be a bit hard done by... they were, I think, the better team for a good portion of that. I think there were some nice rounds for Fnatic, but there was plenty of, like, dropping and leaving the spike and say, A-Long, or in even their own spawn because Mystic was holding on to it on the attack. He was holding an angle and lost the duel. It really just comes down to that tenacity of Fnatic, and really, considering they were the, the gem of Europe in Stage 2 by getting second place in Reykjavik, most people would argue that they probably should have been booked in for EMA by now, so they still have to go through this. There's less spots to actually confirm a placement. And so Fnatic, I even think going into Icebox coming up, which is a map that they were typically good on, that's going to be an even tougher time up against the line, certainly when you look at recent records in Stage 3. So Fnatic looking good. It was a good win for the first map, but ultimately, there's still a long way to go. Yeah, and they are definitely a team that, that can handle the pressure, Lothar, and... You know, I wanted to touch on the fact that Alliance, you know, they have been plagued with roster issues in the past, but it seems like the Storm is settling a touch for them here. And they, they do have a good chance going into Icebox. Yeah, I mean, this is a um, map that they have, historically speaking, played a lot of time. In the past 20 maps, they won four times on Icebox and only lost once. Very effective on attack, 63% win rate on it. And they do have a consolidated a, a compos composition that they almost play every single time, which is just Jet, Reyna, Sage, Silver, Viper. So a very aggressive one. And they seem to have a simple plan when it comes to execute on, on those maps, because it's like a standard Viper wall on B. Uh, they do try to avoid planting on the default spot on B, and they do try trying to do uh, do it like on the backside, uh, more of the backside of, of the B, while Fnatic is actually playing to counter that default spot. So there's a little bit of metagaming coming onto the Icebox, especially since Fnatic is playing typically with a Viper in Killjoy, which is such a strong uh, counter when it comes to like, just uh, anything happening on site. You just basically kill anyone who tries to plant the spike, especially on B. But on A, both teams are actually doing really nice stuff when it comes to the utility to to even like preemptively uh, trying to counter the, the default plans by putting a Sage Wall on just A side. Yes, well, do you know what? We will fully preview Icebox. That is, of course, where we are going next. Fnatic versus Alliance. Our second map of this best of three series will be after the break. See you soon.
Welcome back to VCT EU Challenges 2 main event. My name is Ian Chambers. We have just seen Fnatic take Haven, which is our first map in this best of three against Alliance. Listen, um, I do want to bring in my two wonderful analysts that are, that are sitting alongside me here tonight. I want to say Ryan Central first, and then, you know, there's a lot of people in chat that aren't understanding the way I say the word Lothar, because I normally say Lothar. Um, Lothar, you, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You, Ryan, Ryan, how do you say Lothar? I say Lothar, but I have to. <laughs> I have to get out of just being. Yeah, Lothar. What What do you think on t analyst desk? <laughs> you know, that's it's, basically it. Do you know Lothar Matthews? Loth I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say. Lo lo no, I'm sticking to my roots. Lothar. <laughs> Um, thanks, guys, for, for having us. That was a, a cracking first map. We just took a little bit of a break to kind of take a breather, relax, and set ourselves in gear for our next map, which is, of course, Icebox. Now, in Challenges 1, um, recently, Ryan, we saw Fnatic lose to both Guild and G2 on this very map. Are you expecting some sort of a different approach here? I think it's going to be tough. I mean, Lofar can probably talk about it a bit more when it comes to just Icebox with Agents like Viper. It's not really a map that you can adapt and change a composition. You have to respect it. Even arguing whether you should and shouldn't have a Sage is enough of a talking point, which goes to show how disciplined you have to be compositionally to work on a map like, like this. Saying that though, Fnatic losing to Guild and G2 in similar ways, they were getting exploited in mid and certainly like through the tube and kitchen positions on their defense. Their composition a bit different from most people. They do run a Killjoy, uh, which some people don't. At least Alliance haven't done in previous times. Alliance actually going to be opting for double duelist, hopefully. I don't think this is a map where you see like the KO come in, but Fnatic, this was a really bad map for them so far in stage three. When it used to be one of their strongest, they have to adapt and do better. I feel like, you know, you're saying that they were strong, uh, they were, they were strong on this map, but I feel like this that was also the fact that a lot of teams didn't really know how to play Icebox yet. And now when the meta, meta settles a little bit more and more teams are more aware what are the typical strategies, what is the typical composition as mentioned, having Sage on this map is almost mandatory, I would say. Not many teams are able to play without the Sage because that requires like ultra aggressiveness when it comes to the playstyle because you basically need to kill people before you plant the spike you're not possible it's not possible to plant the spike on most of the cases in, on, on b to even just do it without sage right you need that wall and in general uh it seems like right now one of the best compositions uh is just basically the core of sage killjoy and viper because that gives you so much utility uh just to make sure that the defense is well equipped but at the same time this is a attack based map right and then you have people playing jet because it's a jet and a, and a soba so this is literally one of the best lineups that people can play I think the other thing as well to note quickly on Alliance is that they've played it 10 times in Stage 2, including Challenger 1. They're 8-2. and two. They didn't play Guild, they didn't play G2 and lose to them. A Fnatic had harder matchups, but this is a comfortable map for Alliance. Yeah, just a, just a quick reminder that Alliance had three back-to-back -to, -back to us um, to get here in those series that you just referred to. The last three all included wins on Icebox. Um, let's get stuck into Agent Select. I want you to pick this apart for me, Ryan. Everything's sort of as expected for Alliance. They're all locked in and it's just the same comps that we're used to. Like I said, this isn't the map where you throw in a surprise KO trick. Uh, it's not really the kind of place where you change up dramatically. This is a great opportunity for Jusu to show people how he can be 16 years old. And he, again, is the future of a game like this. Maybe you're not expecting much on a team like Alliance, but like I said, it is where these players are fostered and grown up. And, you know, Deca versus Kata, hell of a lot of fun. It's going to be great to watch this matchup. Lotha, what do you think? Let's talk about you, Sue, as, um, a, sec a second here, right? We're just d d talking about the fact that this kid's 16 years old, right, Jusu, he's 16. And there's a lot of pressure when it comes to playing professionally at any standard, when you've got a lot of viewers watching you. But when the stakes are this high, that's a lot to carry on your shoulders. But it seems like he's equipped to do it. I feel like there's um, the thing in the mindset that is the most important and this is not thinking about the price. It's thinking about do I win the match or not? A lot of uh, players that want to be a professional are thinking too much about money, about the way that uh, what the what is possible to win, while the players that are just, you know, just maintaining composure when playing high stakes match, uh, matches are just 
trying to win the game and not thinking what is the main prize. And I feel like those people are going to exceal. And Yusu is very composed when it comes to playing the game. And he's also playing on very high pressure characters, right? Typically, you're going to see him on those duelists. It was an outliner on Haven when he was playing Sage. But now he's going to that Reyna and there's a lot of pressure on a player that is playing Reyna, right? If you don't get kills, basically the character doesn't really do much for the team. And when you hear you don't have a Killjoy because you have a Reyna... Wow, that, that is a, such a stark contrast in compositions and the way you're going to play the game, especially on defense, is going to be nuts. Yeah, and, and Ryan, let's let's just be honest. The the pressure is high for, for several reasons. One of them being the fact that you don't want to drop into this lower bracket because that's where the heat really gets on. You want to take the easiest route possible to potentially make it to the playoffs. Yeah, definitely. And I think on this side of the bracket as well, Fnatic could do well to sort of win over here, maybe a win over Giant slash Ricks, which is certainly doable for, for Fnatic standards, at least. I, I think it is, if you go down to the loser's bracket, it's a, it's a hell of a long trip all the way back up because you need to make the grand finals to qualify for EMEA. So you just have more games naturally that you have to play out. So even if Fnatic can get a little bit higher, even losing in an upper bracket final, just make sure that they make it an easier way through. But yeah, Fnatic, they want to make this 2-0. They want to show people that they're still a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, and just like you said there, just a reminder, only two teams will make it through to the playoffs. It is brutal, but you got to love it. Is this going to be a two and done, or are we going all the way? It's VCT EU Challenger 2 main event. It's Fnatic versus Alliance on Icebox. Let's get back over to our casters, Zest and John Allen. Thank you very much for that one. And while I never consider pronunciating Loa somewhat wrong, but Lofar is at best probably the best way to do it. I, I like Lofar so it's, it's I understood it. When Ian said it, I fought easy. That's Lofar. He was calling Lofar, but at the end of the day, it seems like still people have some problems with that wa in their ears. Nevertheless, I'm gonna stop with that. <laughs> Please <laughs> so, do. Please yeah, do. No, 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 well, you know all the times that Ryan said I have probably one of the worst British accents. You're right, Ryan. I'm sorry to disappoint you once more. But either way, what will not disappoint us is probably the series. We're heading over on Icebox, and it has been a banger so far. Certainly has. I, mean, I appreciate the English terminology there, absolutely. But uh, yeah, definitely. It's been a banger of a series so far. Haven going all the way to overtime. I think fantastic testament to Alliance. But Fnatic able to come out on top. And now this is Alliance map pick. They should have a little bit more confidence here. They'll see if they can bring that overtime confidence towards Ooh. their side as well. And the dismiss coming through from Juicy to open up the frags. Really good start for it. Absolutely. A, a very strong start indeed. And as for switching over, don't be confused by what we're having there on the bottom. That's Magnum, obviously. But in the meantime, starting off strong is going to be the plan from Dome. As Firov still takes out Mystic. It's not going to be that easy over on their side. Yep, Doma's going to fall. And Jusu has been performing strong. Really solid for the team. And we saw him on the Sage last time around. Sage crucial here, but another one to come through as well. Looking for another standout performance. Strong stuff. I mean, coping with that hut, but no worries. Look at this smile. Look <laughs> The guy's feeling it. And, you know, actually, as mentioned on the desk, 16 years old he is. And, you know, when I when I was talking to someone who was previously quite involved with, with Volvo Peak, he said he's probably, you know, a lad that has overall... Of, he's enjoying life. And he has a very nice vibe around him. Obviously, he seems to be, quote, and this is a quote, a meme crackhead, quote ends. But absolutely lovely lad. And specifically, I think nowadays in the Valorant universe, if you are not an expert, if you don't have a master's degree on memes, you can't be in this universe anyway. Uh, I think that's, yeah, that is true. I think that's in the T's and C's. Uh, I have read the small print, so I'll uh, have to couple, go, go back and double check that one. But uh, we'll see if that one comes on through. Cadaver opens up the fragging again. Alliance doing a lot of work. Juicy dismisses around the corner into a waiting crosshairs, but Alliance still standing strong on the defense. One enemy remaining. Looker in hype, most likely. I have a quite decent time with this, as though the casualties over on the side of Alliance have been quite big. Looker has no awareness what's happening just around him. Underneath Mystic is waiting with the barrel 
pointing in the direction of his Last teammates. And well, he's realizing what's up. Mystic is not having him on the radar right Ooh. now. He passes? He passed through it. I'm surprised Lurker let uh, Mystic get away with that one. I'll be honest. I think that this is absolutely brilliant coming through from Mystic. The timing is impeccable. No! What a I can't believe it. What a clutch. I mean, that was phenomenal. It, it, it felt like a misstep from Alliance what? there that allowed that to happen coming through. Obviously, Lucker probably... Sh I feel like you should drop down in those situations. It's it's a one versus one. You know you're coming up against Spectre v Spectre. Sure, maybe you think you have control of the ground, but it's just so unlikely that it's going to go your way uh, in those situations. Very, very hard. Very, very hard to make that call and Fnatic come out on top of the coin toss. And this is the Red Bull Clutch delivered to you. He was playing around. I mean, at this time, you know, it's always easy from our perspective to say, hey, look, you could have done it way better. But at the same time, it's it's a little odd that he thinks that he's spending so much of his valuable moments, of his valuable seconds over on the spot. Generally a bit surprised by that. But either way, like I mentioned, easier to say from the outside perspective is in the meantime, Spike is going down. Dirk is finding hype. Early entry once more on the Fnatic side of things. It looks like it's most likely that you're going to be seeing this 3 and one scoreline with the rifles here with the money coming on board as well as Darker having that Vandal. I feel like Alliance really don't have a hope here. They're just going to be looking for exits in this situation. I think pushing in, they are just going to be throwing it at the wall and, and, and seeing what they can do. Jisoo does have that half armor, so doesn't quite want to throw that one away potentially. We'll see if they're able to find any exits here as Lucker moves forwards. Uh, doesn't seem to be the case. Also no flank that would now come from the defender spawn, which should lead into a flawless Fnatic. No real issue. Actually bringing everybody through. Nope, only Doma is the only one suffering from the spike, but no big deal, I would say. Yeah, I mean, especially when you've got those Spectres in hand as well, more than likely going to be absolutely fine. If nothing else, you can have someone drop over one of those Spectres and buy something else uh, if they don't have the money available. But at the top there, it's Mystic has got that Viper's Pit available. A very, very important ultimate in Icebox to be able to get that post plant really quite secure. I mean, it's very, very few and far between the occasions where you see uh, the retake happens through a Viper's Pit. You really need that Aldrone and the Recon Bolt online from the Sova, which sure, Fearoth can drop those in, but then you can't use them in the first half here, and that's the power of the Viper Ultimate. Remove that drone, remove that uh, that, that Recon Bolt from the early round, Oy. and allow Durka to do stuff like that. Look at that, he's popping off. Durka doing Durka things, that's for sure. Well, the Alliance are going to be fraud any point soon. I don't know. Well, a team that looked like a monolith previously struggled so far. And here the rifles can be so vital and successful. Hype's considering. He's having second thoughts on this. And obviously the call is clear. Lucker and his boys moving away. The only reasonable thing to do in the end. As Firoth makes a decision and they call. That's yeah, it's... They're, just gonna, they're, they're just gonna back off. They drop the Viper's Pit in the post plant and what do you do from there? Well, the answer is very little. You're right. It, it's... It's, it's a safe situation, especially coming into the first rifle round of your half. You don't want to be giving away too much. Keeping three phantoms, keeping the armor on board has so much value. And not only that, I mean, the cost of the, the, the barrier orb and the, and the slow orbs as well, that's non-zero, right? Keeping those on board, that's a pretty huge economic advantage. When you look at uh, what's left behind, I think Juicy went down uh, in the midst of that. Um, as well. That's not going to be too bad, but when you have Durka popping off like this yet again, I mean, we saw what he was doing on Haven. The guy's insane on Jet. Just taps two shots. Yeah, there we saw, there we saw uh, Jisoo going down earlier as well. So a fantastic set of frags coming through for Fnatic. Alliance now, they don't have the money to full buy into this round, but what they do have is those three rifles left over from that save. A little break we have. Very obviously, who could have guessed? And I mean, the story of Fnatic is the thing that I find extremely fascinating, considering that Fnatic is a team that, you know, in the past, 
Challenger stages was always on the edge. Stage one, you know, no big success. Always lost very early, early on against FPX, Swaith, Ballista. So, you know, that chapter was closed early on. And the same goes for stage two. You know, Challengers won qualifier, then lost against exactly this team. Again, a quintuple overtime on Haven it was. And, you know, Boaster was top rocking on Astra back then. And suddenly, Challengers two. So they beat Saw and Ovation, which is definitely a different sort of caliber. And they even lose against Ascent in the qualifier game. What is the end of the story, though, of this Challengers 2 back in Stage 2? They qualify. They beat Liquid in the European Challengers, lose to them in EMEA. But at the end of the day, the end of the story, success in Reykjavik, except Sentinels, of course. So it's always like they want to book that last chance tech ticket at the end of the day. <laughs> Well, Fnatic's story currently punctuated by headshot after headshot from Durka. Landing another one. Anyway, a full stop to Luckers round as Magnum finds yet another. These headshots are really, really strong coming through from Fnatic. They're finding these picks. They're disciplined on checking these angles. And now you've got to wonder, are Alliance thinking twice about picking Icebox into this team? I know I certainly would be. So like, you just gotta wonder, especially coming off of a save, just trying to keep as much economic strength as possible for an attic move over to this B site and do you even want to go for this retake at this point? Do you want to try and keep some money? Because at the moment, Fnatic, they need some damage done. This is two rounds now in a row that they're looking good to keep five alive. But uh, there you go. even getting these trades, there's so much money. Yeah, thanks for the jinx. Awesome. Well, I had to do it, you know. <laughs> no worries. It surely does as, as a victory, nevertheless. For the side of Fnatic. Well, that worked as easy as possible. And the Joyce... Fnatic squad wanders over to the side of B. Hey, can we have that? No worries. A pugnacious approach from Dork once more working according to plan. I like it. I love it. And, and while it seems like they feel extremely comfortable over on the map pick of their opponent. The Killjoy advantage as well could prove to be pretty brutal here. I mean, you've got... The, the Empress available on Jusu, but Magnum's almost got that lockdown available. Viper's Pit, not really to anywhere to be seen for hype at the moment. You need uh, quite a little bit of presence there. And don't worry that res as well, just around the corner. So a really, really solid setup right now. Durka. Pugnacious gets punched in the mouth. That's with an F as Luke Lucker able to just shut down that aggressive push. <laughs> Well, instead of the F, it seems to be more like a big L for Dark. For his squad, as they man equalize the scenario, not at all. Pardon that, one to put it the other way around. Doesn't matter, Firov keeps on. Two versus five, it is. And it remains staunch in round number six. Well, pretty staunch, to be frank. Actually, it seems like a flawless so far. Whilst Fnatic's individual duels are costly, at least now Mystic is it. winning them. There you go. No, no worries. I'm going to continue because it's Mystic. Fair enough. I mean, he landed two. He landed two uh, kills over onto Alliance. Pretty solid, to be fair, against a team that's kind of struggling economically. Fnatic going to be just fine. Uh, Mystic obviously racking up a couple more pips towards the pit. And we'll be trying to get that one back online for Fnatic's post plants. Already four rounds on the attack here on Icebox. A really, really good start for Fnatic, but they get cut short here in round number six. Like you say, a valiant effort, but it just felt like they were losing to some over-aggressive peaks, I think, uh, a, a couple of times there. Certainly the first way. pick uh, onto Durka in the tubes just felt a little bit too overzealous. I, I I feel Here. like that's born of confidence, which, you know, fair enough. The guy is absolutely insane. But you've got to respect this other team. You've got to respect Alliance. Ah, and there you go. That's obviously costing your life. You talked about it. I mean, he's eager. He's young. And, you know, you against a lot of teams, he can make it work. An absolute beast against most of them. The aggressive approach you often see from him is when he goes over in front of the gates of the A side. Kadafra now giving a lot of information to his teammates. And, well, they swap directions. Did 
Hang on a minute. Magnum just killed Hype in the t in the Viper's pit over on A. That's correct. I mean, you said they swapped directions, but it looks like they're going to pull that 180-180 uh, Maker 360 over towards the A site. <laughs> Tony Hawk. And bring the spy. Is that is that a Tony Hawk signature? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no clue. <laughs> Uh, I, I've there's never... one thing I love more than Valorant. It's it's references that neither of us know anything about. Thirty seconds left. <laughs> oh, I've dear. never touched a skateboard in my life. I'm really I have. not. It didn't go well. Guy. It did not go well. Anything broken? Legs? Never broken a bone. Arms? Okay, cool. Me neither. Glad we're on the same page for that. Welcome to the no broken bone club. Milk gang. <laughs> <laughs> seems like the calcium is working at least for one of the two parties here. And it seems like the lines need some stronger bones because otherwise they might collapse easily. And that seems to be the case so far. It's fanatic. Prevail in the scenario once more. Another uncomfortable snake bite. Adoma knocking on the back of your head. Easy kills coming in. Five. 2-2. Two, two. And to be honest with you, the only reference I could probably do is something along the lines of Formula 1, but I don't know if even anyone watches that in here. I don't even know what that is. What is that? Formula 1? Nah, never uh, broom, heard broom. of it. Um, Silverstone. Uh, <laughs> Lewis Hamilton. Oh, yeah. Broom, broom. Yeah, now I get yeah. it. Okay, <laughs> good stuff. Uh, <laughs> five and two going in for Fnatic at the moment. Their attack looking really very, very solid. I mean, as I said before, I feel like the only time they've come short is, well, one on the pistol, but two, when they're getting a little bit over, over aggressive and not really respecting Alliance's ability to frag out. This is against pistols now, and they're looking to rack up towards six. I imagine that what we're going to see at the half is, bro, I feel like it's an 8-4. and four. I'm going to be honest, I feel like an 8-4 and four is on the cards here for Fnatic's attack. Just the way they're moving through, I think Alliance are going to find one or two more sneaky rounds, specifically two, but I, I, I feel like that's where things are heading. If Fnatic keep playing it by the book, I don't know how Alliance are going to be able to take them down and stop them from moving in. Yeah, at the same time, the thing that we have to mention is that the attack side is something most professional teams favor at this point on Icebox. In most cases, you see them how much they enjoy when they can set the pace and actually dictate what is going to happen on the server. What is happening on the server is a dark with a triple. Man's feeling it. And he gets himself one frag after another. Quality kills, quality gameplay, quality Durka. And it seems like he's joining the ball club with Tom and Ryan being president and vice president there. <laughs> yeah, certainly plenty of haircuts being dished out right now. The headshots thick and fast for Durka. I mean, look at this. I love this one tap. Look onto Juice. It just, I don't even think he knows he's hit that. That's insane. This guy is just brutal. I mean, they've got families. I don't know if anyone told him, but Jesus, goodness Christ. But it's phenomenal stuff coming through from the Fnatic attack. I think it's great aggressive position coming through from Durka. He's putting himself in these spots when he knows he's on fire and able uh, to win out these trades. Fantastic credit to him and the rest of the team. I mean, Boaster Shaw sat at the bottom of the tables, but leading the team through Icebox, absolutely melting through it. Oh, well. Seems like that doesn't work according to plan for the Fnatic side, but Doma's aware, goodness gracious. You talked about Mercy and, well, they have families. There you go. Doma's on it. Double secured by him. And Magnum has been sitting behind this wall for a while now. He's, well, seemingly the one who's holding that position for a bit, so nobody's getting flanked around. Making a move over to the B side seems reasonable. And if my eyes are not lying to me, that spot is quite easy to take at that point. My Magna watch. moves away and now his watch has ended over the wall. Moves over towards <laughs> B with the rest of the squad. And they're mounting up with the uh, with the Viper wall, with the Sage Barrier Orb. I mean, <laughs> good job, Fnatic. They fight another kill. And now they're coming up against two. Sure, refrag, but you lose Feroth and now it's just Lucker. And he's on it. Well, you okay. should run. revive is absolutely crucial, but the killjoy lockdown is coming up next. Mystic, you gotta get out of there, and that happens. 
It's costly for the Alliance squad because it's costing them time, but Hype's making a move around it. Most definitely he has been heard. And once that wall goes down, Magnum might just swing and find the opponent's Viper. As I say that, that's a brilliant little swarm. Oh, but this is the problem. He's sneaking around them and he's waiting patiently to find one. And now Misty just got to play it. Time is his friend, but the snake bite is going to not get him out of there. He actually made it out of there. As he find the kill no he doesn't and hype brings it home looked close looked tight but should be time? working in favor of alliance oh. it is but by how much a second okay fair enough that's a second's quite actually actually quite a big margin there but fantastic for lucker to be able to get that one tap dirt nap and uh, bring a bring a compatriot back in as well i feel like Ex ex I mean, obviously, excellent, excellent push coming through from Hype on that Viper to move on through. Has plenty of time here. Taps it, brings that trade in. Mystic didn't want to invest that Viper's pit earlier on. It looked like uh, Fnatic had that round signed, sealed, delivered. Yep. But it all changed in the blink of an eye. And those are the cheeky rounds that I think are going to contribute to this 8-4 half that I'm predicting for Fnatic. I feel like they're going to come back into this one. Put it back, or put it to the back of their mind. Say, you know what? We've got the Viper's Pit. We've got this Hunter's Fury on the cards. There is a very little way that these post plants can be contested. Sure, we lost out on that Killjoy lockdown, but we've still got so many tools in our belt. Just starting off good, but Lugger. Take it back. Here. As well as Cadaver. <laughs> are finding great stuff over there. And wow. while everybody from Fnatic gets pushed, both to the last man standing. Recon Bolt comes in 10 seconds, checks everything around the site. And can you play mind games against four individuals? That is the question. Well, if anyone can do it, it's Boaster, right? Absolutely. This guy is is a bra the brain box of Britain and the <laughs> IGL to end them all. Iconic in, in the role. Such a firecracker when it comes to that position, able to marshal the troops so effectively. The question is, can you pull it off for the rest of the squad? Finds one, 70 HP. So not a lot more to do. 35 seconds. Ahead. And it feels like he's just looking for frags here. Mm -hmm. 30 seconds left. I mean, he could potentially play it on retake with his Hunter's Fury, but at the same time, is he not going to be pushed beforehand? If he eliminates Lucker, then this could be insanely possible due to the fact that Caught you can there. only see them from two positions oh. but no chance Boaster falls and you remember that great Game of Thrones reference you did earlier it was a really good one but you yeah, did no a mistake idea. you did a mistake you should I know mean, that he didn't the, die no the watch never ends you said Whatever, his watch that's what ended. they said yeah, because and now that his watch has ended, it's what they say when the when the when the knights watch knights uh, die. They say, and now their watch has ended. Yeah, but yeah, but don't they usually? Isn't it like on infinite basis? Don't they always a limited time signed for that contract? Oh, it depends if you're talking about. Okay, look, look we could get into the specifics of lore of the knights watch and Game of Thrones, or we could talk about the alt stack right now for Fnatic. And quite frankly, I think that's what most people are going to be looking at here because you've got the red, you've still got the Viper's Pit and Hunter's Fury. Sure, you drop that round, you're coming up against against that and they are going to invest the hunter's fury there they come up against that pit and with both going down they lose the hunter's fury oh, oh dear the res oh, coming in sure but you've already lost the ult and you've now invested another well lion says you know nothing you're jake and seemingly he's at least back alive well best john snow impression in valorant so far figure off in the meantime finds himself Dirk. That was on the edge. Still comes around and finds that kill in success. But Boaster absolutely obliterated the crossfire on point and only two soldiers remain over on the Fnatic side. Goodness me. Two players remain, you're right. And I, I'm going to have to readjust my prediction. I think somehow Fnatic are going to lose seven in this half. It looks like they've just completely thrown their early rounds out of the window but doma still playing you've still got the heels you've still got mystic with the viper's pit so if you left. get into a post plant this is a different story doma can draw players over towards this a site there's a chance that you can get that plant down on the b site get that up and get the viper's pit to control the ground Last player standing 
No problem. Uh, weird. I mean, round before the switch. this looks like a better comeback than Pierre Gasly, but it, it's absolutely Alliance succeeding in this. And, you know, succeeding in the second part of this first half, don't get me wrong. The initial few rounds, I would have signed it. I would have said, John, give me the paper, 8 4 Fnatic, boom, done, no worries. And right now, Alliance approach the way they have changed it, because you have to say, I think they haven't adjusted really is the aggressiveness. Alliance is one of the more aggressive teams in Europe. You saw what happened in front of the gates of the B side. Very obviously, that Tory ter territory is something they wanted for themselves. And Jusu, he's realizing what's just coming around. He's not going to be attacked by the drone, but he's going to be taken up by Bush. That was a wall bang coming in. Oh. Speaking of it, two kills immediately answer there for Alliance as the take starts to come on through, looking for a little bit more openings, but Fnatic denied again at every turn. Boaster next to fall, the knives from the sky get taken down as Dorma lands the headshot now, finds another one with Mystic, and they can move away. It's a repeat of last round, but there's less players standing in their way and no Vipers pit on A to stop them this time. Boys and orb admitting. I have the spike. And if it will be tied up or Fnatic taking a tiny lead, this is the question for now. Patient approach off. from the big orange. And... But they haven't fully decided yet, as it though seems, as though my march is over on the site. It's a clear one. It's a very clear one that they move over on A. And Lutker, does he hit the right timing? No, not necessarily, but here comes the pit. That's all in favor of their side. And One in the meantime, remaining. Hype has been taken out. A pardon has been taken out by nobody so far. This is the right Very one, though, nice. from Doma. As I said, it pretty much jinxed it. Well done, Zesh. And so only Doma remains on the high ground. He might just find the headshot onto Luxor. Six seconds. Or does he? Four seconds and taken out midair. So we're tied. And that 8-4 didn't go according to plan. I don't know what you're talking about. No one ever said 8-4. Uh, no, no one's ever said that before in their lives. Uh, and if they did, they would be a big silly billy. Um, but either way, no, absolutely fantastic for Alliance in the second half of that first... The sec second quarter, let's go with that, uh, to be able to really come back swinging, swinging, holding these angles, making sure that they're getting good trades. I mean, that first pickup by Boast, it felt like the old Fnatic from the start of the half, but... They were immediately echoed and answered. The angles being taken just wasn't as coordinated as we're used to seeing from Fnatic. But now it's their chance to defend. It's their chance to try and hold that. Retake's incredibly strong with the Killjoy lockdown. You've got, obviously, all of the tools uh, available on the rest of these agents, but they're mirrored almost exactly by Alliance. The, the main difference being that lockdown. The question is, what value can Jusu find on this Rainer looking for those entries? They talked about it, I think, earlier on the desk how Reyna is a little bit of a selfish player, you uh, selfish agent. You have to be going for these yep. plays to win for yourself. You have to get these kills, get these frags, get these openings, and that is how you deliver value to your team. Jusu needs to step up here. I couldn't have said any better there. And it's all right. If you have a player who's absolutely going nuts in those games, sure, let him do it. I'll be more than fine with it. If, if he's just sometimes lacking, I'm not a fan of it. But I would definitely say Jusu is one of those individuals that you can just let let him play Reyna and he's doing his job. Don't worry about it. Now as the spike is going down though, Fnatic got to do their job and they seem to make it work to some degree. Magnum swinging white. Mystic does the same. The flank seems to be working at the moment. But how much attention do they pay to him? Not too much anymore. But it is Kadavra. Got the sheriff in his hand, but the Fnatic side of things are already defusing. You got to be quick. But Mystic's coming around just in time. Seven to six, and Fnatic are switching to a site where they don't feel too comfortable at, to be frank. This is just considering a rather low sample size. Nevertheless, I'm 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 just excited to see what this somewhat more aggressive team the unit of Alliance can deliver us now as they can set the pace. That, to me, didn't feel like Fnatic were coordinate. I mean, it's a pistol round, so you, you kind of can't read too much into it. But it didn't feel like coordination from Fnatic. It felt like a good flank happened, and the f the Fnatic backlines just won those trades, won those duels uh, in the meantime. So they've still yet to show me that they're back on form from the start of the first half. And 
now's their chance to do it. I mean, keep those uh, SMGs in hand. You've got Boaster and Doma looking to uh, really quite effectively bonus. But you've got Kadavra who's dropped onto that Marshall. Really looks to invest a little bit into this round. Has the heal invested as well. Jusu can't quite land the shot. Doma went to the trade. But he would have needed to done that. Dirk is somewhat lucky. Somewhat glad that he survived that. <sighs> And Fnatic is taking a lot of room already. You see them in front of the gates of the A side. They don't care too much about it. Okay, moving over. B seems to be quite clear as a target for the Alliance set of things. And as they try to obtain a bit of ground, Kadafra with a brilliant hot shot that Dirk got the reply. The antidote delivered by the Finn and no real option for the Alliance set of things. Eight to six, working decently for the Fnatic side. But now, we know the big guns come in, and this is where it gets serious. Absolutely. I mean, Durka absolutely nails that clean up there, landing those headshots. I feel like that's the Durka special, the, the triple kill with the fadeaway on the last one. I mean, look at that double. Goes in for the trade, 14 bullets, gets a couple of shots off and dashes immediately with the tailwind. I, I, I'm going to coin the, the Durka special on that one. Fantastic positioning coming through from this guy. Knows how to play against these Ecos. And with the buys that they were securing in the last round, they bring that Vandal up onto Doma. Boaster, interestingly, on that Marshall as well, but full rifles from Alliance. They need to try and punch through here. They need to be very, very punchy. They've invested in three Phantoms, but they're against full armor, so that might come back to bite them. Over backing off. As they pretty much seem to exchange tags. It is Magnum who need mm. to try to dodge that dart. No <laughs> chance. And again, it is Alliance in a good spot with a good chance and a good opportunity. They've even taken more and more damage again and again. And they haven't really found themselves successful. Specifically, as we're talking about the position of Durka, that's going to be interesting. If they really change the position, do they go for the B side or not? Nope, not intrigued. They have got to worry about the killjoy utility. I mean, Magnum, up close with the Spectre, sure. It's being able to move through this early, early phase of the push. 30 seconds left. That's going to be fairly easy. It's when they get up close that Magnum's going to be looking to shut it down. Boaster with the Marshall, a little bit less of a threat, especially with that wall. Magnum's waiting. 15 more seconds. This bike has to go on the ground, by the way, in case you didn't notice. It's still not where it's supposed to be. And they keep delivering pressure. Whoa. But at the end, it should be still working fine. Nice. Oh, that was close. But it was not the spike that. carrier. Unfortunate for Dirk, he's trying his best. But that would have been amazing. But it didn't happen. No worries. Alliance are coming closer and closer to the tie. But the weapons should now end up in the hands of Fnatic, shouldn't it? I mean, that, that to be fair, was a massive bonus round for Fnatic. I mean, yes. even coming off the first round, uh, they didn't buy um, full SMGs into the second. They reinvested there, and now they can look to uh, bring everything back into this round. I think Doma obviously investing a little bit more than everybody else. And actually, they might be a little bit down on their luck, but uh, oppose on the opposing side, Alliance, they're on a, a Marshal. They have a Sheriff as well. Nice for Durka, so that's why they can invest like that. All five of them not quite finding the kill, but that's going to work. And Boaster gets a second as well. My goodness. I mean, you talked about a big bonus. The big bonus seems to end quite swiftly. All the money they have stacked up in their wallets, put on the table, well invested. And you see the screams coming in from Doma. I can imagine what he says, but I guess it's not too family friendly. 9 to 7 indeed. And that's proper stuff coming from the squad of Boaster, who once more send in Durka to be the leading figure, the spare head of the big orange. At the same time, though, not the same impact we saw from him on Haven. But is that something I can really critique? Nope, not really, because it's not always easily measured by ACS or anything. No, it's, it's, it's very tricky to use those metrics to actually portray the value that a player mm -hmm. brings to a squad. So you got to pay attention. you got to keep your eyes on the screen and don't go anywhere certainly now because it's <laughs> 9 and 7 between Ooh. Fnatic and Alliance with Fnatic 1-0 up in their series. 
to progress further in the upper bracket. And people are expecting Fnatic to win here. In, in terms of those predictions, it's almost unanimously Fnatic. For most of the people that I've spoken to uh, over, the, over the last couple of days, people are just saying, yeah, Fnatic should be able to nail this one. The fact that Alliance are going this close to them gives me hope. If they drop down to the lower bracket, for those Alliance fans out there, you know, James Banks, I'm sure he's he's got his eyes on the screen as well. He's going to be happy that they've really put in a good fight, but there's not they're not out of it just yet, and you cannot count this team out. Oh, most likely, I imagine James is right now in the gym or something, but he's definitely watching or listening or paying attention to that. At the same moment, Magnum is taken down too, that's you, so, as well as Lucker and the rest of his uh. squad simultaneously find all the kills. Ooh. Well, it looked like they set themselves up, you know, prepared the papers, just ready to hold the speech. And in the meantime, the entire stage clashed and well, broke down. Brilliant stuff from Fnatic, not allowing them anything at that point in time. And what I enjoy way much more than one player standing out is the majority being somewhat on equal numbers. From from Durka to, I think, Doma, the top four players, all somewhere between 250 and 200. And this is a sign of great work as a team everybody can step up when needed when a side is attacked you don't need to rely on one individual that's that's something i love about fanatic to be frank keeping it tight in lockdown oh, tailwinds the updrafts the jets oh. moving around and the harrier jump gets what? stronger for fanatic as Durta, durka lands the dirty headshot <laughs> and plays behind the crate how is he alive? How does he keep on dodging those bolts? The second kill he finds, but fear of can read and smell it. He almost rather dodging those bullets and moves away. And that prerequisite condition for getting the spike down, well, in this round, it is called the Viper's oh. Pit. Excellent, excellent dart the there. Counter. I haven't even got the spike planted at this point. Lucker, look at her try and finally indenture it into the site. And the drop down from Boaster. Look at Ooh. that heads up play. Goodness me. Yeah, but it's oh. No, they got him. And this brings it down to only fear of, but look what he has in his hands. Technically speaking, he could still use his ult. He's not going to do it. Oh. He's not even going to be able to do that. And this brings us number 11. Fnatic keep on fighting. Quiet, quiet. Well, can you hold on a second? I got to be disrespectful. Yeah, keep on defusing now. There you go. Keep. Obviously, this is for the Viper's Pit. Uh, you want, yeah, well, it, it's it's going to be for the Viper's Pit, but not only that, swapping out for the Phantom. Crucially, with Viper's Pit coming online, you don't want those traces to be flying on out. An excellent swap. I feel mm. like it's, you know, a, a little bit of a micro play, and that is what sets teams like Fnatic, players like Mystic apart from the rest of the world uh, in well, their skill. And what sets Durka apart is that his crosshairs are magnetized to heads. It's sure. insane, yeah, I, this guy is I nuts. saw that. Well, maybe at the same time, Mystic just liked the skin. <laughs> and he could, he could have afford, afforded to buy one. But your, your point is probably the absolutely best reasoning for doing so. It's, it's th those tiny things. You're absolutely right here, John. Those make the difference. You don't want those tracers, as mentioned. And there you go. No tracers. Mystic is putting it out. Even the Killjoy ult is coming in. Just trying to lock everything down. Boaster opens up strong. <gasps> and no now the spike way. just has to go all the way. And Durka... Oh, the, uh, if there's one person you want Disgusting. on this flank, it's Durka. He's going to have heard that. He knows. He Spider knows. Fences. Oh, no. Hype, no. Get out where you still can. Oh, goodness me. I feel like he might have an inkling that someone's there, actually. Stay down. Yep. Doesn't matter. <laughs> exactly. You might know, but... It's dark at the same time, so all your knowledge is not helpful. He's moving away at the right time. This is really something that I love about Durka. He knows when he has pretty much maximized his opportunities with the room he has gained. And he could have stayed there, obviously, and be that single gladiator in the arena, but no, reasonable. Moves backwards, says, I found the kill. Man, disadvantage again on the Alliance side. There. Brings it back into control, moves through, left. and... They're moving into the Viper's Pit. Doma playing forwards in it. Should be able to spot the barrel. <gasps> first. Firoth wins the trade. Gets the first pick and opens up. Oh, Mystic. He's falling as well. This means the pit is going down. And suddenly everyone's going down. Fear of and Kadavra HP-wise don't look ideal. 
But Magnum waits. No, it's just one around the left hand side, and he's gonna find it before that spike's going Fine. down. So at that point, just stand surrounded. Get that boogie boogie with him, but just wait until your teammate is in safety. That is the case. Number 12, and Gadavra falls in the end. Fnatic are playing it by the book at that point. Fantastic stuff from Fnatic. They invested two ults. To be fair, they dropped both the Killjoy lockdown and the Viper's Pit on that round. Fair enough. You want to put yourself on match point. You know you're going to be able to get another one up before the game ends, even in the worst case scenario. But not only that, you know you're breaking the economy from Alliance. Investing those ults, sure, it may seem like overkill, but what that does is give you this round with the advantage. You're coming up against a Bulldog, a Marshal, and a couple of Guardians. This is not ideal coming through from Alliance. A Fnatic looking to close it down. Durka starts strong. And there you go. It's it, At this point in time, they say, I got enough of that. Dirk is pushing through. Oh. He's even getting that spike. After the electrifying Hunter's Fury, Fnatic got enough of your shenanigans. Jusu, I mean, it's time to use your ult, I would say. Could definitely do so. But Durka says, I'm having zero off that. Alliance delivered us a brilliant and pretty much exciting fight, but no chance at the end of the day. Excellent game, excellent success, and Fnatic, well-deserved victory at the end of the day. Absolutely. I, they were in control of that game, I think, almost from start to finish. A little bit weak, maybe, sure, at the end of their attacking half, but their defense was clean. Uh, they Absolutely. used everything where they needed it to. They were phenomenal on their sort of micro adjustments coming on through on that defense as well, which we spoke about. Icebox, last time these two fake teams faced, again, it was Haven and Icebox. It went quad overtime. Alliance were able to take that one on, on Haven. But on Icebox, Alliance won 13-6. So Fnatic turn around, deliver a 13-7. Phenomenal. Phenomenal turnaround, obviously, since April. So a lot has changed. Roster swaps have come on through. But still, that's the history between these two teams. And Alliance, they're now busted down to the lower bracket. They've still got one more chance, though. And as I said, they should be proud of the performance they were able to put up. When you're coming up against someone like Durka... I mean, fair enough. You know, you ju it's just going to be a bad day. Alliance with another chance. Are we going to see Fnatic sail on through? Alliance proof what kind of quality they are made of. Specifically considering that this is not a, f a full five-man roster that is already signed this way. Still, Jusu delivering brilliantly most of the times, just seemingly not his day. But what you can do is make one of those players their day. Well, it's time for you to obviously vote for your MVP of this game. The options are simple. The options are easy. Durka, Doma, Mystic, you guys decide. Who do you think have deserved this little trophy and medal at the end of the day? Well, I would pretty much actually go for Durka. It's a classic. It's the easy choice. At the same time, the kind of individual players from Doma and Mystic have been Excellent and exceptional. I think those are the best two words to describe the entire performance of Fnatic in this best of three. Yeah, no, uh, it's it, it's been fantastic, although I am a little bit peeved there. Justice for Boaster. I think the value that he brings to the roster is absolutely insane. Uh, I'm sad not to see him on the MVP list, but there you are. Maybe one day I'll get my wishes. But yeah, no, fantastic, fantastic <laughs> strategy coming through from Fnatic. It feels like they were locked and loaded, ready to go in every situation. So yeah, credit to them. This is deserved, you're right. Uh, I am happy to see them move through. People are predicting Fnatic to be able to take this whole thing in this uh, in this qualification phase, and they've just shown us why. Sure, Haven, not the greatest. They, you know, they showed a little bit of weaknesses, there, a couple of weaknesses, a couple of openings. But when it comes down to it, they go over to Icebox and dominate. And, and, and that's the Fnatic that people were expecting to see here today. Absolutely. This was the Fnatic we all expected when we did our predictions. But we are about to predict you, well, that there's going to be a break happening. I'm 100% right. I am aware of that. But before <laughs> we go, enjoy your next break with our song of the week. It's Cashmere with Ready to Love. So get ready for those good old dancing cats. You are 
Let's not do it unless it's done. 